think I got everything set up. Uh, just need to make sure I got everything within YouTube working properly. But I think in terms of stream stuff, we are set. Uh, so there will be, of course, as usual, some setup going on here. So if you're watching this in the future on the recording, uh, just keep in mind that you will need to go into the description. And I usually get around to it. I, I just like the other day went ahead and put timestamps in like the past month's worth of streams for like, you know, when I switch to classic hardcore and all that fun stuff. So it may not be there immediately if you're watching this in the future, but like, hopefully I'll get around to it at some point. Um, so as usual, there is a bit of setup I need to do. So this is the character that I'm going to be doing. It's going to be a survival hunter speed run as the title implies, but uh, we got to do some setup first. Hello, Prashant Kumar. Good to see you. Um, but yeah, so one of the things about starting these streams is the last few have started fairly late. This one is like, it's 40 minutes late. And I was actually very close to starting it on time, but then, you know, I, I had to make food and stuff, and it just ran a little bit long. But honestly, all things considered, not too bad. But one of the biggest reasons why, like, I'll have to delay streams is if, like, when getting the character set up, I'm not able to, like, make the thumbnail on time. Like, the Demon Hunter thumbnail took me a while. This one was fairly straightforward, so it took me, like, you know, 30 minutes. Uh, and here we are. But obviously, we still need to get preparation stuff done. So, I am on my bank alt as usual this is where i've spent the first hour of many of the past streams and we're just going to go through i'll throw uh for now i'll throw my shopping list in a pinned message just because you know people like to follow along with that stuff so um i'll put here's the list i'm using to prepare items then I'll throw that in there, and then I will see, pin that message, and that should be good. All right, yeah, so I'm going to spend a little bit of time getting all of that stuff set up. It'll take me, uh, you know, I don't know how long, 30 minutes or so, but it also gives people time to trickle in here as usual. And also, before I forget, um, I need to mail over my heirlooms and stuff from the previous hunter run. So this was the one that I used for the marksmanship hunter run last weekend. Was it last weekend? Yeah, I think it was Saturday, so exactly one week ago. And it's going to be mostly the same stuff, but I will still need to mail over like a weapon because this one's using a gun. And we're going to be doing survival, right? So I can't be using that. Uh, I'm also using an unenchanted Dread Pirate Ring in this character. I'll have to sort through my heirlooms to figure out where all of them are. Uh, Johnny Mead said, finally get to watch the live. Awesome. Glad to have you here. Uh, yeah, we I do this every Saturday and Sunday at around this time. Sometimes the exact start time uh, will depend a little bit. Um, but yeah, generally speaking, this is around when I will be live streaming pretty consistently. Uh, also, before I forget, let me check Blood Mallet. What is what stats the Survival Hunter want these days? They want Crit Haste. All right, that is very easy and straightforward. In fact, I would imagine... Huh. For whatever reason, this chest enchant only has plus two all stats. It's supposed to have more. That is... Yeah... The best enchant is well, you're great. Yeah, it's greater stats, right? So, huh, I guess the chest enchant that I've been using for my male chest piece has actually been wrong this whole time, or rather, it hasn't been wrong per se. It's just that I enchanted this whenever, and I guess I never forgot to double check, and whatever enchant that I was using on this got impacted by the scaling, and now it's only giving plus two. So I will have to go and uh, change that, apparently. Uh, let me mail this over to my druid. This all sent over. And I'll mail over whatever gold I have left. Uh, okay, well, that's, that's interesting. I actually didn't expect that I would need to get that set up. But uh, hold on, let me 
I don't know if I have any golds on this character. This is what I've been using to get my heirlooms enchanted. Um, me, uh, Goose Comic said, <laughs> I've been live for just over four minutes. When am I going to start? Ah, uh, yeah, you know. Uh, good to see you, Goose Comics, though. But yeah, I'm sure, uh, you know, people will trickle in eventually asking me when I'm going to start, as is tradition. Um, hopefully this one won't take super long. I, I mean, I've gotten some of the setup done, and one of the nice things is, uh, I, like, I just recently did the MM Hunter run, right? And the nice thing about that is you can see here, like, most of my Hunter heirlooms are already kind of set up. And so that means I won't need to, like, track them down. But as I just found out, I apparently need to fix the enchant on my chess piece, which is something I was not expecting. Uh, okay, so there's haste. I'm pretty sure I'll want to, yeah, like, get an even mix of crit and haste. This is... Okay, this is a Dread Pirate Ring with haste. Sure. Uh... What else? Okay, let me let me refer. <laughs> Start when. Hello, Oobler. Uh, good to see you. Uh, okay, so I have pants. I have shoulders. I have no chest. That's what I need to get. Uh, weapon with elemental force. There we go. Equal talent spear. Okay, so I got that. Rings. I have cloak. Cloak I don't have. Uh, I should have it somewhere on hand. Could I... Because I know, it, is it this one? No, that's a different cloak. Should be somewhere, either in here, or maybe I sent it to... Maybe I was using it on my Feral Druid? Which one was that? Let me, I'll, I'll have to double check. Um, I think the cloak itself might be on... Let's go to Harl Enchants. Uh, mail them 5,000 gold, sure. Uh, so I need to get the chess piece with the new enchant. I need to get the cloak. And then I already have helm and trinkets already. So I'll do the chess piece first. And then I believe my... Uh, what's it called? I believe my cape that I'll be using is on the feral druid from last weekend. I think... Wait, what did I do? I did... No, it would be it would be on the Demon Hunter, because the Demon Hunter was the last run that I did. So I think that's the character that has my cloak. So I'll have to go ahead and grab that. Uh, you have a different question. What is my preferred coffee? Uh, do I go traditional, like, supermarket coffee or more fancy? Um, I will say I'm not picky, right? So most of my coffee, like, or 99% of my coffee, at least these days, is just, like, Keurig coffee. Like, I have a little Keurig K-Cups. The specific one that I like is Donut Shop. Uh, that's just, like, the brand of K-Cups. Um, I mean, it's just convenient, right? You just pop it in, bing, bang, boom, takes two minutes. Uh, but, yeah, I I mean, I kind of like all coffee. I've tried a lot of different coffee over the years. I know um, my mom used to have, like, you know, back when I was in high school and stuff, she used to have a very fancy roaster and stuff. So my dad has always been more in like, you know, the, the Keurig side of things, but my mom would always like, you know, make the, the roasted coffee stuff. And I liked that. Yeah. Um, you do like it, uh, C cups more. I don't know. I don't know if that's, yeah. Uh, but yeah, um, I, basically all that to say, I'm not really picky and generally I, like as for how I have my coffee, I, I don't know. I guess that technically wasn't part of your question, but I actually just have my coffee completely black. Uh, let me just go powerful stats, which I mean, surprises a lot of people whenever I mention that, because a lot of people are like, you know, they need to have like cream and sugar in their coffee and they think black coffee tastes horrendous. But uh, personally, it's one of those weird things where, like, when I was, you know, young, right, I always used to think black coffee was atrocious. But then I started having black coffee out of laziness, really, just because I, uh, let me just mail this over. You know, I couldn't be fucking bothered to, you know, always add cream sugar and then stir it. So I just grabbed black coffee and then bam, right? And eventually, just kind of grow me, like, I actually at this point like the taste of black coffee. But... Um, I also, like, that's not to say I don't still like coffee with cream and sugar, right? Like, every once in a while, you know, 
just if I'm in like a particular mood for it, I will have coffee with cream and sugar. And, uh, and yeah, that's, uh, it's good too. Definitely. I I've had lots of different coffees. One of the, the better coffees that I've had. Oh yeah. I can mail all of this stuff over too. Um, still have, yeah, I think this is like actually most of the stuff. So yeah, there it is. There is the cloak. Perfect. Uh, and then I'll just send it over to my druid. So I'll mail over the heirlooms first. Um, I'm also tempted to... I'll keep the rest of the heirlooms on my demon hunter, because one of my plans, right, is... It, at, like, as the days go by, this gets even more and more scuffed, because I got a bunch of characters up to level 60... And I was about to do 60 to 70 testing runs with them while I'm at it. Here we go. Uh, I've done this every single stream, and I will continue to do it until Blizzard finally fixes it. At this point, I, I can't be fucking bothered to, um, like, continue bumping this post, but I would encourage you guys to bump it as well. This fucking thing, Blizzard still hasn't fixed this. It is still impossible for me to do any testing for 60 to 70 leveling i can't update my guide at this rate i don't even know when i'll be able to uh, but the problem is i've gotten a bunch of characters up to 60 specifically to do these test runs and the idea was i wanted to simulate like a character jumping right out of a 10 to 60 run into a 60 to 70 run and now i kind of can't because by the time blizzard actually fixes it you can see my demon hunter from last weekend already has almost a full level of rested experience there's not really a whole lot i can do about that uh, so by the time I eventually get around to doing those testing runs, they will be on characters that have rested experience built up, which kind of sucks. It won't be like as usable as a baseline, but at this point we've done enough testing runs without it that, you know, I don't really give that much of a shit, but it would be nice if this could actually get fixed soon because it's just kind of annoying. Um, but eventually I'd like to do that run. So I'm going to just keep this shit on this character because I, in theory, should be using it. I don't know. I don't know, man. It's um, it's starting to just get on my nerves. Uh, let me just mail all this stuff over, and then I will uh, look at chat again real quick. I hate YouTube always does this pop-up. Like, now would be a good time to do a mid-roll ad thing. Like, fuck off. Jesus, fuck. I, it, it's always trying to tell me to put in, like, mid-roll ads in the middle of streams. I'm like, just fuck that. Um... All right. Uh, you use creamer? Yeah, uh, Jason. Creamer definitely is really good with coffee. Uh, let me go back to Druid. Um, no creamer for you? You like traditional regular black coffee? Yeah. Am I speedrunning? Yes. Just, uh, you know, you'll have to give me a little bit to set up. You know, it takes a little bit to set these things up. And I always figure... You know, if I'm ready to start the stream itself, I usually like to just get that going and do the setup on the stream. Because the alternative is I just delay the stream by like, you know, an hour or two while I do this, you know, off stream, right? Uh, so this at least gives people time to get into the stream before the run starts and gives me time to, you know, talk to people and answer questions. It's like killing two birds with one stone, right? So I have to do all this stuff no matter what, right? It's just I figure it's better to start it early. Um, you a Keurig instant coffee or fresh bean enjoyer? Um, definitely Keurig or fresh beans. I haven't really tried, like, instant coffee before. Uh, but uh, I think I started to say, one of my favorite coffees that I've had is in Brazil. They have, like, these, I, I would imagine it's probably in other places in South America as well, but specifically I had it when I was in Brazil. And they have, like, this concentrated coffee. It's like you have the tiniest little cup like super duper small and you'll think like you know how is this going to actually work at all right to you know wake you up right and it's super tiny but it's like so fucking concentrated and you just take a sip of it and like fucking punches you in the face it is so strong and it's really good and i also like it because i can drink the entire thing in one gulp and it just like bam it is really 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 strong coffee uh so that is like some of the best coffee i've had brazilian coffee uh, but yeah, no, I, I like all different types of coffee. Okay, let me, let me get this set up. So, uh, full level arrested experience, you say? Time to go farm the Cataclysm rares, 10% per year. Uh, or 10% per rare. Oh, yeah. Yeah, fuck that. Ugh. 
uh, log the characters out in the wild somewhere. I mean, you, st so you definitely still get rested experience out of the wild, but you are correct that like, you know, if I really wanted to at this point, right. I I've been trying, but I I'm not going to jump through like a million hoops just to account for blizzard, you know, being fucking incompetent. Right. Uh, and if it was one of those things where I literally had to, um, like had to have a character at level 60 with no rest of experience as a baseline at that point i just i'd level up a new character right because you know if you're gonna have some rest of the experience by that point it doesn't fucking matter so it's it's either you go all or nothing with it right so either i'm just gonna test the route with a character that has rested experience or i'm just gonna level up a brand new character and at this point i'll probably just test the whenever they fix the shit i'll probably just um test it you know with the characters that i have um we'll see though do i pvp no i i don't really pvp at all i'm gonna be honest i i really don't think pvp in this game is kind of weird because i think there are ways for it to be enjoyable and like i've had fun pvping in mmos in the past right i think inherently mmo pvp is one of those where it's a little bit janky um but like some of the most fun pvping in an mmo i've had is like guild wars 2 like the um what what it was it like realm re realm or something like that whatever it was called um where you had those big fortresses and things like that but i don't know i i also i liked pvping a little bit back in the day um i played it a decent amount in um like in raided battlegrounds and stuff like that i will say i like battlegrounds significantly more than arenas i have never enjoyed arenas and like i know some people are diehard arena fans and you know, good for you guys. I have never found it to be an interesting game mode. I've always found it to be like ridiculously rock, paper, scissors, and it's just so heavily on CC and comp shit. I have never personally understood how that's enjoyable at all. Um, but I, I know if I say that, I'm probably going to piss some people off. So, you know, sorry. Uh, but I, I just, I've never found it to be fun at all. Um, I, there are some games where I like PvP in, World of Warcraft has never really been one of them. MMOs in general, I've never really loved PvP in. Uh, the most fun that I've had in World of Warcraft PvP has honestly been uninstanced PvP. It's like world PvP. I've had a lot of like enjoyable world PvP experiences in the past. Like I mentioned before, I played on Emerald Dream for a little while. And Emerald Dream had like a really big world PvP scene where there would be like these gigantic like 80 v 80 battles and stuff like that. But at that point, like, it's not competitive. Like, one of my most fun experiences in, you know, Emerald Dream World PvP is back in Legion, we had this gigantic battle in Valshara, and I was literally playing a slideshow. Like, it was a total fucking mess. I was just mashing thrash, and I would get, like, one thrash cast off every 30 seconds or something like that. And in the end, we all died because, you know, I guess the Alliance queued up their spells better or something. But... It was just kind of funny seeing so many people in one area to the point where the game was just a stuttering mess for everyone, mind you, not just for me. Uh, the entire zone was just effectively frozen. Uh, and I still had fun, right? But that's the thing. It wasn't competitive. It wasn't like I was trying really hard to, uh, you know, do well in that. It, you know, it was just for fun. And that, I think, is the only way that I can take World of Warcraft PvP seriously if it's just, you know, messing around for fun. because any competitive aspect to it i always personally feel has been a joke for mmos in general quite frankly um hello valkyrie nori good to see you gonna exercise a bit while watching my stream awesome good to see you matthew uh it's uh definitely a nice way to multitask uh, people have been watching my record because the guardian druids are pulling like crazy when you're leveling your alts I mean, I think people always try to do crazy pulls while leveling, but I do kind of get worried sometimes because I don't want my my speed runs to be like an influence on people who are just doing casual leveling. Because the reality of, you know, low level dungeons and stuff like that is it can be kind of toxic. You know, there's a lot of times where if the tank isn't pulling perfectly, people will like flame them and just be assholes. That's never fun. You never like to see that. Um, so I do sometimes worry that, you know, if too many people watch my stuff and think like, this is how you level, they may, you know, get that takeaway and then start, you know, flaming anybody who's not going super fast. And that's 
obviously never my intent, right? But yeah, some people do kind of do that, right? I think of the newbies, yeah. Arena is a nightmare if you want to be able to use abilities. Yeah, exactly. I um somebody else said I hate arenas, you play heals and it's always a constant CC chain. Yeah, that's why I never really enjoyed it. Right. Like Battlegrounds, obviously, there is still an element of like CC the healer, which is why I still don't really enjoy Battlegrounds. But the thing that I always liked is there's some more objective play, and you actually need to, you know, coordinate as a team, and a lot of times your damage actually really matters and it's not just can you keep the healer cc'd for a few seconds um yeah i don't know personally never enjoyed it i i have a like you know like i said a decent thoughts on you know why pvp doesn't really work for mmos and stuff but i'm not gonna dive into that right because i know a lot of people are diehard pvp fans and if i start shit talking it they will get upset and uh, then I have to read angry comments like, you don't just get, get it. Oh, the only reason you hate PvP is because you're not skilled enough to play it. Oh, it, it actually requires a lot of skill and coordination to, you know, stun the healer after 15 minutes and then press all my cooldowns at the same time and kill them in 0.5 seconds with a burst window. You you just don't understand, right? You get people like that, and I just, man, I can't be fucking bothered to deal with it, honestly. So I just, I don't even really touch upon that anymore. Have I tested speed leveling Frost or Fire? Ah, well, if you have not seen it yet, um, here, I'll link it in the stream. Uh, I currently have a poll up for tomorrow. So obviously today is Survival Hunter because it was tied to win last weekend's poll with Havoc Demon Hunter. Uh, tomorrow I'm going to be doing two mini speed runs from 40 to 60. And one of the options is Fire Mage. So I put up a poll on my Discord, and I let people pick between whether Fire or Frost Mage ended up in the poll. Fire won, so it went up on this poll. I will test Frost eventually, but, you know, uh, it was not in the cards for today. Oobler said Buck Flizzard, yep. Yeah. Uh, hello, Gustavo Alexandre. Uh, do I have an advice on how to get a good amount of gold? I'm not the person to ask for gold. Um, the only thing that I can say that, you know, is from what I've heard, gen generally speaking, good advice is, um, uh, what you can call it, like, do the dragon riding world quests, right? So if you have a lot of characters leveled, which I'd imagine you're at least somewhat interested in leveling, you know, if you're watching my videos, then you can use all of those alts to do all those world quests and make decent gold that way. Um... The only reason you're doing solo shuffle this season is because the priest tier set looks godlike, especially the PvP and gladiator set. Yeah, honestly, every single person I know, or I won't say every single person, most people I know who do PvP only do it because they feel like they're forced to. Because they either really want an appearance from it, or a mount, or uh, back in, like I had to do arenas back in, um, uh, whatchamacallit, Ashara's Eternal Palace, that tier, because I played Windwalker Monk and I needed Conflict and Strife because it was my best major essence. And that fucking sucked. I hated every second of it. So, I had to PvP then, and I did not enjoy it. So, a, a lot of the people I know who do PvP and WoW do so because they feel forced. Like, um, I've had to do a lot of PvP in Wrath of the Lich King Classic because... I've been trying to collect all the heirlooms, and a lot of them require you to do Winter Grasp. Admittedly, I have mostly done Winter Grasp. I haven't really done Battlegrounds and stuff. But even Winter Grasp sometimes, like, you know, I, I will literally walk into an area, and I get CC'd from 100 to 0 over the course of, like, 15 seconds. And I just don't get a chance to press anything. And I'm just like, okay, wow, that was fun. I really enjoyed that experience. Uh, so, yeah, it's, it's, it's not great, honestly. You're a diehard pvp -er, but it's idiotic. You can one-shot someone in two seconds, but the CC chains can last past 20 seconds. Yeah, I've had, like, PvP friends of mine post screenshots where, like, a, a Devastation Evoker kills them in literally 1.5 seconds from 100 to 0. And I'm just like, how do you... How do you have that happen? And then just, like, actually want to go back in there and do it again. Like, I cannot understand... Like, they complain about it, and they're like, oh man, I fucking hate PvP, but then they'll still do it. It's like, why? Like, at a certain point, you know, clearly you're not having fun. I, I'm not speaking for everybody, but I'm specifically talking about my friends who will complain about getting, like, one-shot by Devastation Evokers. It's like, why put yourself through that? 
Like, jeez, does not seem fun at all. Um, what do I consider the best spec for leveling DK? Um, definitely not blood. Obviously, like you said, yeah, blood for dungeon queues still just for the queue time is obviously going to be best. Um, uh, it, it's honestly, I don't know. I think frost is generally better, but it's a weird situation where, from what I've heard, frost. Well, I, I know for a fact frost is better at low levels, right? Because you get howling blasts like decently early. Um, it may actually be the first thing you get now. Uh, so Frost is decent AoE and is able to like consistently range pull and one-shot stuff, and it has like okay survivability. But Frost is kind of in this weird state where it gets some decent stuff early on, and then it's just kind of starved in the midsection of its tree, where it picks up a lot of like useless passives that are good synergy, but just don't really work until you get to the bottom of the tree. So Frost is like good at low levels, weak in like the midsection, like 30 to 60-ish. And then it's like solid again from 60 to 70 when you start to get the capstone talents that make Frost really good. And then Holy is kind of like really weak at low levels because you have nothing that really synergizes with it. And then as you start getting some synergy things, from what I've been told, right, I haven't leveled in Holy personally, though Unholy is on the poll for tomorrow's stream and it is currently in the lead. So there's actually a good chance that you will get to see me play in Holy tomorrow. I'm not super experienced with it, mind you, uh, but I have been told that, like, once you start getting the Unholy Synergy stuff later on, it becomes better. So, Death Knight is kind of in a weird spot where I actually think, like, the best way to level a Death Knight is to play all three specs, which it's kind of a downside, right? Because... You know, just from a time perspective, obviously, if you don't care too much about time, if you want to stop in the middle of a run, you know, let's say I'm playing Guardian now. It, let's say I wanted to switch to Feral or something. Oh, well, I'm flying. So I would have to, you know, activate Feral, wait for this to go off, right? It does take a little bit of time. And then I have, like, no Feral points spent on this character. So then I'd have to stop. Um, you know, obviously, this isn't exactly what I would want. It doesn't even have... Um, brutal slash here so i'd have to go back redo all of these talent points and that takes like five minutes so from a time perspective that's never ideal but also the average player is not going to be um trying to like switch specs in the middle of a run so the fact that death knight kind of as a class with the way that a lot of its stuff works out kind of necessitates you if you want to maximize your leveling efficiency play all three that's kind of bad but at the very least death knight one thing I can say in its favor is every single spec is at least good at its niche. Like, Frost is really solid at, you know, doing AoE damage, especially at low levels. Uh, Unholy is really good for single target. And, like, once you get its kit online, burst AoE at higher levels. And Blood does dog shit damage, has, like, no mobility, but it won't die. So if you need to, you can switch to Blood for Yetimus, and Yetimus is completely free. Same with all of the other elite mobs. And you can dungeon tank with it. So Death Knight requires you to kind of play all three specs to get the most out of it while leveling. But at least every single one of those specs is good within its niche. Whereas you have other stuff like Survival, or um, not Survival, uh, like Rogue, where you have Sub Rogue and Outlaw Rogue, where they're both only okay at their niche and terrible at the other things. At least Sub Rogue, Sub Rogue, from what I've been told, I'm going to have to try it at some point. Um, when you get to higher levels, apparently it has decent AoE, so it's not the worst thing in the world. But Rogue, you not only need to play multiple specs to really get the most out of it, but even then, it's not that good. Like, even if you play Outlaw really well, it's still not a good AoE spec while leveling. It's just, it's the best you have to access. Same with Sub and Single Target. Sub is not even remotely, like, one of the best single target damage specs for leveling, but you kind of need to play it if you want to be able to kill Yetimus at all. So yeah, there's some weird stuff like that. Uh, fire is slow, but Frost feels so fast. You're leveling one, and you did 49 levels today with no heirlooms. Yeah, I've heard Frost is solid. I mean, honestly, all mage specs... Um, I, I don't know about fire, because most people have told me, like, you know, Frost is good as well. Obviously, Arcane is very, very strong. We've already established that, right? Um, I've heard Frost is good. The only thing is Frost, I think, lacks a little bit of the mobility of Arcane Mage, so you can't go clearly as fast. Can, can I check Discord? I will, I will glance at it, but I do not respond to... Okay, yeah, no. If you have, like, a generic question, you can either ask it in chat here, or you can wait until I'm done with the stream. I'm not gonna respond to a Discord DM in the middle of stream, right? Ask it here. 
you know, if you have a question. Um, but I glanced at your message, something something about lock mode on, what, whatever level, blah, 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 blah. I'll give you the same answer I give everybody because it's probably applicable. Continue along the guide just because you did not reach the exact same level that I was at in my guide or speed run does not mean you're behind. There is a million things included at the end of the guide to um, get you up to 60. So, yeah, that's all you need to worry about. Um... You don't mind random world PvP, though? Yeah, world PvP can be fun, for sure, because it's not serious. You know, if I get into a world PvP encounter, at least not while leveling, obviously while leveling I'm trying to, you know, go, like, fast and stuff, but if I'm doing world quests and, you know, somebody attacks me, I might be mildly annoyed, but I don't really care too much, right? Um, so yeah, that can be fun. I've had fun world PvP experiences. Uh, Kevin Jordan's talk about how once you start min-maxing, it's the beginning, the end, is iconic. Um, I... Yeah, I, I feel like I, I know what you're referring to. Um, I, I've never understood people's hatred towards min-maxing, because min-maxing is, like, literally how I have fun in games, right? Um, like, I am basically taking leveling and min-maxing it to the extreme, but, like, this is how I have fun with leveling. I would not give a damn about leveling if it was just casual, you know, mindless killing stuff. The fact that I can, you know, try to optimize it and min-max it is what makes it fun for me. That's always been my mindset. Between uh, 40 to 55, Frosty K can feel really clunky and sketchy. Yeah, exactly. Frosty K kind of has that weird gap in the middle where it peters out before you hit 60 and get all the capstones for sure. Glad you're running Survival. Was thinking about doing it for an RP character, White Lion from Warhammer. Yeah. Oh, the White Lions of Kreis, definitely. Um, I messed around. I, I don't know if you're saying just in general, right? From like, you know, Warhammer lore perspective or from like uh, Return of Reckoning. But I did mess around a little bit with a, a White Lion character in the Warhammer private server. And that was kind of fun. Uh, but yeah, obviously, you know, uh, I know what you're talking about with White Lions of Krace just in general. And that definitely a fun unit, especially. Um, reason why I ask is because Frosty K was solid throughout your experience. Not super strong, but good enough. Um, yeah, I mean, Frost, by the way, mind you, when it falls off from, like, 40 to 60 or so, it's not terrible. It's just not great. Like, it, whereas stuff like Feral Druid, right, whereas we saw Feral is actually weak lower on, and once it gets stuff like Brutal Slash, it picks up towards the later levels, Frosty Kick kind of has the opposite effect, where it falls off a little bit, and it's not able to, like, really kill things effectively. It can still work, you know, it, it's not rogue, it doesn't have to struggle to live. Uh, but yeah, it, it's it's solid for sure. Uh, hello, angry guy. How are you? Uh, thank you, Ollie. Um, and before you ask, I will start the run eventually. You were about to start a Volpera Survival Hunter? Awesome. How do I make my golds? Uh, carries, uh, whatchamacallit, selling stuff at the start of a patch, tokens when they're high, etc. First time catching these live. Love the vids. Awesome. Thank you, Babaka, for watching. You had a White Lion character back when War was live. Was a damn good game for its time. Yeah, I never played it when it was live, right? But I did check out Return of Reckoning a few times. I want to go back and actually hit max level on it. Because, you know, kind of like, I got into Warhammer much later because of Total War Warhammer. And then a bunch of my friends in high school had played Age of Reckoning back when it was live. So I like thought back when uh like in 2020 when i really got into total war warhammer i was like you know i should check out the private server and see what that game was actually like and i, I actually thought it was pretty cool i enjoyed it hello analana serenar good to see you okay i think i've gotten most of the stuff set up so i'm gonna get the last few things i need let me just double check everything um yeah no dark moon fair until next sunday is when we'll have dark moon fair again I might, um, because, like, I don't, you know, I, I can save speedruns for Sunday, because that's when Darkman Fair is actually going to be active. I might do something different next Saturday. I'll still stream, but I might actually do, like, you know, an entire just classic day on Saturday and save, like, you know, the retail leveling stuff for this uh, Sunday and Saturday. Because uh, getting more testing done with Darkman Fair is always nice. Um, whatchamacallit? Uh, trying to think of what I was going to say. Um, at this point, I mean, I didn't expect to be doing so many 10 to 60 runs right now because I kind of figured Blizzard would have fixed 60 to 70 by now. So we're, we're actually getting through a lot of them. We've been making good progress doing all the testing stuff. Um, 
I may actually be able to make my tier list sooner rather than later. Because I wasn't expecting to be able to get around to that for a while, but yeah, it's it's going good. Especially now that I've started doing the 40 to 60 runs. Because I think that's a much more efficient way to test out some of like the specs like Feral Druid. So that's definitely going to help like expedite the testing process. So, yeah, I don't know. I'll, I'll see what I'll do for next weekend, but because it's kind of like, you know, we, we'll have Darkman Fair one day away, it seems pointless to do a speedrun here, right, where it's just before Darkman Fair. And I still have a lot of classic testing that I need to do. So we'll see. Uh, you're the first one you, uh, you've you encountered who disagrees with that statement, which is fine, but you also think you explained it poorly. It's not so much min-maxing... Uh, oh, yeah, min-maxing reward for time. I guess... That's the thing. A lot of people, uh, what I disagree about is I disagree that min-maxing inherently is unfun because a lot of people think that, you know, min-maxing is inherently antithetical to having fun in a game, right? A lot of people view game, like playing games as two states. You are either going in completely blind and innocent and not researching anything and you're having fun and enjoying the game or you are a super hardcore min-maxer who only cares about the math and, you know, optimization. And to you, the game has become a job. And you can see nothing beyond, like, the numbers and stuff like that. And you take no fun or pleasure in it. Like, a lot of people view min-maxing with that, like, black and white mindset. And that is the stuff I've always pushed back on. Because, you know, for a lot of people, optimization it, as a process is inherently fun. Like, for me. And I think, you know, yeah, the people who just spend all of their time in maxing, right? Yeah, at a certain time, it becomes unfun. I'll give you an example of when I've done that, right? Um, back in original classic release, I got to rank 10 in the PvP system. I spent so much time mindlessly farming Arathi or uh, Alterac Valley while like basically half AFK, right? Like I would just defend towers, right? Because, you know, when you're on your 100th, Alterac Valley of the day, you know, you're not going to be sitting there actively PvPing. Sorry if that, you know, offends some classic Andy in the chat, right? Um, and I was binge watching It's Always Sunny on my second monitor. And eventually I realized the only thing I was actually enjoying about all of my time spent grinding PvP in Original Classic was watching Always Sunny. So I'm like, why don't I watch Always Sunny while actually doing something in a game that I am enjoying, right? I am sitting here grinding all of this PvP stuff, and for what? So that I could get slightly better armor in, like, a month to maybe eventually hit, like, rank 13, 14. And I, I had that kind of realization one day where I'm like, fuck this. Like, this isn't fun. That is the kind of stuff where I agree. When the entire thing becomes, like, you know, just trying to optimize the grind to get to the rewards, and you're not actually playing the game for fun, that's stuff where I will fully agree. Yeah, that's not fun. Uh, but stuff like this, you know, the speed runs where I'm getting all the fancy consumables to try and set up the perfect run. To me, that is optimization that I actually enjoy. So uh, there's there's like a bit of a give and take. I don't know why my UI is like lit up, but that was annoying me. Always Sunny is the best part of high rank classic PvP. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, you had the Collector's War that came with the art book and the usable Warhammer Mini. Oh, nice. I didn't even know that they had, like, a Warhammer Mini that came with the pre-order. That sounds cool. Um, it definitely seems like a, a fun game, but... Wait, Return of Reckoning is dead? No. Really? Hold on. Return of Reckoning... Is it actually? Um... I'm not seeing anything. Uh, I guess I'll... There's a, a Reddit for it. Past month. I know it. I'm not seeing anything about. Yeah, I don't think that's true. I can't. I'm. I'm. I'll look up Return of Reckoning Cease and Desist. But yeah, I was looking into it fairly recently, and I didn't cease and desist. Um. No. No, it. Uh, the only thing I can find here is that other Warhammer-related projects have received a cease and desist, which, like, mind you, it is not outside of the realm of possibility, because Games Workshop does do really dumb fucking shit when it comes to, like, shutting down fan projects, but I cannot find anything through a bunch of quick Google searches. So I think Return of Reckoning still seems like it's fine. 
It was killed but had Ankh up. Their website just updated yesterday. Their website still has players active. Yeah, unless somebody can actually send that to me, I'm, I'm pretty sure it's fine. Uh, would I recommend a mage or shadow priest for someone who's solo PvE most of the time and likes to see when a big rare goes in to solo it? Uh, both are fine, honestly. I mean, mage and shadow priest are both in a very good spot. I would say, historically speaking, mage has always been strong, whereas right now, shadow priest is really, 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 really good, but there have been times in the past where uh, shadow priest has not been an amazing spot, so, you know, maybe take that with what you will. Uh, hello, Nunya Business, good to see you. Liquid wouldn't do 100 pulls on Raid for Race the World first if they didn't enjoy optimizing their strats. I mean, Liquid, I, I will say, I'm sure they enjoy it, right? But obviously, in that case, it's a competition. There is, there is technically speaking, money on the line, even if there is no official prize pool, because obviously you want to win because it, you know, makes your guild look better. So I am sure that they don't enjoy every bit of optimization they do, but yeah. Uh, that's fair. Agree with you as you totally do that yourself. And rank 14 grand sucks. Yeah, Always Sunny is the best part of high rank classic PvP. Always Sunny is fantastic. Yes, absolutely. Love that show. Uh, but I honestly, I first got around to watching it because of high rank classic PvP. So I at least owe it that. Uh, hit 70 for the first time following your latest catch-up guide while you watch this. Uh, Sunny slaps too. Yeah, I haven't watched the latest season. I still need to watch that. Um... But glad to hear that you're finding the catch-up guide helpful. Uh, none, my none of your business said, Harlden, have you ever played the old Guild Wars? That game was fun all the time because you never had to grind for anything. I, so, I played old Guild Wars when I was very, very, very young. But I did play it. Um, I will say my, I never got far into it because I was literally like five years old when I played original Guild Wars. Um, my memory of it is extremely fuzzy. But yes, I did remember as a kid, I enjoyed what little I did play of it. And it's always been one of those where I've thought about going back to it, especially after I started playing Guild Wars 2, because you get like the um, the unlockable stuff. So one of these days, I have like a million things on my bucket list, right? But something in my bucket list that I do one day hope to get done is I want to go back through original Guild Wars and like 100% it and get all of the... Uh, the rewards for Guild Wars 2. Because I think that would actually be fun. You know, I like playing old games and stuff. Uh, I went back through Return of Reckoning at one point, and I'd still like to go through and actually hit max level in Return of Reckoning at some point. Uh, but I think it could be fun to do that for Guild Wars 1 as well, and then you get the rewards to carry over into Guild Wars 2. Uh, Zachary said, Ah yes, Harlden, another Saturday, another speedrun. We should call Saturday Speedrun Saturdays. I mean, right now, it's speedrun Saturdays and Sundays, which, you know, I guess wasn't intentional, but, you know, it, alliteration, I suppose, does work out. You've never been able to finish achieves in Guild Wars 1. Not being able to jump kind of annoys you. Oh, I forgot about that. I didn't realize you couldn't jump. Uh, yeah, I feel like if I were to ever go back for achieves on Guild Wars 1, it would be the kind of thing that uh, I would want to have, like, friends to help me with. So I remember trying to talk some of my Guild Wars 2 friends into it, and they were always like, yeah, maybe. And that was, I don't know, three years ago. We never got around to it. So who knows in the future, maybe. We'll see. Okay, let me get the last bit of prep done so I can start this run. Uh, okay, we don't need anything from 60 to 70. Mount equipment. Okay, that's one thing I'm missing. So comfortable riders barding. There we go. What else? Uh, yeah, I don't need weapon oils. Uh, I have all my augment runes. I have drafts, healing potions, damage potions, flasks, food. Mm. Yep, 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 yep. Bags, check. Uh, I guess I should get Radinax gems. It doesn't... Mm. So, yeah, I don't, I don't care. For like a testing run like this, I don't really care if I have Radnax gems. Um, but maybe I should start farming more of them just in case. I will get Sanguine Hibiscus. I probably won't be doing that many dungeons just because as a hunter, you don't have tank you, right? So uh, it's going to take me a while to get into dungeons. There's a decent chance I don't even need these, but fuck it. Why not? Uh, okay. I think that's it outside of the gear. So... I'll check to see what gear is available on the server, and if there's stuff that I can mail over, cool. If not, whatever. 
Uh, let's check this out. So armor, let's go 12 to 14. Uh, I need to search for male. Armor male, 12 to 14. 14. Okay. Uh, yeah, there really isn't anything. There's one belt for 6,000 gold. I think I will skip that. Then uh, levels 29 to 31. There should be some Wrath of the Lich King things here that I can buy. Uh, okay, yeah, here we go. Arm braces of the vibrant flame. Sure. Uh, what else? Um, benefactors gloves. Sure. So I need bracers, gloves, belt, boots. Uh. Huh. I guess this works. Giant stalkers, bracers. They seem. I just brought bought bracers, right? Yeah. Never mind. So at this point, I just need, okay, belts. Now I just need boots for level 30. Uh, what's available? Doesn't look like there are any boots available for level 30. Um, there's Edgemaster's handguards. Uh, this stuff is level 30. Any boots here? I might be blind, but I don't see any. Yeah, well, I'm not going to buy an ultra rare uh, dungeon drop just for leveling. So, yeah, okay, I'll just skip boots. Doesn't really matter. And then, what else? Level 41 gear. So, I'll do 40 to 42. And grab some of this. Okay, so, yeah, now we can start reliably getting sockets on stuff. So, I'm going to check every single one of these, see if any of this has a socket. Because that means we can put speed gems in it, which would be quite nice. Uh, warp wind, no sockets. No sockets. Uh, gauntlets. Oh, this does has, have a socket. Okay, perfect. So, we get that. So now gloves are taken care of. Uh, we have belts here. And also, I'm not looking at chat right now, just in case anyone's talking. So I will... Oh, nice bracers with a socket. Okay. I'm also not too concerned about secondaries. As long as they have a socket, they're still going to be better than any alternatives. So now I have bracers, gloves, right? That's what I got before. Bracers, gloves, and I need belt and boots. So no socket on that belt. Um, Baronar chain belt, no socket there. I'm trying to make sure I don't look at everything. I don't miss anything. Uh, oh, socketed boots. All right, this is actually quite lucky. I normally don't find so many items with a socket off the auction house whenever I'm just kind of YOLO prepping by just buying whatever I can find. Uh, now it's just belts, I believe. So there's a few belts. Oh, and this one has a socket. All right, perfect. Okay, so I found, yeah, all level 41 items with sockets. And then the last thing I'll check is... Actually, honestly, because they all have sockets, I don't even give a shit. Like, I was going to buy level 53 items, but it's so minor, and these ones with a socket, I'm just going to roll with this. So, I want to get two speed gems, so let's get Straddling Sage Agate and Straddling Viridium. And then, for agility gems, so I want gems, agi, uh... I would want, I believe it is Leviathan's Eye, I think has the most agi, and then Kraken's Eye. Or, yeah. Yeah, that's how, that's how it goes. And then the next one would be Saber's Eye, but I won't need to get that. So, Leviathan's Eye, Kraken's Eye, perfect. So these are my level 30 items, just throw those there. And get sockets in these things. Throw them in this bag. And that is the last thing I need to do for prep. So we are almost good to go. And close my shopping list. Why am I leveling a survival rather than the BM? Well, Honestly, I think survival is better than BM. 
for the record. Uh, but the reason I'm leveling as anything in any of these runs is for testing purposes, right? Uh, in case you missed it, I will actually, I'll update the pin real quick. Because now that I'm, uh, now that I've done grep, I don't need to link that anymore. So I will uh, pull for tomorrow's stream and then I'll throw this in chat. So yeah, in case you haven't, been following these i every single time i do one of these speed runs i will put up a poll on my uh my channel and i will let people vote for what i do uh in the next speed run because the goal eventually is to test every single spec so that i can make a tier list so survival hunter is actually good um so i would probably level a hunter as it regardless but it did win last weekend's poll uh, it, well, normally I do the poll for the weekend I'm going to be streaming, but as mentioned before, last weekend it tied with Havoc Demon Hunter for winning the poll, so I did Havoc DH last weekend, and I'm doing Survival now, but I have a poll for tomorrow, and, you know, you can vote for what you want to see there. Survival is tons of fun. I really enjoy playing Survival. Guild Wars 2 was amazing for its time. Now the game is completely dead. Cities are dead. Hard to play now with no community. Yeah, I'd imagine. 6,000 for a belt at that price. It better be uh, that four strength, uh, four stam leather belt at level 18. Yeah. Uh, looks like you made it just in time. Yep, pretty much. We're about to start. Do I have old professions leveled? I think it may be cheaper in the long run for all the consumables. I mean, honestly, you're probably right, Chori. But think about it this way. Even if I had them all leveled, which I don't, right? So I would have to go ahead, spend the time to level them all. The amount of time that I would have to spend getting all of the materials mailed over, crafting it myself, and then mailing it back, that, like, you know, time is money, as the goblins say, right? So, uh, I don't really think it would be worth it. For really expensive things, like, the only thing I actually bothered setting up on my own is back when Mr. Pandaria crafted gear was good, I did get leatherworking on a bunch of my characters and craft my own mop crafted pieces, just because that stuff was exorbitantly expensive in the auction house compared to the material price. But for consumables, I mean, at most, this stuff runs you like a barely, like a very tiny amount over the uh, material price. So the amount of time you save just buying it off the auction house, that is absolutely worth it, in my opinion. Um, when you were leveling survival, it felt like it did better damage. Yeah. What spec is my druid? Uh, this is, I mean, this druid is guardian, right? Uh, in case you're wondering, like, this was... If you go back really into my old, old videos, this was... I can't remember. I think this might have been my first Guardian Druid world record run. I want to say it was. So I think if you find... Let, let me see if I can find it on my, my channel. It, it At this point, it's unlisted. Um, But if I go all the way... Crap, I have to... Oh, it's like buried all the way at the back of my YouTube thing. Because I have to scroll through every single page of videos. Uh, but yeah, if you go all the way back to the very early, early videos on my channel, this was... Uh, oh, there's so... I, I always forget how many, like, old videos I have buried here. It should be... Yeah, here we go. Uh, was it this run? Let me... I'm, I'm going to open it up and see. All right. Uh... I have to, like, actually watch my video to remember which character it was. Um, also, let me make sure, is game audio working? Advanced audio properties. Ah! Uh, game sound has not been working this entire time, so there you go. I always forget I have to, like, change a setting within OBS to actually get that to play, so now you should be able to hear that stuff. Thanks for mentioning the JoJo Monk add-on. It made leveling to 70 hella fun. Awesome. Yeah, I'm glad you enjoyed that one. Uh, as somebody who's leveling all old professions, it is in fact an ex expensive, time-consuming nightmare. Yeah. Survival's, mo survival's mobility is fun. The only thing you miss when you play survival are your exotic beasts. Absolutely. Uh, okay, let me see here. So, I have... It is this character. Yeah. So, here we go. I will... I'll link this, this video for anyone curious. This is the character that I'm currently on right now, the, the preparation character. It's that video from way, way back when. This was uh, two years, I think almost three years old. It was my first ever uh, Guardian Druid World Record speedrun. Because this was, I think, 
Yeah, the order in which I did videos, my first ever video was obviously my Volpera Hunter speedrun. Then I put up my leveling guide. Then I did uh, a no heirloom, no consumable run for fun, which was absolutely miserable. And then I broke my world record a second time with Guardian Druid. And that was this character. Uh, so I've had it just kind of sitting. You can even see it. Some of the stuff that I used in that run back in 2020, I still have like my lucky double-sided coin from, you know, Shadowlands scaling at level 44. I have a lot of the old stuff just still chilling on this character. Um, so it's one of my old world record speedrun characters. And now it has ever since just been sitting on Malganus and I just use it to organize speedruns. So I have a guild bank here where I have like a bunch of speedrun items just like chilling in the guild bank tab and stuff like that. And whenever I'm preparing for a speedrun, I just go on this character and do stuff. So I don't really play this character. It is Guardian to answer your question. I think I did mention that. Um, but this is like one of the, I don't even know how many I have at this point. It's like one of the 10 or guardian druids that i have just like across my account on different servers and this one is purely a bank ult at this point i don't actually play it but whenever i do play druid these days it is usually guardian so yeah i love the high mountain tarn flight form yeah it's very good um hello infinite it's going well hope it's going well for you as well uh brandon said awesome man thanks so much no problem all right, let me get all this stuff sent over. So first thing that I need to send, as always, I'll send 25,000 gold. I probably won't need remotely that much, but better safe than sorry. And I send over bags. Then I'll send over uh, this stuff. I want to do it in reverse order. So yeah, there we go. Um, then consumables. So I want to send over... This stuff, that's, uh, then all of my higher level consumables, like so. Then, what do I want to send? Probably, yeah, probably this stuff. These crafted, or these uh, BOE items. Then the level 30 items. Then Sanguine Hibiscus. Then uh, all my heirlooms. And finally, uh, Comfortable Riders of Barney. Okay, I think we are all good to go. So, run I'm going to be doing here is fairly similar to, uh, you know, the ones that I've done recently. The only difference will be I'll have to rely a bit more on quests, because obviously with, you know, Survival Hunter not... Or Hunter in general, not having a tank spec, uh, I probably won't get into dungeons fast, but hey, if some of you guys want to queue up as tanks or healers and maybe help me get into dungeons faster, I'm, you're not going to group with me, right? But obviously, if we're sitting here waiting on a healer for like 30 minutes, then I'll never get into a dungeon. So I know a lot of people like to do that. So hey, I won't say no, right? Um, but yeah, I think uh, i got everything set up so we can start this run. And I've actually caught up on chat this time, which is nice. I will also, I'll close stuff in the backgrounds so I don't have anything cluttering my view. All right. So the moment I skip the cutscene and do, there we go, any UI interaction. Uh, there we go. Time starts. I'm going to pick up this quest just for EXP. Uh, I also mount here, it's slightly faster. I didn't manage to do the thing I normally do where I get my UI set up ahead of time. So it's going to take me a little bit to get everything adjusted. So we like this, get rid of the large red sec. But while this is going on, I can at least take some of this stuff off my bars. Oh, fuck. I did not mean to use my Castle Nathria teleport. Uh, get rid of that. Uh, Unfortunately, well, here, I'm going to quickly go to edit mode, this, this, options, action bars, that way, while I'm looting all of this stuff, I can at least get things set up. Uh, do control three. Okay. Uh, look into my bags for gun shoes, also pop, draft of ten lands. 
go. Get rid of these things. This is one of the only problems with Volpera. They um they start really far away from Chromie. They're actually at this point, I think, the only allied race that does not have easy access to Chromie. Because now Maghar orcs start right by this area. Whereas they used to start all the way in the same place as Volpera. So it's a very minor time loss, but it is like, you know, a minute and a half time loss just for playing Volpera, which, you know, is a little bit unfortunate. Uh, portal to Outland. The addition of the other one it fucks me up, right? Because it's nothing's in the same spot that it normally is. Uh, so I'm going to Goblin Glider kit over to the board. I might as well throw myself in queue immediately. Also, is... I'm getting, like, slight... Slight, like, frame... Yeah, my frame rate is kind of fucked. I I don't really know why. Um, but this is actually like very noticeable and very annoying. Um, hmm. Yeah, I, I don't actually fully understand what is causing that, uh, which is a little bit unfortunate. Uh, it's at least, it's not a memory leak because it's not impacting my computer. Like, it's not slowing things down. I guess it's just a weird frame issue. Hopefully that clears up because I would not like to have to deal with, like, random frame drops while trying to set this up. Uh, I'll read chat in a little bit. I need to focus for this, so sorry if it takes me a little bit to get around to your message. I can see that people are typing, but... Need to get this stuff all set up. Uh, as usual, when I start the Sylvanas RP, one of the nice things, honestly, about DPS queues is I, in theory, should be able to reach Sylvanas and do the RP and get stuff set up there. Whereas, you know, for tank runs, I need to get all this stuff figured out before I jump into the dungeon. So that delays things a little bit. Throw that on shift three. Healer Q popped already? Oh, yeah. No, I'm sure there's going to be a lot of DPS that you'll get before, uh, you know, finding me in a queue, right? That's just kind of how it's going to go. But there, uh, so I can fire water. Gun shoes are almost up. In fact, I should put them, let's put that on my bars. And pop gun shoes here, get a little bit closer. And what else do I need to add? I think that's it for now, in terms of stuff that I need to add to my bars. An item to summon Chromie to change expansions would be helpful. You know, I've never heard somebody suggest that before, but that is actually a really good idea. Yeah. A little, like, consumable, like, quest item or something like that, that you would just be able to summon Chromie on demand. Honestly, that would be really good quality of life. Okay, and then when I start this RP, then I can finally swap to survival and get uh, my bars set up. Uh, what's the best spec for shaman to level? Um, depends, right? Like, obviously for dungeons, play resto because of Qs. Um, I think I'd probably put that on five or six. Let me see if I if I want to press kill shot. Uh, my finger instinctively goes to 5, so that's probably where I normally have it bound. Kill command 2. Um, yeah, I can't even use Arcane Shot or Steady Shot without a ranged weapon. Uh, Bane Death would be Shift G. Expect the Cheetah. Expect the Turtle. Disengage. Exhilaration. At Utility. I don't really think I'll need wing clip, but I'll put it there just in case. Uh, and then survival. Do I? Oh, I don't get raptor strike until level eleven. But that's like, that's kind of. I really wish that they would just let you pick your uh, spec talent first at level ten, 
Because not getting your initial ability half the time, it just creates this weird gap level where at level 10, you just can't really do anything. The fact that I don't have Raptor Strike is just really weird. That does not feel nice. It's a problem for a number of specs, like Brewmasters don't get Keg Smash, and like um, Guardian Druids don't get like Thrash, I think? Or maybe they don't get Swipe. I forget which one. Or Mangle? I... Um... But yeah, it means that a lot of people need to get to 11 before they can actually, like, really play their spec, and it's kind of annoying. Very small thing, but just would be nice quality of life. I will also at least put Make Camp and Return to Camp here. Uh, we'll see. My dad said, I'm doing a hunter, why didn't I ask for help? Fern Beast knows all about hunters. Yeah. If I need to ask somebody how to put my pet on aggressive and pull half the dungeon, I'll definitely, um, let you know. Uh, good luck. Thank you, RPG Degree. Analana said, time to go snarp snipe Harlden's Q. Yeah. Um, step one for Volpera, bring out the camp and get rid of that canopy. Yeah. Uh, speaking of which, I definitely need to... I'm not even going to get rid of the canopy on the mount. I'm just going to switch mounts in general. Um, an expedition yak goes there. Cartel master's gear glider goes there. But yeah, good point. The derpy Volpera mount canopy is really annoying. There's other Volperas here. It's silly that Volpera spawned four light years away from Chromie. Yeah, it's a little bit annoying. Okay, good. I got the quest. Uh, I can't really, can't really do anything right now, though, without, uh, somebody already killed all this stuff? Uh, well, shit. Um, yeah, that's the unfortunate thing about sometimes you get, end up being, like, directly behind another person, and they just, uh, kill all the stuff. Long Q just makes the stream more relatable? True. Uh, they won't get Iron Fur. Yeah, I mean, Iron Fur, though, isn't, like, super important. Okay, well, I got I got a Q, and it is, uh, Blood Furnace. Nice. Um, let me interface... Last colors, there we go. Uh, okay, so... Oh, I also forgot to use consumables. So there we go. Got my consumes up. Now I just need to wait on the tank. Is Mukla joining? No, Mukla will not be joining. Survival needs more abilities, and I think it's fine. At max level, survival's fine. Obviously, while leveling, things are like a little bit jank, you know. Um, what do I think about? Oh, let me read that. I also need to like auto attack for a lot of time at this point. What do I think about the data mined SOO time walking and alleged return of the Garrosh heirlooms? Look. I am very excited for the potential of Garrosh Heirlooms coming back, but I am not going to get my hopes up. I think a lot of people are reading a little bit too much into it. If it's actually coming back, I will be very happy. Uh, but I'm not going to sit here and get my hopes up and say, oh, yeah, Garrosh Heirlooms coming back because, you know, it's Blizzard, right? Until I see it confirmed, I'm not going to speculate. But I am excited. I think it would be really cool if they came back. Uh... It would also mean that I could start using Garrosh Heirlooms in speedruns, because if they're actually once again obtainable, then not only would I be able to get all the Garrosh Heirlooms I missed, but then now I could justify using them in speedruns, because they're not, like, grossly unobtainable. Which would be cool. I would really like that. Spec talent should come first. Yeah, glad other people agree with me. Most requested feature is queuing for all available dungeons. The fact that that isn't already a thing is definitely very odd. Yeah. I will give you that. Um, Survival Hunter is hilarious because it's the only spec that you cannot effectively use their weapon at level 10. Yeah, that is a good point. I didn't even consider that. I can at least whack people with my uh thing. But it, it is kind of funny where like at level 10, I actually think I would be better off using a bow right now. Just because I would at least be able to use Arcane Shot as a filler. So that is definitely odd. In fact, why the fuck don't I? You know what? Let's bust this bad boy out. Marksmanship. Get a Dwarven Hand Cannon. You know, 
I, I am now officially a ranged survival hunter for the next half a level. Uh, let's toss arcane shot on here. <laughs> fuck it. <laughs> Why the fuck not? Uh, I'm actually probably going to do more damage this way. In fact, I could actually, I think, pull things. Yeah, it, it actually doesn't do terrible damage. Really not bad. Useful pararacial. I guess if I really wanted to, I could also put steady shot on my bars, but I don't know if I want to go that far. Uh, thumbs up to the black coffee. Tell my mom to try out the coffee brewed with a bit of cinnamon and a pinch of salt. So this comment is like, no problem. Um, admittedly, I don't like my mom isn't really big on drinking coffee. When I said like my mom had like the, the coffee roaster thing, um, that was back in high school, which was like, I mean, at this point, that that's almost 10 years ago. Right. So uh, it's been a while. Um, I was definitely much more like into coffee than my mom ever was. And I think the only reason she had it is because her boyfriend at the time um was like really into like coffee roasting or whatever. So that's why like we had the coffee roaster thing. So I don't know. Um, usually like if my mom gets coffee, it's like Starbucks or Dunkin Donuts most of the time. Okay, I'm gonna pull. Uh, is you still waiting for them to add the pissing cape back? What is the pissing cape? <laughs> what? <laughs> uh. They also need to fix the rest of the enchants. Yeah. I mean, the fact that we're like, we are around, what is it, like eight months into Dragonflight and they still haven't fixed that. It is honestly unacceptable at this point. It's just multiple level scaling things completely broken. And at this point, I wouldn't be surprised if we reach one year and they have still not fixed basic scaling issues that happened at Dragonflight launch. That's just, it's starting to get really fucking annoying. And, like, they're doing leveling changes with, like, this patch. And obviously, aside from the fact that it's almost hilarious that they finally get around to doing, like, little leveling reworks in this patch, and half of them don't even fucking work. That is just, like, icing on the cake. But the fact that they go ahead to try and do stuff like that and then don't even make basic fixes to, like, the scaling changes, I, I don't know, man. It's... It really annoys me. Um, yeah. Blizzard just doesn't really give a shit, which like, you know, obviously this affects me because, you know, I do leveling speedruns and stuff like that, but this isn't also just something where I'm like mad because it's like, wow, I can't do my videos, right? It's kind of egregious because when you think about it, who are the people that this impacts? Does this impact me seriously? Not really. It means I can't update my leveling guide, which like, I mean, sucks for me a little bit, but like, I'll make my leveling guide eventually. I'm more mildly annoyed than like actually genuinely mad about it um also now i can use raptor strike won't we get out of combat uh take raptor strike apply changes there we go uh but the main what the fuck somehow accidentally tabbed out i did not hit tab so i don't know why let me make sure it didn't fuck with anything in obs okay um yeah i uh, I'm a little bit annoyed because the main like group of players who this impacts is new players. It's people just getting into World of Warcraft. And, you know, of all of the groups of players that you don't want to, like, neglect, it's the new players, the people who are getting into your game and making it not die, right? Uh, I, honestly, a lot of other MMOs, quite frankly, have the reverse problem. A lot of MMOs spend too much time on you know the end game or or the new player experience i mean and not enough time in the end game thing so veteran players will quit but obviously you know a lot of other mmos are smart enough to realize that without new players they cannot survive um yeah windows debuff i don't know how one of my uh one of my like windows tabs got like selected that happened weird um but world of warcraft repeatedly neglects its like low level experience and like leveling player issues and i don't know it, it is odd uh it is the kind of people that you do not want to be neglecting so it's unfortunate uh survival uses a bow till 11 yeah 
Uh, my biggest issue with high level survival play is you're basically just a grenade bot. It's, I mean, okay, so I will at least say it is better now than it was in Shadowlands, right? I agree with you. I did not like the um, survival play style with the Sepulchre set bonus. It was really good, but I thought it was boring as fuck. Nowadays, yes, grenades are still a very big part of your rotation, but they at least aren't your entire rotation. They are just like a sizable chunk of it, but there are other things that you actually use now instead of literally just mashing kill command for resets and grenades for damage. So I'm kind of fine with it. Why does Arcane Shot even exist? Serpent Shot replaces it and Survival ends up using pole arms. Well, Arcane Shot is like a baseline hunter ability. So it obviously Survival doesn't use it. Um, I don't even think BM uses it, uh, but I think Marksmanship Hunter uses it, I'm pretty sure. So it's just one of those generic baseline abilities that all Hunter specs get access to. Um, you know, yeah, you don't, you don't need to use it, but it's there. You don't need to spend a talent point on it, so it's whatever. But it would be nice if at least like they gave Survival Hunters an ability that they could use at level 10. Because it is kind of weird that they can't. Let me quickly teleport out and then teleport back in. Uh, apparently the um, the window sound baited a lot of people. Yeah, sorry about that. <laughs> Range survival heresy. Honestly, I had an idea for a video, which I, unfortunately I never managed to pull it off, as you will hear why. Uh, but I had an idea for range survival back in... Um, uh, Shadowlands, and I was going to use the Sylvanas bow with it and basically play ranged survival hunter with the Sylvanas bow and see how long it took people to notice that I wasn't using a melee weapon. Because the reality of a Shadowlands survival is you almost never used a melee ability. You would like every once in a while uh, use like Raptor Strike or whatever. But most of your damage was Wildfire Bomb and Kill Command. So you could do the entire thing from ranged. So I, like, I wanted to get the Sylvanas bow because then I would actually have access to Wailing Arrow, which would give me an advantage over, you know, not having uh, the ability to Mongoose Bite and try to do, like, Mythic Plus Keys with that. Unfortunately, my Hunter in Shadowlands never managed to get the Sylvanas bow, so I just didn't really feel like doing that video without it. Uh, but I did have that idea for a little while. I think it would have been fun, just didn't happen. You could honestly still do it, even in Dragonflight. It just wouldn't be nearly as viable. Because you do actually need to press some melee abilities now. Uh, but back in Shadowlands with the Sepulchre bonus, you could pretty much get away with not using melee stuff at all. And you would do like 95% of your damage. It was a little bit ridiculous, honestly. Uh, also, I need to re -queue. Can't forget to do that. Especially because queues are very long. The legendary cape they removed? Uh, I'm not familiar with that. Unless you mean like the mop capes? I haven't heard that called that before though. Um, seems like it would be better to go through Tutorial Island if it didn't take so long. Yeah. Um, let's see. Leveling has always been the least cared for aspect of the game. Sans maybe vanilla. Yeah. Um, I mean, I think they at least somewhat cared for leveling. All the like, hell, even in Cataclysm, right? Like, you could argue Cataclysm, while some people may not like it, they spent a lot of developer resources on revamping the zones. And one thing that you cannot say about the Cataclysm uh, revamp zones is that they aren't well done. The fact that these things came out, what was it, like 2010? or something, and they still hold up 10 years later? Like, Silver Pine Forest is still a banger leveling zone in 2023. That, I think, really goes to show how well these were designed and how well they aged. You know, you people can complain whether they're, like, not in the spirit of classic and whether they ruin the game, blah, 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 blah. It's still really well designed. So I think even in terms of, like, cataclysm and stuff, they still cared a lot about, you know, making the leveling sp experience enjoyable. Um... I don't really know when that kind of fell off. I think Legion is when they stopped caring because, like, even in WAD, right, they added, like, experience potions and they continually tried to make, like, the path to get caught up easier. And then Legion, I think, was the worst leveling has ever been in terms of, like, low-level catch-up stuff because you, um, 
you had to slog through a shit ton of really, really, really boring levels uh, where, like, everything took forever. And even BFA, they kind of neglected it. And then Shadowlands, you know, I was hopeful that they were actually going to start doing stuff, but they did the Chromie time changes, and they've really not iterated on it much since. Like, I, I mean, the whole integrating Shadowlands into Chromie time took them, like, way longer than it was supposed to, and they did it in such a way that made Shadowlands completely obsolete, so... I don't know. It's honestly since Legion, I think Blizzard has just kind of stopped really caring about the new player experience, and it's just kind of hurt the game. I think, but I've I talk about this a lot because it gets brought up a lot, so I'm not gonna go into it again. But you know, uh, it's it's definitely you know a topic that I've I've beaten down quite a lot. Um, this argument only works if uh, I mean hop on this so I can at least get this started. This argument only works if Blizzard actually thinks it's uh, important to gain new players over retaining what they have. Well, I mean, they may not think that, but it obviously is. As a veteran player, I think getting new players into the game is important. So, uh, yeah. I want to be neglected, right? I want new players to take priority sometimes. Uh, Tinfoil Hat Theory, they're working on leveling changes as well as the scaling issues. But for the next expansion, when we get the world revamp, not happening. I mean, I, I know you said tinfoil hat, and I know it, it's definitely just like, you know, speculation. But yeah, no fucking chance. Um, I mean, honestly, as cool as the Cataclysm world revamp is, there is no way they do another world revamp. Because one of the biggest failures of Cataclysm was the world revamp. As good as it turned out to be, it, you know, it is widely cited as one of the things that made people hate cataclysm or not just made people hate cataclysm from like people miss the old zones and i'm sure if they did it now they would at least keep the old zones in there and they wouldn't do what they did back then and just throw everything out but one of the problems is so many resources went into um the uh the leveling stuff that a lot of the complaints that i've heard about cataclysm is that people at the time thought that the end game felt very empty and barren so, yeah, I really don't think they will ever, ever do that again. Just uh, unfortunate. Um, let me just see. I, I forgot to set my Hearthstone by Chromie, but uh, we should still be fine. I don't really... It's I'm going to lose like a few minutes tops. Uh, is this real stream or premiere? I... I don't know what that means. This is... It's a stream. Are, are you asking, like, is this a pre-recorded video that I am just, like, showing on, like, in, in the, the stream format? I, I think there's a way you can do that on YouTube. But no, this is this is a, a real stream. Yes. It is live. Well, as you can probably tell, considering I read your comment. Um, but yeah, this isn't a, a pre-recorded video. Uh, oh, shit. MM replaces Arcane Shot with Chimera Shot by level 15-ish. No, they don't. No, they don't. MM doesn't run Chimera Shot. I just leveled an MM Hunter recently, and I did a lot of reading into it. MM Hunter does not replace, does not run Chimera Shot, right? Am I crazy? Let me double check. Um, I have to, I have to double check this, because I'm, I'm 99% sure that is not even a talent that you pick. At least I didn't pick it, and I... Didn't really have any interest in picking it. Uh, yeah, Chimera Shot, 0% pick rate. Um, let me look at Sarkareth. 0% pick rate. Yeah, no, you, you do not run Chimera Shot. Um, yeah. Because I, I literally just leveled an MM Hunter the other day. Or, not the other day, but the other week. And I did uh, did research into it, and nobody was running Chimera Shot. Uh, let's see. Sometimes I miss Wad Survival, Serpent Stink, Multi-Spam. Yeah, Wad Survival was fun. I enjoyed that. Uh, you'd say the leveling revamp in Kata was more a symptom and not the disease. They knew they wanted to revamp the world because it was old and just had to do the quest revamp. Yeah, I agree. Legion was notorious for being alt unfriendly. Well, that's a separate issue. I'm more talking about the catch-up in Legion. Like, Legion, leveling up to max level in Legion was one of the longest times that it's ever been i think early bfa it was probably slightly longer but 
one thing that they did in BFA, BFA is when they first started doing Winds of Wisdom. So they would have regular like 50% XP bonus leveling events in BFA towards the end to kind of like, you know, fix the issue of how long it took. But outside of obviously like, you know, since Kata is what I'm talking about. Um, since the days of Kata, leveling took the longest in Legion and very early BFA. Uh, getting caught up to max level. It was really, 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 really slow. Uh, but obviously, yes, the alt unfriendliness was a completely different issue with Legion, right? With like legendaries and artifact power and stuff like that. But you are correct that that was um, something that a lot of people took issue with, with Legion's design. Improved kill shot, wildfire bomb. Uh, let's see. Legion 100 to 110 scaling was really hit or miss. Yeah, for sure. Um, for me personally, the story was the problem. Red Ridge sucked for me since it was a Rambo homage. Um, yeah. I, I mean, definitely some of the zones are bad. I honestly, I think at the very least, um, Silver Pine and Hillsbrad are some of my favorite leveling zones. And, you know, I think Horde has other really good ones like Stone Talon Mountains is fantastic for both Horde and Alliance. So... A lot of the Kata revamp zones are pretty good. I will give you that. Red Ridge is like very whatever. Uh, was never a huge fan of that particular quest line, but yeah. Some of them are good. Lock Modan is another one where Lock Modan has like virtually no story. It is just kind of a bunch of quests strung together, which it's efficient, but you know, it's not particularly interesting. You like the Rambo quest? I mean, they were fun, but I do understand the complaint of from a storytelling perspective, it wasn't necessarily the most interesting thing in the world. But I will give you that. They were fun. Uh, okay. Hopefully this actually pops this time. The queue doesn't get declined. Uh, that actually means, though, I'm going to wait here because I need to abandon... Uh, where is it? Steel Thunder. I need to abandon this quest, and then the moment the dungeon is out, I need to pick it up again, because when I exit the dungeon, the Orc Peon will despawn. Uh, can you imagine if they told Raiders that the next tier is only six bosses because of a leveling revamp? Yeah. Kata Endgame was decent. People's chief complaint was that it was too hard. Yeah. We also, I mean, one of the main reasons why I don't think we should get a world revamp is we don't need a world revamp. Like, World of Warcraft already has so much content as is. And as people pointed out, one of the main reasons why they had to redo it is because by the time you get to, like, Wrath, vanilla quest design feels very antiquated. And it just wasn't what they wanted to do going forward. But, I mean, maybe some people disagree with me. I personally think Kata quests are perfectly fine. They have aged really well, like I said before. I am more than happy with them. I don't think they need a revamp. I think they fit just in line with, like, still the modern MMO design philosophy. So... A world revamp was necessary in Kata because the quests themselves felt very, like, outdated. But nowadays, we don't need, like, a redesign of all the zones. We just need leveling quality of light changes to make it easier for people to get caught up. That's all we really need, right? Chromie time is definitely, it has been a step in the right direction, but there are still a lot of very nice changes that they could and should make and haven't, so. Um... But yeah, personally, I don't understand the, you know, the people wanting a world revamp. Because no matter how you slice it, that dev time will come out of, you know, other content. And even if, like, I'm not saying I want more endgame content for, like, high-level raiders. Even, like, casual content. Like, at this point, just streamline the leveling process, get people to max level, and then spend the developer resources that could be used on leveling stuff on more casual content. More actually good casual content instead of shit like time rifts or whatever, which, like, I mean, I, I don't know, kind of a flop, right? Um, you know, stuff like the Mage Tower, honestly, is something that I know a lot of casual players really like. For them, you know, setting up Mage Tower sets and uh, getting it on all of their different classes and specs is something they really have fun with. So little optional challenges like that that can be done solo is something I think a lot of people would appreciate. Uh, this is... Yeah, this is better than what I have. Perfect. I also forgot to open my bag from earlier. Oh, but I got a belt. Very nice. Uh, okay. Do I need to... I need to refresh my food buff. 
me just do that real quick. There we go. Lots of people want a new version of Vanilla. Well, I, that's a different story because at this point, that's actually a completely different design team. Yeah. Um, when I say world revamp, I'm specifically talking about retail WoW. Like people think they're going to do like another Cataclysm, which I don't think is happening and I don't think should happen. Um, Classic Plus, which I think is what you're referring to, that's a completely different can of worms. Um, I also... I, I, I don't know. I... Uh, I, I understand why people want Classic Plus, but I think Classic Plus is one of those things where people think they want this thing and they have it like imagined in their head of like what it could be. And I think like the vision that some people have of Classic Plus, if it were to ever happen, would be very cool. But I think it's a little bit unrealistic to think that Blizzard could ever design, like, a, a lot of people seem to think Blizzard would just be able to completely recreate the classic style of content design and just make brand new, really fun, classic-esque content in the modern day. And no matter how you slice it, that, that's just not going to happen, right? Because, I don't know, there's always going to be, like, a clash between, you know, if they were to design stuff, like, what, what, is, what is classic design? Right? So when people say Classic Plus, some people want the game to be like, you know, like it was back in original vanilla, where I want more content to be designed that, you know, requires really grindy stuff and has those same, like, 2005 design principles. That is what, like, some people want from Classic Plus, which personally, I think that's terrible, right? It's interesting to play vanilla again and see what it was like back in the day. But the only thing that I think could be fun with Classic Plus is new content in that era. With, like, you know, maybe the same old graphical style, right? Um, and I think it would almost be, like, my idea of what would be cool for Classic Plus is kind of like an alternate history, right? Where the Cataclysm doesn't happen, and, you know, we deal with, like, other figures in Warcraft lore that maybe we've seen in, like, future retail expansions, but it is still kept more simple and stuff like that. But even then, it, it, it's so murky in terms of, like, when you try to figure out what actually defines what a classic plus you know authentic experience would be it's kind of a difficult question to answer and i don't think any one per or any two people have the same definition of what would make classic plus really classic plus and um and yeah i don't really think there is any way that blizzard modern blizzard could ever design an you know a classic plus that would actually satisfy everyone uh it would either just honestly be dog shit <laughs> because they just wouldn't really know what to do with it. Or they would design something maybe a bit more retail-esque uh, with just new content set in the classic era. And then you would have a bunch of people complaining, this isn't real classic, this isn't what I wanted. And then it would just be the same thing all over again. People asking for something that is quite honestly never going to happen. So, I don't know. I think Classic Plus is honestly a pipe dream that I just don't really ever see being a thing, right? Right. It's like the entire point of Classic is to kind of revisit the game um, at that time. And I think what you could maybe do is things like Season of Mastery. I think Season of Mastery is maybe like stuff like that is the closest that we will ever realistically get to a Classic Plus. Or you have changes like that to maybe spice things up. But one of the, the other things about like what they've been doing with Season of Mastery, which I like, but a lot of other people didn't, is they make it a little bit more retail quality of life stuff. They add actual mechanics to like a lot of the older raid bosses that didn't have any, and they try to make the fights harder and stuff like that. Um, they try to like remove some of the grinds and make it a bit more streamlined, right? And it's like, I mean, that that's kind of Classic Plus, but it's not what a lot of other people would define as Classic Plus. Um, so I, I don't know. It, it's an interesting topic. Um, I think... I would imagine Blizzard will at least attempt to brand something Classic Plus at some point. Because at this point, the term gets thrown around a lot. A lot of people want Classic Plus. So I am sure Blizzard will try it. The thing is, I think whatever Blizzard ends up branding as Classic Plus, to a lot of people, won't be what they wanted and or expected. Um, and then you're just going to have a lot of angry Classic fans who just go back to playing Era, Which, like, it's fine. That's, that's why it exists. Right? So, yeah, I don't know. Um, missed a lot of messages during that. A lot of people... Ooh, Sethek Halls. I actually haven't gotten Sethek Halls in a lot of my runs recently. Um, 
But, uh... Actually, this is kind of interesting, because... I just realized I didn't turn in the Orc Sea uh, Dog quest, because this queue popped so fast. I hope I don't need to redo it from scratch, because that would be a little bit frustrating. Um, we'll see, I guess. I also need more wildfire bomb charges so I can actually do damage. Um, you can't forgive Kata for removing so many quests and world drops. Yeah, no, that, that's understandable for sure. Um, yeah, I have one talent to spend here. I guess flanker's advantage. Yeah, probably take that. I know, generally speaking, the build that I'm going to be running for survival. I just... One thing I haven't really figured out is exactly um, what order I'm going to be doing everything in. So, we'll see. In terms of, like, when I pick different talent points. You know, uh, looks like this Blood DK actually knows what he's doing. It's not even a twink, it looks like. Just some dude actually doing good pulls. And, you know, obviously it's a death knight, so they can survive basically anything. Which is always good to see. Ooh, lots of kill command resets there. And about to get wildfire bombs, so that'll be nice. And... There you go. Yeah, survival does, like, decent damage at low levels. Obviously, I wasn't able to do as much AoE because I don't have, like, a lot of my Wildfire Bomb Synergy stuff, but we'll get there. Um, You would personally love not so much a world revamp, but having stories in other zones. Quest hubs are awesome, but storylines that span across several zones. Yeah, that could be cool. I agree with that. Um... Yes, the pulls like this, unfortunately, before I really have great AoE, are tough for me to really contribute on. Lots of people... Oh yeah, I read that. Right. Um, I don't think the encounter design team is the same people who would do a revamp. I think the new assets are in the code, and it's likely they update things, but maybe that's... I mean, it. it that's why I said, right? Obviously, I'm not saying... I'm not directly saying that, like, leveling content would come at the cost of a raid tier, per se. But leveling content, like, the people who maybe would do leveling content are the people who would do, like, casual open world content. That is absolutely fair to say. And I would rather have, like, more casual content at max level than, like, more generic leveling content when, like I said, we already have enough. We just need, you know, the process to be streamlined. Uh, the only thing you would do to a leveling zone is put an NPC or option to the original classic questing zones. Yeah. I mean, if that was technically possible, I think they would do that. I just don't think it is. Um, I remember some. I had a discussion with somebody on my Discord about that, where they were basically arguing that Blizzard is just intentionally not re-implementing the classic zones. And I tried to explain to them why it's not as simple as... Um, it's not as simple as, like, Blizzard just isn't doing it because they, you know, hate people, right? There are actual technical reasons that, you know, aren't bullshit, which is why they can't do it now. And, like, the only thing that you could maybe say is that it was, like, you know, not good of original Blizzard back in, like, Wrath to not consider that and make it, like, future-proof. But uh, modern-day Blizzard has to work with what they've got, and for all my complaints with them... It is not easy for them to just go back and magically re-implement all of the old original zones. That isn't something they could very easily do. So, A lot of people seem to think it's just you flip a switch, you add an NPC like Zidormi to reach the uh, original versions of the zone. It is nowhere near that simple. Um, Speaking of features that don't work, it's annoying that the Siege of Orgrimmar skip DCs you every time. Oh, I haven't, I haven't done Siege of Orgrimmar since they've done the skip, so I didn't know that. But that is definitely seems like a bit of an oversight if it's a brand new feature they just added. Trying to like somewhat pay attention. One of the nice things about DPSing dungeons is I can actually kind of read chat. 
while doing the dungeon because like as a tank i need to be more focused but right now i'm kind of just pressing buttons and like reading chat as i go where the fuck is the healer are they just getting whacked by a ghost is that what was killing them i was so confused as to how they were dying yeah that seems to be what it was um Am I saying you think you do, but you don't to Classic Plus? I did actually realize what I was saying sounded kind of like you think you do, but you don't. And it, I, that's like definitely not the right way to put it. Because I'm not saying that Classic players wouldn't actually want Classic Plus. That's why I think the better way to word it is like what I said, where what they want would be really cool. Unfortunately, I think they are a bit unrealistic with thinking Blizzard actually stands any real chance at making that happen. Uh, there is no chance. Um, Blizzard is not going to be able to pull off a classic plus that would satisfy everyone. Now we can go back to, uh, now teleport out, and then hopefully I'm not in combat. Um, teleport to dungeon. Go. Uh, I can get the bag... Nice, got a belt. Racers, too. Okay, I'm actually getting decently good uh, dungeon rewards early on. Oh, that's a transmog appearance. Very nice. Just want to make sure I remember to re-equip my heirlooms. Uh, is this better than what I have? Four Agi? I guess, probably. Just because, you know, at this point. Alright, now I can leave. Um, let's see. Owner said, damn, 30 minutes late. Good to see you, owner. Uh, you're not super late. Uh, and technically, you're actually like an hour, 30 minutes late, because I did spend a little bit of time before setting up, but, you know, that's what the recording is for after the fact, right? Um, speaking of oh I, I just read that uh, also people don't want classic plus as much as they want a time machine yeah I mean obviously I think a lot of people just wish that retail went in a different direction so you know there's that uh, but yeah it is what it is uh, many people have too high expectations of classic plus yeah pretty much a lot of people think it could actually be reasonably pulled off, and I just can't. And also, like, a lot of people don't seem to understand that, like, you know, they'll be like, I see this, the, the dumbest thing that I've ever seen is the comparison to Cataclysm Classic and Classic Plus. Like, so many people will say, I wish that they would just scrap Cataclysm Classic and just work on Classic Plus instead. And, like, there are actual people who are stupid enough to think that that is a genuine comparison that you can make. When it's like, no, that, that's not how that works, right? It is not a, you either get one or the other, you either get Cataclysm Classic or Classic Plus, right? Cataclysm Classic is re-releasing an old expansion that they already have all of the code for, and they would probably only need to do, like, minimal changes just to, like, I don't know what they'll probably do. They're probably going to remove LFR, because I know if they say, oh, we're removing LFR from C, or what is it, Dragon Soul or whatever, when it first got introduced, there will be no LFR. Minimal change doesn't really matter, and like, you know, it gets them good PR or whatever, because then they get those articles saying, like they did with LFG, even though removing LFG from uh, Wrath Classic was actually a terrible decision, they 100% did it just so that they could get good PR from people saying, wow, they actually listened to the community, when like, no, it was just a really fucking stupid thing to do. Um, so they'll probably remove LFR, do like a few other very minor changes, and that's what we'll see or Cataclysm Classic, and, like, that's all they need to do. They literally just re-release a new expansion, and as much as some people think that Cataclysm Classic is going to do terribly, I'm actually really excited for it. I think it's going to be fun. And I know there's going to be a lot of other people who will at least just check it out just because. Uh, Akanai Crypts? All right, Akanai Crypts is actually solid. Um, So it's, like, literally, Cataclysm Classic is just free money. It, that's it. Um, so they're obviously gonna do it. Oh, uh, is that you, Analana? I'm guessing, because you waved at me. Um, 
And at least it's somebody, but I saw in chat you said, might have got you. Uh, yeah, that was definitely a fast queue, too. Uh, but yeah, so Cataclysm Classic is literally completely free for Blizzard to make. The only reason why they would not make Cataclysm Classic is if they somehow think it wouldn't pay off the money that it would take them to, like, host the servers and do the bare minimum of, like, work to get it ready, which, like, it, it absolutely will. That is a very safe bet. I would say, especially if they sell another, like, Dark Portal Pass type thing, which they almost certainly will, and there will be people who will buy it. Uh, hell, I will probably buy it if it's, like, you know, at least somewhat convenient, just because, but I th even regular players will probably buy it, right? Um, so, they're obviously going to turn a profit on Cataclysm Classic. Uh, the only other reason why they may not do it is if it would give them bad PR, and, like, I really don't think that it would. The only thing that they need to do to not get any bad PR from Cataclysm Classic is remove LFR so that all the classic Andes go, wow, they're listening to us, shit like that. And then they just need to keep Wrath Era servers. They do that, that's all that matters. So it's a sure thing, I would say. It's probably going to get announced at BlizzCon, you know, in a few months. Um, but Classic Plus requires actual developer time. You need to make new content. That's the entire idea. So when a lot of people lump it in with the same thing, you know, it's either new, uh, like revamping new expansions like Cataclysm or making brand new content that would actually require developers. Yeah, it's not the same thing. Uh, it comes from two different resource pools, right? Pray for no escape from Durnhold. Well, so far I've been lucky. So uh, hopefully this keeps up. I've actually gotten decent RNG so far in this Hunter, right? Because it's, uh, I haven't gotten Escape from Durnhold or any of the other shitty dungeons. I haven't gotten, like, the really good dungeons outside of Blood Furnace, but uh, relatively short queue times overall, not too bad. Um, yeah. Uh, there's also a quest over here that I can pick up. This one. Uh... Doesn't seem like they'd be able to make everyone happy, but it does have a lot of potential. I guess, yeah. Like I said, I'm sure they're going to attempt it, but they're probably just going to do, like, some sort of new Season of Mastery, brand it as Classic Plus to get, like, marketing interest in it, and then, you know, it's it's just going to be another Season of Classic. They'll maybe add, like, you know, I don't know, like, one new dungeon or something like that, and, yeah, who knows? We'll see. Uh, I don't think it's going to meet expectations at all. I'm not saying they shouldn't try, for the record. I think, you know, I'm all for Blizzard at least giving it a shot, and maybe it turns out to be really good and everybody's happy with it. Um, I'm sure I would play it and probably have fun with it, uh, but I think a lot of people set these, like, wild expectations for what Blizzard could theoretically do, and, uh, yeah, I don't think that's realistic at all. Uh, Classic should have harder raid bosses, no sub-40 groups, uh, with people under max level, uh, clearing rag day one, you miss the original grindy AV with all the mobs. Um, I mean, honestly, if they make any change to Classic, I would actually kind of argue it should be lower the raid size. I know your point was more so it should require you to have, like, the maximum amount of players, like, at max level. But I think if they were to make, like, a good Classic change, something that could make it more accessible would be making it 25-man. Right? Making 25-man raids kind of like TBC. And, um... That way it's like easier to get into, rebalance it, make the bosses harder, stuff like that, I think could be pretty cool. Uh, how do I figure out talents? Do I plan beforehand? Yes. Yeah, generally speaking, before I start, I do a bit of research into what the optimal talents are for, you know, the spec I'm playing. Sometimes I already happen to know it. Like Survival Hunter, I've played a decent amount in the past, so I kind of already knew, generally speaking, which talents I was picking. I just, there were a few points where I'm like, yeah, what should I do for like this leftover point? Um, things of that nature, I'll do a little bit of research into it. Uh, it's a little bit harder for specs that I don't play at all. Like, when I was playing Shadow Priest, I had to effectively learn entirely how the spec worked from scratch, and then figure out, you know, what the talents you pick are, and how you use every single talent. Um, but something like this I'm already fairly comfortable with. Speaking of which, uh, we'll go with Ferocity, Bloodseeker, Muzzle, here we go. But yeah, like, for me, playing survival, it's easy. I just, I automatically look at the talents. I'm like, yep, yep, that's kind of what I want. It'll just take me a moment to remember the order that I want to take them in. Uh, Rexel said, nice to catch things live for a change. Yeah, good to have you here. 
Uh, hello, Naomi. The run's going pretty well so far. Uh, only... Only at 19, so, you know, there's still plenty of time for me to, like, not find a single rare at, like, the end of Silver Pine or something like that. It could happen. I could get, like, dog shit rare mob RNG. I could, after this dungeon, get escape from Durnhold three times in a row, but so far it's going well. Proto Spitefuls? Yeah. True, that kind of is the original Spiteful fix in, um, Sethek Halls from before. You like the finding quest leveling style rather than the streamline style? Yeah. Like, to me, I kind of don't mind either one. I will say, I like the streamlined leveling style when it's short. You know, when a game is very, like, streamlined and has a story to tell, right? And that's, you know, how you're leveling through it. I think that's more interesting. Like, Final Fantasy is obviously the example that I'm going to use. It's the classic example of it is... You know, it's a very streamlined story experience, but obviously Final Fantasy XIV has a story to tell. Some people may argue it's a bit long-winded. I definitely think they could improve A Realm Reborn a little bit more still to make it a little bit shorter. Uh, but I don't think it's, you know, terrible. Um, but yeah, if it's just like a generic, like, you know, streamlined... Like, I remember what was one game. Like, I played through Star Wars The Old Republic a while ago, and I... I just wasn't interested in the story at all. And I guess maybe if somebody's playing through Final Fantasy and they're not interested in the story, uh, then they would probably have a similar experience. But I found it just, like, mind-numbingly boring because I just wasn't enjoying the story put in front of me. And it was a very streamlined experience where you just go from point A to point B and stuff like that. So I, I think that both of them can be done well. Right? Uh, but I agree that, you know, the open world kind of exploring around, obviously the classic style, right, can be very fun. There's a reason that I also enjoy playing classic, and I've been having a lot of fun playing classic hardcore because of that. It, it's fun. You know, there there's a good way to do both sets of quests. Link of here. Am I missing the 50% XP buff? Eh, I mean... The only downside to the 50% XP buff is it takes me two additional hours to get my testing runs done, which to me, I don't really care about, right? Because, um, like, I gotta do this anyway, right? Obviously, everyone else doesn't have the 50% XP buff, so for the purposes of my guides, obviously, I'm gonna have to test it without the buff because of, you know, authenticity reasons to make sure, like, the guide is accurate. So it doesn't really affect me, uh, and I already have, like, more than enough characters to, you know really care about not being able to level additional ones but i will say it was nice when i could get my testing runs over in like two to three hours and then move on to like something else later in the stream now it takes like you know four or five hours to get this stuff done which is like you know a little bit more time consuming but that's eh, not too bad but i definitely would imagine for people who are like trying to level up all their alts they probably wish that they had the um the other stuff back and also, can I, you can only do make camp outdoors, right? Uh, I can also open up all these webbed victims, probably a good source of orc sea dogs. I've gotten like pretty shit RNG so far in orc sea dogs though. Hmm. Uh, was that one empty? I didn't even see anything in that cocoon. Yeah, another worgen, man. Another organ. Okay. I... Is this the worst RNG I've ever had on the webbed victims? Uh, I hope, the very least, this is fine as long as by the time that I exit this little subzone, I find enough. That one was completely empty. Uh, okay, this is like kind of crazy bad. Uh, I should also... I'm going to re queue for a dungeon. Another webbed victim. Okay, there we go. Orc Sea Dogs. Took a little bit there. Uh, is it a little bit more time consuming or is it more time to spend with viewers? I mean, to be fair though, right? Like, it's not a real comparison because I will end up streaming long regardless. Even if the run is fast. Obviously, I don't end my stream the moment the run is complete. In that case, I just switch over to WoW Classic and then... You know, I can still interact with viewers while I'm doing WoW Classic stuff. But, I mean, I'll be completely honest. Uh, I enjoy um, 
take Hunting Pack, and while I'm on this, uh, I guess I'd probably take Survival of the Fittest. Uh, yeah. Like, I'll take Survival of the Fittest, and then I'll probably put one, or yeah, two points into Trailblazer, I think, is going to be the best option. I'll put this on Shift R, and then I set War Mode. That's all I need to do here, because I don't need to learn writing, and then we can just head back. Cool. Um, but yeah, I'll, I'll be completely honest. I would rather be playing like classic hardcore right now if I had to pick. Um, because that stuff, you know, I'm just doing for fun. Whereas this stuff, you know, I don't hate it. Obviously, if I was like in absolute suffering, like misery, like, oh my god, I can't stand leveling another character, I wouldn't be doing this. But a lot of the reason why I'm doing these runs is for testing purposes. I've leveled a million hunters before. Uh, I've especially played survival a million times before. But I haven't done a survival hunter run in Dragonflight, and it won the pull, right? So the entire point to do all of this stuff is for testing purposes. Um, but there are a lot of other things I could stream that I think I would personally have more fun with, right? Uh, I can also switch to Elixir of the Mongoose now. And cancel this. Also, refresh my food buff, and I'm going to go ahead and refresh Draft of Ten Lands before I forget. And then this is the quest to return to Sylvanas, right? Among Us, yeah. Uh, uh, actually, instead of taking the flight path, because I just swapped to War Mode, what I can do is probably going to be, yeah, Bullgaff's up. Because most people will already be um, past this point by the time they turn on war mode, but because of dungeons, you know, I am still in this area. So I can actually get a decent amount of XP by going ahead and doing this. I'm going to take, uh, one more point into tip of the spear after that, and then I'm going to take harpoon, and then we'll go into the midsection of the tree. And jump over here. Will there be a Pandaria classic? I sure hope so. I, I really hope there's a Pandaria Classic. Look, I am, I'm like excited for Cataclassic, but honestly, I don't see Cataclassic being something that I will like actually play a shit, or like a shit ton of after the fact. I will play it when it is active. I, I am actually really happy that, or I, I'm really hopeful for it, and I will be very happy if it does get announced. Um, but it is not like the end all be all for me. I'll enjoy it, I'll play through all the raids that I missed, because that's something I'm really excited to do. But an actual expansion that I would maybe just play a shit ton just for fun, like even outside of just re-experiencing the raids, is Mop. Mop Classic, I think, that is almost guaranteed. Like, we're almost certainly going to get Kata, right? And if we get Kata, Mop Classic is effectively guaranteed. And then the interesting thing will be to see what they do with Legion. Because obviously Legion Classic is another one that a lot of people have said they would be interested in playing. But obviously there's a little problem with that because there's this uh, tiny little thing called Warlords of Draenor in between uh, Missa Pandaria and Legion. So the main question that you need to answer if you're going to do Legion Classic is what do you do about WAD? How do you solve that problem? And I'd be curious to see what Blizzard does. At that point. That one, I, I have no idea what they'll do. Uh, we got Slave Pens. All right. You know what? I'm actually getting, I'm getting fairly lucky right now. Um, let me scroll up. Uh, LFG didn't hit Wrath until 3.2. Yeah, but like, I, I get that technically speaking, LFG wasn't in there at the start. But at this point, it definitely should be in Wrath Classic, and let's be completely honest, they obviously didn't do that because they, they were like, oh, well, technically speaking, it wasn't in until later. They literally said that they don't think LFG is in the spirit of Classic, which is just stupid. Um, uh, what spec do I recommend for leveling rogues? Um, I don't know. Uh, rogue leveling is painful. Not assassination, is all I'll say. Uh, honestly, there's no good option. <laughs> uh, Rogue is definitely the weakest leveling class, by a large margin. Try Sub or Outlaw. 
They are better than assassination for leveling. That's about all I can say. Uh, they'll definitely do Cataclassic. A lot of players stayed it or started then, so they're gonna farm that for more nostalgia. Yeah, I mean, I have a lot of nostalgia for Cataclysm for sure, uh, and I will definitely play it. But I also think that there's a lot to like about Cataclysm. You know, it gets a lot of flack, and I think a lot of it is undeserved. Obviously. Cataclysm wasn't a perfect expansion. It did a lot of things wrong, but I think it had a lot of fun stuff to it that, you know, people often overlook. So, yeah, I think it will actually be quite fun. Uh, as someone who mainly plays retail, I can assure you you would buy the Cataclysm package just for the mount. Oh, true, yeah, just retail mount collectors. That's another thing. Uh, so they get free money for that. Um, honestly, though, I feel like even on the topic of, like, retail players, I think Cataclysm will be a bigger draw to retail players than, you know, previous classic eras. Because Cataclysm is when, you know, leveling was first really streamlined, obviously. And there's a lot of people who are kind of put off by classic just because of the time commitment. So I have a lot of friends who will tell me that they're, like, mildly interested in classic and they would try it if they didn't need to spend so much time leveling up to max. It's just too much. They don't have time for, like, work or whatever reason. But Cataclysm is much, much easier to get leveled up in. So it's much more approachable for um, new players. And also for retail players who like harder dungeons, harder raids, stuff like that. I mean, Cataclysm will definitely scratch that itch because it's generally considered to be the first expansion when raiding was actually really difficult. Which... I mean, obviously, people have been saying since Sunwell, like, no, this is the patch when raiding's really going to be hard. And, I mean, as somebody who has done, you know, 50 chess TOGC, 25-man heroic for, like, multiple weeks in a row, it's not that hard. It's still fun. Like, I enjoy raiding in Wrath Classic. I've been having fun with it. Like, Old War is fun. Um, it's, it's like, I wouldn't call it hard. I would say it is like a, a mild challenge, which I know is kind of obviously like, you know, oh, technicality, right? Like Yog saron there are some elements of Yog saron like Zero Light, that is kind of hard. Some stuff in, like, Algalon is obviously kind of hard. Um, and, like, M Mimiron Hard Mode, kind of difficult. You know, managing the fires and stuff, it's not, like, the easiest thing in the world. But... Are they really even remotely on the level of, like, retail difficulty? It's not even close. Like, you could argue that it is hard for the time. Like, so a lot of people say, oh, back in the day, it was really hard. And, like, yeah, no, I, that absolutely I can agree with. Um, I'm sure, like, you know, TOGC 50 chest wasn't easy back in the day, right? When people didn't know all the best strategies and stuff like that. And, you know, people didn't really know how to handle Anubarak. Anubarak is also kind of hard, but there are ways to deal with all of his stuff. Like, you know, if your raid actually knows what they're doing. So there's a lot of bosses that are kind of hard, but once you figure them out, like, none of it is, like, really that difficult. Like, I would say a lot of, like, the challenge in Classic, even to this day, still comes from, like, the preparation, the strategy, making sure everyone knows what they're supposed to do. And then, you know, the getting gear and getting consumables and whatnot, you know, having, like, frost resist potions for Anubarak and, like, the um, greater flask of resistance, you know, I use that whenever we enter the final phase, things of that nature. But, you know, is my job on Anubarak actually that hard? Not really. It's like, on pull, I do damage, then the Nerubian adds spawn, I exorcism one of them, I taunt judgment the other. I drag it over the frost patch with a uh, blessing of freedom to make sure that, you know, I don't get slowed. And then I keep them in position. Then when the uh, cast is going off, I use Holy Wrath to interrupt it. And then the adds die. I repeat that process three more times throughout the fight. And then like during the intermission, I maybe need to bop somebody if they're getting chased by a new Barak. And like, that's the entire fight. Sometimes if we're short, like a rep paladin, I get an additional job, which is to keep Judgment of Light up on a new Brock so that people get, like, healing from that. That's it. That is all I really need to do. And it's like, you know, figuring all of that stuff out, I can understand, you know, it's a little bit tricky. But the actual process, the gameplay of it, not really that hard. Whereas, like, obviously, modern raiding, you know, I have killed Echo of Neltharion and Sarkareth, but they are still moderately challenging 
even on rekills because even though I know what to do, there's some of the positioning and, you know, some of it, like he, they both hit really hard. I need to manage my defensives properly. If something doesn't go, you know, exactly to plan, I may need to adjust and stuff like that. And th that can be a little bit hard to manage on the fly. Um, so it's definitely still not easy, even though I already know what to do. And I'm technically at this point over geared for it. Uh, and I think that's like, you know, retail rating is definitely much, 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 much harder. And I think from everything that I've seen, until you get to Blackwing Descent, Bastion of Twilight, stuff like that, that is the only time when like the execution itself of the strategies actually starts to become difficult and more retail-esque. Same with the dungeons. Like there's actual mechanics in a lot of the endgame Cataclysm dungeons that still white people on like time walking and stuff to this day because you actually need to handle it properly and it's not the easiest thing in the world. So I am actually really excited for that, you know, as somebody who enjoys mythic rating and retail, because the fights actually look kind of hard in Bastion of Twilight and uh, Blackwing Descent, and I really want to try them out. Uh, but Cataclysm or a, a Wrath Classic, so far I've enjoyed it, but it has not really ever been challenging to me. There's been a few times where I'm just like, oh, wow, you know, that I actually had to work for that a little bit. And you know, that's the most I've ever felt from it. And then teleport to dungeon. And we'll uh, turn in all these quests. So, so far, solid dungeon RNG. I'm hoping this keeps up. We'll see. Uh... You're more excited for Mop Classic than Kata. Raiding as a Pandaren monk would be lit and would make you actually want to raid? Yeah, for sure. Um, I mean, I know a lot of people, honestly, like I said, myself included, who are very, 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 like, looking forward to Mop Classic and would absolutely play that. Like, I've heard mixed opinions on Kata Classic where, like, I, I've been trying to get my friends excited for it. I'm like, are you going to play with me when it comes out? Um, and most of them are like... Eh. Have, maybe I'll try it. But I know uh, a bunch of other people who genuinely are excited for the possibility of Mop Classic and have said if it comes out, they will absolutely play it. So there's definitely a lot of excitement for that, which is why, like I said, if we get Kata Classic, we are absolutely getting Mop Classic because there is way, way more interest in that than Kata. And at that point, you know, if we do Kata, then obviously it's easy as a next step for them. Uh need to make sure I open my leveling bags. Ah, shoulders. And then I have one more ring. Nah. I think that's all I have at the moment for leveling stuff. I should also clear out the gray items and stuff in my inventory real quick. So it doesn't get as cluttered. So 25 man would be better? Yeah, for sure. Uh, you really enjoyed Star Wars The Old Republic Sith story? Yeah, so whenever I bring up Star Wars The Old Republic, a bunch of people have told me that I played, like, the wrong class. Like, for reference, I played Jedi Consular, and every single time I've mentioned that, a lot of people have said, oh my god, Jedi Consular had, like, the worst story, and that's why you hated it. And, like, I believe you. It's just one of those things where I don't know if I'll ever go back and play it again. Like, I, I do have Star Wars The Old Republic is, like, it's low on my bucket list. I need to um, disable Cinematic Canceller. Uh, I One of these days, if I have a lot of free time, I may go back and play it again and try some of the stuff that, you know, people have told me to try. Um, but... I, I mean, obviously, I played Jedi Consular because they... What was the spec that they had? Jedi Shadow? Um, I played a tank, right? So, obviously, I looked into, like, the different tanks. Jedi Shadow looked pretty cool. And I actually, I enjoyed playing it. I did a little bit of endgame raiding in Star Wars The Old Republic. I don't remember the names of the raids that I did. Uh, but I actually had fun doing that. I thought it was cool. And I liked the playstyle of Jedi Shadow. It kind of reminded me a little bit of, like, Brewmaster Monk minus, like... It obviously didn't have stagger, but like it had some dodge stuff and whatnot. And I remember enjoying that play style. Um, but that's why I played it. So I know somebody mentioned like the Imperial Agent story is apparently really good, but Imperial Agent doesn't have a tank spec. So, you know, I never would have tried it. Um, we'll see one of these days, maybe though. Um, <laughs> there's a tiny little thing called artifact power. Yeah. Uh, true. There's definitely a few things that they could solve in Legion to make it a lot better. Also, one of the unfortunate things here is I'm probably going to miss out on this dungeon queue, but 
at the same time, yeah, I missed out. Fuck. Um, unfortunate, but you know, I I would have had to rewatch that entire cutscene. That would have been weird. So that was a fast queue, anyway. Apologies if one of you had to sit in that queue and you were waiting to snipe me, and then in the end, I didn't even get to take it. So apologies if that happens. Um. You fucking improve WAD, that's what you do. Can't wait for WAD and getting stuck in your garrison again on launch. Maybe WAD becomes the Legion pre-launch event. I mean, yeah, so I think, Chori, you've obviously been here a while, so you've probably heard my take on that. But I actually do think they should not necessarily skip WAD, but make WAD kind of like an event thing. Where you blitz through WAD over the course of like two months, and then you get to Legion. I think that would maybe be the best way to do it. Obviously, the best way to do it would be, you know, give WAD more content and actually flesh it out. But at that point, it's like, eh, I don't know. I don't really think at this point it's really worth doing that. I still don't think enough people would play it to justify the amount of time they'd have to spend, like, making um, Farallon or whatever. So, yeah. I think he just blitz through WAD and gets a Legion, gets the good stuff. And then we could get back to BFA and start farming Corruptions and Azerite Essences again. Wow, won't that be fun? Um, but yeah, I, I think Legion is... Without a doubt, the end of the line for Classic. Um, even for someone like me, who, you know, I, I've said before I like playing the old expansions to see what they're like. I don't think I would ever be able to stomach BFA Classic. And, and I've said before, like, half-jokingly, I would kind of like to play through Ashara's Eternal Palace again, just because I missed out on Ashara. But I, I, I still... There is so much fucking garbage in BFA. I don't think I could stomach playing through it again just so I could play through like the one or two fights that I missed when it was current. Even though I, I would like to try that again. But, yeah. Legion is the last expansion um, that I think like I genuinely would want to replay. You know, I managed to have some fun in um, Blood Furnace. Okay. Uh, Alright, so this is where we leave instance. Apologies if you managed to just snipe me in that group, but I already did Blood Furnace, so uh, that is where it, you know, stops being efficient, right? And the first boss of Blood Furnace takes like five minutes to get to, so I'm also not going to do... Oh, no. Oh, no. Please, no. No, please. Please tell me the internet isn't out. Okay, thank God. Uh, I think that was on the game's end. I don't think it affected the stream. I hope not. Um, But, yeah, I've had... There, there was a previous stream where, like... It went down for like 30 seconds because the internet like fluctuated or something and that was spooky also where are the forsaken somebody must have just gone through here because like all of the dead forsaken guys that i need to loot are not here maybe they will give wad the sword and silithus treatment yeah i I don't know, it is kind of interesting though, because you can't just like outright ignore WAD and skip past it, because you still need to include WAD content in the Legion leveling experience. Uh, uh YouTube just popped up an error. Um YouTube is not receiving enough video to maintain smooth streaming. I'm guessing that it's maybe a lingering effect of the um like the lag thing, maybe it was on my end. My OBS seems fine, though. Um, yeah, I don't know. Oh, my OBS says there are some dropped frames, but I'm guessing the dropped frames was in reference to when it... Yeah, okay, now the YouTube error went away. I'm guessing it was in reference to when, like, I lagged out for a second. Yeah. Um, let's see... Sub is fairly strong at bursting stuff down, so you don't need to survive stuff. Yeah. Okay, one more Forsaken Insignia. Maybe if I'm lucky, there's a chest in this house. But considering somebody just passed through here, I think it is unlikely that we'll find any rare mobs or chests. Might still find Lost Son of Aragal, because, you know, even if you are leveling at the same time that he's up, you won't necessarily encounter him. We'll see. And I'm gonna gun shoes over here. Let me at least check a little bit into the forest like that. 
And I don't see Lost Son of Aragal anywhere. He's not over there. Alright, while this RP goes on, I can... Just gonna randomly vendor some, some stuff that I don't need. But yeah. oh, it's an appearance I don't have. Now I'll hold on to that. Toss that. Oh wait, no, that's an appearance I still need. Um, I still need that one. Uh, I still need that. That's leather. And. Then, yeah, the only other thing I can do right now is spend talents. Uh, okay, take harpoon. Two points of the trailblazer, and now we're in the midsection of the tree. All right. Um. Ah oh, man, lost skill name and war dog is down. Okay, I'm gonna try to time the disengage here. Yeah, there we go. No fall damage. And I feel like Harpoon's supposed to have a longer range. But where'd my pet go? Uh, maybe there's a talent. Oh yeah. Um. Oh no, that's just killing it. Oh, yeah, probably just misremembering things. Uh. Oh yeah, here it is. Here's the person who's killing all my rares. You know, Dag Namit, stealing all my experience. Ah. Uh. Okay, let me catch up. Uh, Naomi said you'd very happily be in a 1-2... to two... Oh! Holy shit, okay. Lost Son of Aragal. Well, that is... I don't often encounter him right in the middle of this questing hub, but... Very nice. Uh, you'd happily be in a 1-2 to two day raiding guild in Wrath Classic right now. Um, if you didn't have to level gear, do dailies, etc. beforehand, yeah. Like, I've been playing Classic on and off, so the whole catch-up process didn't take me a ton of time, but... Yeah, I, eh, it's, um, I, I will say that the catch-up process at max level isn't too bad. Honestly, the leveling part is kind of the harder thing at the moment, like getting all the way caught up. Once you're there, it's really not too bad, I would say. Uh, kind of required optimization, yeah. Do I think rogue leveling would be interesting if lockboxes gave XP? I think rogue leveling would be extremely toxic if lockboxes gave XP. Because then you would just mail over a bunch of lockboxes and have rogues spam open it. Um, so, yeah. <laughs> Rice said, Riddle time, what time is it when an elephant sits on a fence? I don't fucking know. What time is it when an elephant sits on a fence, Rice? I know I, it took me a while to get around to your message, but, you know, thanks for stopping by. Um... Difficulty back in the day is an interest mechanic or interesting metric. Um, like, how long did it take people to beat MC back in the day, and then they smash it when it comes out? I mean, honestly, it didn't take people that long to beat MC. I think Ragnaros was like the only boss that it took people a while to beat. Most of the time in between, like release and people beating MC, was like people leveling up to max. Um, but the rest of the bosses, even back in the day, like, from a world first kill perspective, were not considered to be that hard, I don't think. Ragnaros, I'm guessing, was a little bit challenging. I haven't looked into it exactly. I know it took them a little while. It was like a month in between the um, Major Domo Executus and Ragnaros kill. And it was, if I had to guess, performance issues and something to do with, like, getting fire resist gear, because I know you needed it for that fight. So, that, I would guess that's what caused the delay, but then also, like, Anixia died around the same time, so, I don't know. I think even back in the day, it wasn't considered to be, like, ridiculously hard. Is dungeon leveling fat? Yeah, dungeon, doing TBC dungeons while questing at low levels is efficient. I mean, if you have any questions about, is XYZ fast for leveling, check out my leveling guide, right? Whenever people ask me questions about the leveling stuff, I have to imagine that they just don't know that I also have a guide with all that information, which is linked in the description below. So, you know, feel free to check that out. Focus for this quest, because this one can be a little bit annoying. 
Oh, I, my missile went right through that guy. Um, do I have somewhere where you can see all the heirlooms you have for each class and what enchants? Kind of. Uh, I haven't put together, like, a full guide yet. The reason that I don't have a full heirloom guide is because a lot of the enchants that I use are currently bugged, and you cannot apply them to new heirlooms. So, I am eventually going to make a full heirloom guide, but I just can't at the moment, because a lot of the stuff I use, you literally cannot use yourself. And I don't want to put out a guide with information where I basically have to be like, hey, until Blizzard fixes their fucking game, you won't actually be able to use the same thing I'm using. That just, you know, it's unfortunate, but it is what it is. Um... But you can see a TLDR in the uh, the leveling prep doc, which, you know, I've linked, like, in a million different places by now. So, you know, check that out. Uh, let me catch up and chat a little bit while I do this flight. Go. Um, let's see. The way to level as a rogue would be to pay X amount of gold. Yeah. Uh... Consular was your least favorite story, but Sith Inquisitor was damn good. I didn't try Sith Inquisitor. Maybe I'd have to try that next time. Because I know they can be tanks, right? Oh, is the dungeon queue sound really loud or something? Forgot that lockboxes can be traded. Oh, I s oh Naomi was making the same point about lockboxes. Ah. I thought Naomi was making a joke about the best way to level a rogue is to pay money to get boosted. Which is, like, technically also true, but... Um, yeah. Agent was the best one for you. Yeah, I've heard a lot of things about that. Uh, Blizz during BFA, you guys didn't like Titan Forging. Let's introduce a worse system. Exactly. Can't wait for Dragonflight Classic. Yeah. Ashara Raid is cool to Mog Farm. Amazing aesthetic. Yeah, for sure. Mock Classic will be interesting. Most of your guildmates quit at that point. You played it but didn't raid properly, though you'd hate to grind cooking and gardening. Uh, I mean, like, Mock Classic, obviously, it's like the same thing with Kata, where, you know, a lot of people who played back in the day, I think, finally started sputtering out then. But I can, as somebody who played Missa Pandaria a lot when it was current, like, I I don't know if I would say I played a ton of Cataclysm. I played Cata a lot, but I was still, like, fairly casual, so I didn't do, like, any of the raids. I didn't do Firelands, um, Bastion of Twilight, any of those, which is why I'd be excited to try it. Uh, but I did at least play, like, the leveling zones, and I played it casually. I did dailies and Cataclysm, so I have, like, good memories of it. But I also didn't really engage with the game in the way that, like, a lot of people typically would. Uh, it was still very casual. But Mists of Pandaria, I actually did play quite a lot at Endgame. It was when I first started getting into raiding, and I can say it was genuinely good. And I had a lot of fun playing in Mop. And, you know, I know you mentioned something to the effect of, um... Uh, you'd hate to grind cooking and gardening. I loved grinding cooking and gardening, man. I was the, the cook person for my guild. And honestly, I used to always be the person who did all the professions for my guild. These days, I try to do it, but like the most I manage to get done is blacksmithing and inscription. Blacksmithing, inscription, engineering, and like a little bit of jewel crafting uh, so far. Oh, shit, 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 shit. No, 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 no. Come on, get the tag. Oh my god. That guy almost killed Korok before I got a chance to tag it. Alright, we're fine though. Um, But yeah, so I tried to like do professions in Dragonflight, and I got some of them set up, but I wasn't able to get all of the ones done that I wanted to. Because like, it takes a lot of time, and I like doing that stuff, but these days, you know, with keeping up with videos and streams and stuff like that, I just, I don't have the time anymore to do that. But back in MOP, I loved doing that. I loved being, like, the person who made feasts for my guild. I had, like, my farm all decked out. I had all, like, the max upgrades and stuff. I loved it. And I, I also did, like, a shit ton of fishing. And there was, like, some cool fishing stuff in Miss of Pandaria as well. Um, professions and mop, I loved. I loved them. Cooking especially. You had all the different, like, way of the, way of the whatever. I remember there were so many different things you could specialize in. I really liked that. So that was actually something in mop that I enjoyed, personally. I would actually want to go back and do all of that again. Skip Kata, release Mop, skip Wad, release Legion. I, I definitely think we should get Kata. A lot of people, a lot of people lump Kata in with the other expansions. Kata is nowhere near as bad as, like, Warlords of Draenor. Wad has serious problems just because, you know, a lot of it is kind of fucking jank and... 
you know, the questing experience is fine, but there's so many problems with WAD and it genuinely lacks content. Kata, some people just disliked, but it was a good expansion. It had good content. It had a lot of shit to do. It's just, you know, obviously at the time, a lot of people were unhappy with it also removed a lot of things, but definitely do not skip Kata. No. Um, I will... I will vehemently oppose anyone who tries to argue in favor of skipping Cataclassic. Because I really want it. It's time to fix the fence. Wow. I just I, I read the, the punchline to Rice's elephant sitting on a fence joke. That that was uh an amazing punchline, Rice. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you for sharing that. Uh goodness. Uh, can you skip ENR and Antorus? Um, I'm not sure. I want to say they added a way to skip it, but I, I don't know for sure. I mean, you can solo ENR, though. It's hard, but you can do it. Um, OG Ragnaros could be attempted only for like an hour. That's why it died so late. Wait, really? Ragnaros had like an Algalon-esque timer for how long you could fight it? the fuck what, what is happening here uh is this like a new xp grinding spot this must be like a new leveling hyper spawn or something um all right interesting now, you won't see me complaining, because if they're farming those mobs, it means they have no chance of colliding with me as I'm crossing the road. So, I guess it technically helps me out, but that is interesting. Uh... I think most people know you as the leveling guide, not as a guide guy. I mean, sure, but I still make guides. I'm not sure what you mean by that, Ichabod. Um, obviously, yes, a lot of people know me as the leveling guide. Uh, I also make a lot of guides, and a lot of my guides have performed well, so, I don't know. If that was meant as a slight against me, then, okay. Uh, either way, yeah, I've still made plenty of guides, and, um, even if that's not what people know me as, I'm still gonna continue making them? I don't know, that, that just, I don't know what the context for that was. I don't think that really had any context whatsoever, so, thank you for that contribution. Um, no fire resist required for rag? Ah, gotcha. Yeah, I wasn't sure. I, like I said, I didn't look into it. Um, Vanilla was November 23rd. Anixia's lair was between January 30th, 2005. Same as Sulfuron Harbinger. Then Major Domo was 10th of February and rag was 25th of April. Interesting. That does seem like a significant time gap, yeah. Uh, let's see. Took 69 days for Anixia to die, 80 for Major Domo, and 154 for Rag. Ah, I see. Are there any alternatives for those uh, enchants, even if they're worse? There are not, no. Which is one of the reasons, once again, why I haven't made the guide. I can't even say that there are temporary replacement enchants, there just aren't. Um, You cannot... Uh, and Alon, I saw what you said about you think you can enchant them. You cannot. No. The enchants I'm talking about are the shoulder and leg enchants, and they do not work on any characters right now. It is impossible to apply them to anything. You liked Kata and Mop? Yep. Same. Uh, yeah, trust me, we've tried for sure. Um, mop cooking was amazing. Glad somebody else agrees. I can hop in the water here and do... XA 1000s. Uh, your only question about Kata is that doesn't changing the zones defeat the point of it being the classic world? No. Because you still have classic era and wrath classic. I That was never the point of classic to me. I mean, to some people, that's why like everybody has their own reasons for uh, playing classic, right? I've said this many times before. Some people think that that era of the game was genuinely better and that they're, they're like, ah, retail sucks, I want to play when the game was really good, and they think that the old world was better, and that was the entire point of playing Classic. And it, I'm not saying that isn't the case for some people, I'm sure it is. The reason I play Classic is because I just want to experience, like, the older versions of the game for, like, fun and nostalgia purposes, not because, like, 
oh, I really want to play in the old world because I think it was a better experience. Like, no. I would say if they were to delete Wrath Classic, which they won't, they're absolutely going to make Wrath Era servers. If they did that, then yeah, that would defeat the point of Classic. But we already have Classic Era servers, and they're almost certainly going to do Wrath Era servers. So yeah, there absolutely is no downside to their being Cataclassic. Um... Let me see. <laughs> Valkyr duking it out of that pile? Yeah. I guess they just got to this particular quest and then kept these mobs for, like, you know, an XP farm or something? Interesting. What's my favorite battle pet? Um, uh, It's a good question. Um... I don't know. There's a lot of good contenders. I like my bronze whelpling. Um, else, uh, this is one of my favorites. I would say maybe Emerald Pro Proto Whelp is one of my favorite battle pets. I like this one. Uh, what else? I can check while I'm on the uh, flight path for this quest. Yep. Um. I like this one, Fell Flame. That one's cool. Uh. This is one of my favorites. Ephrasiabi, the Horny Toad. Uh, I like Iron Starlet. That one's fun. Jade Oozling, I use a lot. Yeah. I would say yeah, that, that's a good run through some of my favorites. Um, What you didn't like about cattle leveling was the jumping between distant zones with portals. Yeah, that's fair. I personally liked it. I felt like every zone was kind of different, but I can understand why somebody wouldn't like that. You can AFK level in quests where you have strong NPCs that fight for you. Yeah, but I, I mean, that wasn't AFK leveling. That was somebody getting boosted. There was a level 60 there. It wasn't meant as a slight, just that you found my channel while looking at my leveling guides. Uh, you think mine is the top when looking on YouTube? Yeah, I mean, obviously, my like I, I have the leveling guide niche on lockdown, right? Like, you're not wrong there. Obviously, my leveling guides are the most popular thing that I do. It was the first thing I ever do, right? So keep in mind that, like, for the first, like, year or so of my channel, which started in, um... I started making videos in late 2020, and... I start my very first ever video was a world record speedrun. My second video was my original leveling guide. And then for like a year after that, the only thing I really did was leveling stuff. I didn't really get into making guides until like very late 2021, but more realistically, like early 2022. So I've only been making like guides for like about a year and a half now, but they have been doing better and better at this point. They perform about as well as like any of my leveling stuff. But obviously I've been doing the leveling stuff for longer and I definitely have that more secured as, like, a niche. Whereas, obviously, there's a lot more people out there making, like, general World of Warcraft guides. I'd like to think mine are also really good. Um, but, obviously, the leveling stuff, I think it is pretty fair to say that any of the guides and speedruns I've done are head and shoulders in terms of quality above anyone else out there. Whereas, there are still a lot of other good WoW YouTubers who make, like, endgame content guides. Uh... But yeah, I mean, if that was your point, then that's fair. I guess just interesting wording. That I just wasn't really sure what you meant because there was like no context for it. Um, best you could find is like one shoulder enchant, which is spell power, and it gives like plus one spell power. It's like really bad. Yeah. Um, your leveling guide did help you tremendously and got you a ghoul, good amount of cool alts. It was awesome doing it that fast for a change. Uh, yeah, no problem. I mean, don't get me wrong. I'm glad people like the leveling stuff. I'm not s complaining that people know me as the leveling guide. I will say, I hate when my friends refer to me as the speedrunner guy. Like, one of my friends the other day was... Uh, basically, he he asked one of his friends uh, that it's part of a longer story that I'll probably tell at some point. But he like I asked him a question 
of like, you know, can you ask so-and-so something? And then he basically asked his friend, oh, like, uh, can you like give me more information on this topic? The the speedrunner guy is asking. And I'm like, can you not fucking call me the speedrunner guy? Like, you know, I, I have a name, right? So I, it only really irks me when people will literally refer to me as the speedrunner guy. And it's like, it's fucking hell. Um, but like, I, I'm not upset that people know me for my, um, my leveling stuff, right? Uh, but like a lot of people, I will say a lot of people think that is only what I do. And one thing is I have received comments right before, which to be clear, it's not the norm, right? You know, most people aren't like this, but every once in a while, I'll get like the odd comment on like, you know, go back to leveling or whatever. Like nobody wants to see this other shit, right? I, I received an especially weird comment. It was on one of my leveling videos. Are these rares not up? Oh, fuck. Um, one of my leveling videos, I think it was the fresh account run and somebody basically, cause I, I think during that run, I was talking about how I was making guides for patch 10.1 and talking about some of my plans for that. And somebody was like, you know, nobody gives a shit about your PTR testing. You know, you're not an actual raider, right? You know, until you've gotten cutting edge, you know, you can't even consider yourself even a remotely serious player of this game, which like, first of all, no. Right, you can take the game seriously and have fun and not be cutting edge. But also, I literally have cutting edge. So it was like an extremely stupid comment, basically being like, you know, you're not a race the world first raider. Nobody gives a shit about your opinion. Stop talking about how you're doing PTR testing. And it's like, geez, some people, I mean, are just fucking demented, right? But um, I have definitely seen comments and things like that in the past. So apologies if I was too quick to you know, jump onto, or like, judge what you said. I just wasn't sure of the context. Uh, you found my YouTube three days ago, and you've already watched over 16 hours of me speedrunning. Jeez. Well, I'm glad you enjoy it. Uh, thank you. Uh, I, I definitely, I mean, I have, at this point, I don't even know how many hours of, ooh. All right, well, at least Aquarius the Unbound is up. So all the other rares are fucking dead. Um, yeah, I have a... a long backlog of speedruns for people who want to watch that. Especially if you go back to, like, the Shadowlands days. I did a shit ton of runs there. Oh, wait, we even get a chest here? Okay. Alright, that's what I'm talking about. It's not too bad. Um, but yeah, there, there's a lot of speedruns to go through, for sure. Not only was mop cooking uh, fantastic, leveling mop cooking was fantastic. Exactly. I, everything about Half Hill. Half Hill is like one of my favorite sub zones in the entire game. I mean, Valley of the Four Winds in general is one of my favorite zones in the entire game. But Half Hill especially may be one of my favorite like little towns in all of World of Warcraft. Just everything about it is so brilliantly designed i love the whole like cooking and farming progression system it's just such a nice little cozy town i i adore half hill and everything to do with like mop cooking and professions and stuff like that uh, that was extremely extremely fun oh okay i don't think that's rare but neat i guess it's a random world drop blue uh, i guess i'll price check it later on um, you were selling those enchants for a lot of profit? Yeah. Unfortunately, Blizzard broke it in Dragonflight. If it's not Gilladan, you're trolling. I am, do I have Gilladan yet? I don't think I've bought him from the Time Rifts. Let me see. Gil... Yeah, I haven't gotten Gilladan yet. Um, this is the one... Yeah, we go back to the Sepulchre. Uh, yeah, so I already went through this area with War Mode on, so I can just fly there and get back there faster. <laughs> I know you're joking, yeah. You could plop down in Half Hill and get like 300 skill points in an afternoon, yeah. You thought Cataclassic meant all servers went to that mode? No. I, I mean, they've already separated vanilla, right? They're vanilla era servers. The only thing they haven't done is they skipped TBC era. They just didn't keep any TBC servers, which I've said before I think is a mistake. I think it is a huge disservice to people who enjoyed TBC to not give them era servers. As somebody who probably wouldn't even play it, I don't really have much interest in playing TBC era. I played it a bit during the Sunwell patch. I enjoyed it, but I don't really think I would want to go back to it. I didn't love TBC endgame content, but I do think there are a lot of people who really like TBC and would love to play that. And it's 
honestly just really fucking shitty that Blizzard just didn't keep at least one TBC server active just because they're like, well, you know, there's not going to be enough players to justify the server costs. Oh, so much for it being a love letter to the community, right? Like, it's... I don't know. Uh, okay, what do I want to take? Guerrilla Tactics, definitely. Uh, improved Wildfire Bomb. Probably Double Born to be Wild for the CDR on uh, Aspect of the Cheetah. So let's see. Uh... I need to scroll back up. Every time I get, like, slightly almost caught up in chat, it snaps to the bottom. I hate that. I wish... I don't know if there's a way that I can figure out how to disable that, but, like, YouTube does this weird snapping thing with chat that makes it, like, really annoying when I'm trying to get caught up. Um, That horny toad's name? Yeah. In terms of, like, my favorite name that I've given a pet, that one is definitely it. I named that back in Shadowlands when all the Blizzard stuff happened, and... I've kept it like that since. I think it's just too fitting to ever change. You check the leg armor thing, the fact you need to be level 27 to 50 to apply it, yeah. Uh, currently, it is impossible. We've we've checked the levels. It's unfortunate. Um, I am... What I... I don't know... I might make a video at this point titled something really clickbaity to the extent of, like leveling in dragonflight is broken or something like that and highlight a lot of these issues because at this point the amount of bugs that we've encountered with dragonflight leveling with the scaling issues with like the changes in 10.1.5 just straight up not working there are so many issues and they have just been insanely slow on fixing it and i'm kind of getting tired of it i'm tired of making forum post after forum post and trying to get attention to this bringing it up on stream and like absolutely nothing gets changed at this point, it's like, hey, I managed to get the Onyx Amulet nerfed. At least, you know, I maybe will take some tiny bit of credit for that. And I brought attention to the 411 trinkets that were really overpowered. So if those videos, which blew up and had like slightly clickbaity titles, managed to actually get Blizzard to get off their asses and fix shit, might as well make one for leveling and the scaling stuff. And what I'll probably do is before I make that video, I'll like put up a... Like, or at least maybe not put up a poll, but like have a discussion in my Discord channel, like asking people to suggest different topics on like various different bugs and leveling that they want to see fixed, because there's a lot of them. And then I can just like kind of make a video running through all of the different issues with leveling and how none of this has been fixed and, you know, Blizzard needs to get the fuck on it. Uh, but at this point, I don't really see how else we're going to get stuff like that changed because they've been extremely lazy about actually doing any leveling fixes this expansion so yeah personal world destroyer baby winston bone shard and gildan yeah those are all good ones jennifer yeah that's another good one little Terragosa, i like that pet you like the battle pets that apply things to your characters like uh disgusting oozling yeah you've been starting to look at more of my vids and you enjoy them awesome glad to hear it uh oh okay uh, that is interesting. <laughs> uh, I've never encountered a crash there before. Well, uh, restarting, I guess. At least I think that was entirely within the game. That wasn't my computer. I panicked for a second because I thought my computer crashed. Because I've never seen a crash like that. Uh, but it looks like it was just the game, so weird. Um, Jade West uh, said, hello, first time in the stream, but you love my channel. Keep it up. Thank you. And uh, I like your name and profile picture. I like the reference. Uh, at least in terms of free guides, your leveling guides are 100% the best out there, most in-depth, the most informative, and in your opinion, the most entertaining. There are huge benefits to the on-screen one. Yeah, I mean, obviously the only thing that my guide is lacking at this point, which long-term I am, of course, working on, uh, is the on-screen thing. But I think that is the only thing that at this point my guide doesn't have so that is yeah that's a fair point right but there's a reason why long term i'm working on that uh but you know it'll it'll take me a bit i also personally this is um my opinion right so i know some people may say that they would prefer to just have something to follow i personally feel that having a more well-researched and well like you know uh put together 
actual guide with like steps to follow is more important than having like something on screen that just tells you basic things about where to go. I think generally speaking, it's going to be more useful than some generic guide that just like, you know, th sends you through WAD and tells you like little arrows and stuff like that. That's my opinion, though. That is why I will always app like opt to spend more time refining the actual route than, you know, just sitting here and neglecting that and putting more effort into just getting an add-on working. So I'll, I'll be chipping away at the add-on over time, but it is it has not been like a huge priority for me. Um... Uh, you quite like the raid guides. Uh, they just fit well for me. LOL, LOL at the guy thinking I don't have CE. Yeah, exactly. Um, yeah, the raid guides, I still need to figure out what I want to do with that going forward. One thing is... Uh, Aberus was kind of like my last shot at making raid guides. Because historically they weren't performing super well. The raid ones specifically. Um, and I... Uh, whatchamacallit? I basically told myself that if the um, if the raid guide in Abarus didn't perform like reasonably well, I would stop making them entirely. I even I mentioned that in one of my Discord posts or something. Uh, but as it so happens, the Abarus raid guide I put out did actually perform very well. Not just like you know meeting my expectations. Like at this point, it's past the hundred thousand views, which was way more than I would have expected from one of my um, raid guides. Uh, it was a huge, huge jump. So, at the very least, I plan on continuing that format. And obviously, I, I'm going to do it in the exact same style, right? Because um, clearly, what I did for that, people liked. Um, uh, people liked the whole format of, like, every single heroic boss in one video. Uh, the only thing is, unfortunately, I obviously couldn't include Sarkareth because, you know... I wanted to have it out in time, and Sarkareth, you know, the final bosses are never raid tested. So what I did is I included, like, you know, a little bit of a mention that I'd be posting up a following, or posting a follow-up video, and that's exactly what I did. And then my Sarkareth guide has also done pretty well. Um, so I will, at the very least, continue making guides in that format, where I have every single boss in one video, and then, assuming they continue the trend of not letting us test the final boss, I will make a separate guide specifically for that. Uh, because that did well, people uh, responded very positively to that, so, you know, no reason for me to not do it again. The only thing I still don't know if I really want to continue doing is Mythic Guides, because one thing I also looked at is I looked at, like, Mythic Guides from, like, big channels like Dratnos and stuff like that, and, like, a lot of Dratnos's, like, worst videos in terms of performance are his Mythic Guides. And, you know, credit where it's due, Dratnos is knowledgeable about that, his guides are actually fairly good. And despite the fact that I would actually say his guides are pretty good, they still don't perform well. And it is kind of one of those unfortunate things where it's like, well, I do think making Mythic Raid Boss guides would be fun. They have always performed abysmally whenever I've made them, especially for the amount of time it takes to actually put it together. And then when I look at like different people making it, I can't really find a single good example of somebody making Mythic Raid guides that actually does perform well. So... It's not like I'm sitting here like, oh, maybe I can improve my style. I don't really think there's much I can do to improve it. Um, the most I've at least thought of is I think what I might do, because historically I have done that at least, and even though they haven't performed well, maybe I could try to make it work, similar to what I did with Heroic this tier, is I might do a first three Mythic boss guide. Something like that. Because obviously making Mythic guides for a lot of the later bosses, uh, like I said, even like you know, big creators like Dratno still don't get, like, a ton of views on their guides like that, so I don't really think it would be worth my time. But I think, like, one video on, like, let's say this tier, if I made a video on how to do Kazara, Assault, and Amalgamation Chamber, I think that enough people at least do first three Mythic to, like, fill out their vault slots, that that could be something that maybe enough people would find useful that it would be able to justify the time I spend on it. And I would, instead of going into, like, super detail, which is what I normally did for my Mythic Guides, because it's meant to be more of a, you're just kind of clearing it um, for, like, your vault stuff, here is how all the important mechanics and how to handle it, I can go, like, a little bit more basic with some of my explanations, and then make it, like, you know, a 10 minute long, you know, here's how to do the first three easy Mythic bosses or something like that. Um, like, for instance, a comparison for, like, Vault of the Incarnates, it would be Aranog, Primal Council, and Taros, like, how to do those bosses, something like that. Um, so, at the moment, that is the only thing that I have maybe planned for 
uh, whatever the next raid tier is. I'll have to see, kind of time pending. Um, but at the very least, I'm glad you like the raid guides. The heroic guides, I at least continue to uh, plan on making. And I will do a similar format to this tier because people seem to enjoy that. Um, dungeon guides are a completely different topic, though, where... I mean, I've talked about this in my Discord before, but I'm not entirely sure what I want to do with dungeon guides going forward. I have a few ideas, and I'll probably try stuff this tier, but... I don't know, it's weird. My dungeon guides have been pretty hit or miss. Because they also haven't, like, routinely underperformed. I have had dungeon guides in the past for retail that have done well. Like, my Grimrail Depot guide actually did very well. Um, especially for that period of time. But... Uh, I refresh my flask, but I can actually get new items now. And I have my level 30 items that I can use. So let me just get that equipped. I can also now queue for dungeons again. So I'm going to do that. Ocean of the Tolvir. Uh, Ghost Elixir. And that's all I can do at this moment. So do that. Refresh my food buff. Uh, these rares still aren't up. All right, and then, oh yeah, I can use uh, War Scrolls. So let me make sure I have myself selected so I don't buff Godfrey or whatever. And I think that is it. That's it for uh, consumables I can use right now. But yeah. Uh, gatekeeping people for making videos because of flawed expectations? Yeah, I mean, it happens a lot, unfortunately. Uh, well, I, I wouldn't say it happens like frequently enough that is like a routine issue but it, it has happened multiple times and I, it happens to like a lot of people as well right like um at this point i do i like intermix leveling content and other stuff for a while but there was a period of time in shadowlands the worst that i think it ever got in terms of you know having to read comments like that is there was a point in time in shadowlands where i was really burnt out on doing these leveling runs and i just i was not interested in doing them at all so I went like six months or so without doing a single speed run, and I got like a few fairly mean comments basically saying things about like, who cares about this shit, go back to doing speed runs, right? Like at this point, at least I do them enough that I think, you know, people who would say shit like that are at least appeased, they have enough shit to watch, right? Uh, but I did actually have to read a few of those comments back in Shadowlands, and that kind of always irked me, right? Where it's like, you know... <laughs> I, I am not a dancing monkey, right? You know, if I want to make something, I'm going to make something. And if I don't want to do speedruns for a while, I'm just not going to do it. Um, so that always bugged me. Uh, but thankfully, it doesn't happen as much these days. But, you know, there are shitty people out there, so it's still going to happen sometimes. It just is what it is. All right. Uh, I need two more of the stealth guys, which I think I can find them in here. Yeah, there's one inside that house. Perfect. It's... There's... I missed a lot of messages. Holy shit. Let me make sure the NPCs don't get stuck on like a random mob this time, because that's happened to me a few times I do this zone. Personally, you're finding my streams a nice chill place to hang out, um, and it's nice to be able to turn me on while doing speed runs and have, have that in the background while doing other things. Glad to hear it. Yeah, I think that's why a lot of people watch the streams, especially. Uh, Half Hill feels like a real town. Exactly, yeah. Prospector Axe is listing from 500 gold to 67k gold. Huh. According to Undermine Exchange, only... Oh, fuck, it's the Botanica. Um... Botanica. Just not feeling. It. I'm not feeling Botanica, to be honest. It's not the worst dungeon ever, but I'm just not. I'm not in a Botanica mood at the moment. Uh, also, Lord Godfrey and the others should pop up. There we go. It took them a little bit. Let me. I'm gonna bloodlust and use a potion. I'm just gonna pre. Uh, Survival of the fittest here, so I can survive the damage from these mobs. But this time, my pet's actually doing a pretty good job tanking, so it's not too bad. Did I get the... I have, still haven't gotten the 7th Legion battle plans. Oh, no. Is it going to be one of these runs where it takes me, like, 20 mob kills to get 7th Legion battle plans? No, thank God. That one... 
I've had some shit RNG in the past with uh, the Seven Legion battle plans, and it is always a nightmare trying to get that. Oh shit, I need to loot this first. I always forget to do that. But I have to pick up the quest before I can start getting the quest items. Um... Didn't get any from those. Then I can XM 1000. Round up. Bunch of crocodiles here. Alright, I'm also... Um... Yeah, I'm gonna go ahead and... This point... Head over to Hillsbrad, but then I'm going to make camp at Hillsbrad and then switch to Wad. At least for now. Uh, somebody said TPC for life. Yeah. The moment you need to be level 18 or 19 to apply it to the armor. Yeah. They fixed the Dragonflight Memory League thing. They did not, unfortunately. What's my opinion about the meta racial balance? Um, I think in raiding it's fine. In Mythic Plus, I've heard it is problematic. Like dwarf is kind of mandatory for a lot of stuff. I don't know. I um, I don't really care too much. I think it's not a big enough difference that like unless you're pushing really high keys, you really need to to do it. But yeah. Uh, all right, I'll make camp here. Technically, I'm still in Silver Pine, but who cares? And then I will return to Org and start the WAD intro. Is Druid the fastest to level up to 70? Yeah, probably. Druid is what I personally used for my world record, so I personally obviously think it is the fastest. Um, yeah, let me make sure I abandon the Burning Crusade quest so I can use the Thralmar Mage. And then we're gonna head over there. Um, Naomi said, you'd agree for brand new players, Fall the Arrow is pretty huge when they're overwhelmed with everything else. Yeah, that's fair. I mean, I'm, obviously, yeah, I'd like to get that eventually. So, we'll see. You are a gamer, and other gamers like gamer content. Make more, sir. Thank you, GV. I, I appreciate that. Uh... The supercut was amazing for raid guides. Okay, glad you liked that then, yeah. I Honestly, that format was more of just like a, you know, Hail Mary kind of like, you know, maybe people find this helpful, and people definitely did, so I'm glad uh, you liked it. Other people did as well. Um, let's see. Okay, I just talked to Cadgar. Dratnos is one of those people where if people are doing higher-end content, they're probably not going to... They're probably not going to the guy that makes dumb comments on the MDI. His guides aren't bad, as you said. He does have some knowledge of the bosses. But he's also very much a meme in the community when it comes to higher-end raiders and M-plus players due to the comments he's made on... Eh, I mean, like, for the record. Not like... I'm not like a Dratnos fan or simp or anything. Um, I know... I, I know what you're referring to. I know he has said some, like, goofy stuff that, you know, maybe isn't 100% accurate or whatnot i i don't know. i don't think it's really that bad and i probably wouldn't you know judge all of his content by like you know maybe some slightly uninformed goofy things he said during like the mdi or whatever um like i said but i i don't really have a horse in this race i don't care too much um but also i one thing that i do think is maybe a little bit unfair to say about dratnos is that he is like a meme in the entire mythic plus and rating scene as somebody who is like at least decently involved in the mythic plus and rating scene i wouldn't say that i know some people who maybe don't really love dratnos's like stuff and don't take him fully seriously but i also know a decent amount of people who do like at least value his content and stuff like that once again not like defending him or whatever but I, I think that is maybe a little bit of an over-exaggeration. Um, am I ever going to do a Warrior 10 to 60 run? I've done, yeah, I've, I've done a Warrior. I've done multiple Warrior 10 to 60 runs. Um, I mean, I may do more, but 
uh, at the start of Dragonflight, like during the pre patch, I did a Warrior 10 to 60 run. I think it was a Prot Warrior run, is what I did. Uh, so yeah, I've done it. I'm sure you can find it if you look at my channel, like look at the the list of my speed runs. I have them all in a playlist, right? Um, so you you can find it if you look. But I might do more because one thing I haven't done is I haven't really tested Arms and Fury heavily. I've mostly leveled as Prot, so. Eventually, I'll get around to doing a run with arms, a run with Fury. What I'll probably do is... I'll do a... I think because Fury is generally regarded as, like, the better leveling spec for Warrior, I think I'm going to do a... Uh, what's it called? A Fury Warrior 10 to 60 run at some point, and then arms will probably end up in the 40 to 60 category. Because at low levels, they play, like, basically the same... It's not until you get to higher levels where their rotation meaningfully changes. So Arms versus Fury is basically the perfect candidate for one of those types of videos where I do a little mini 40 to 60 run. Uh, so yeah, I guess that's kind of what you can expect for that. MDI commentary feels like they aren't providing the casters with enough live information to say accurate things. Um, yeah, I... I honestly, I do kind of agree with that. I think it's more a reflection on the MDI in general. I... Honestly, like, commentary on the MDI will make anyone look like an idiot, right? It, it's also just why I don't watch the MDI. I don't really think it's interesting. You know, it, the entire idea of, like, there being, like, sports casting people for, like, a dungeon run... I don't know, man. I've never... I've never really enjoyed watching that, because half the time it feels like they're just pointing out the obvious or making, like, you know, surface-level insights into, like, group comp and stuff like that. And I guess, uh, also, every single orc here is dead. I've never encountered this before. Uh, I guess I need to pull extra in this little area. I've never gone down this area. At least there's, like, a decent cluster of bleeding hollow orcs that I can kill. Uh, there we go. Um... Yeah, I, I think, like, the MDI commentary is more meant for people who literally have no idea what's going on and just want something interesting to listen to. But, yeah, I kind of agree that it's not the best. But I also don't think that's just Dratnos, right? Um, You enjoy the time he was like, they're tanking out at the door so the orbs all bounce the same way and you can literally see they're trapping the orbs in the door. Yeah. I'm guessing that was for Tazavesh. The Menage yeah, Menagerie Boss and Tazavish. Yeah, I figured that's what you were referring to. Yeah, I remember that strategy. Uh, to be this close to Echo is an achievement. They're only a few minutes behind Echo, about to kill last boss, and the other team just wiped to the second boss. <laughs> yeah, I mean, that... I don't know. Like, obviously, that is, like, a goofy thing to say, right? But at the same time, it's like... I feel like anybody when trying to provide insightful commentary on a one-sided Mythic Plus dungeon run. <laughs> like, what the fuck else are you going to say at that point? <laughs> Man, I really, I really choked on my own words there. Okay, Jesus. Um, also, did I, I didn't get my fort buff? Why did my, my fort scroll did not work? Um, there we go, now it's working. I don't know what happened there. I just started talking. Like, I laughed as I said something, and so they started, like, fucking coughing. Um, let's see. Uh, the fact Dratnos also comes with Tettles. <laughs> it was fine by himself with knowledgeable players. Um, but with Dratnos, he baits out. So yeah. I will say, honestly, between the two of them, look, like, I, I, I've nothing against Tettles, like, as a person, and, like, he is... Tettles is fine, right? But if we're talking about dumb, goofy comments, Tettles is, like, the king of dumb, goofy comments. Like, Tettles is literally, like, one of the reasons why Boomkins have such a bad reputation for being complainers. Like, some of the absolutely just demented takes I've seen from, like, people linking something that Tettles tweeted out. It's like, I mean, he seems like a nice guy, like, right? Like, I've nothing against him personally. But he says some shit that I'm just like, what are you talking about? And 
I don't know. It's not bad. It's nothing like, you know, offensive or whatever, but especially like the Boomkin stuff. Whereas like, I feel like by Tettles' definition, Boomkin is always terrible and always needs to be buffed, right? Like I've seen so many times where Boomkin is like literally one of the best DPS specs in the game and Tettles is like, you know, uh, Boomkin really needs a buff or something like that. It's just like, what? Oh, because it's not good at this one type of damage, like oh, pure single target damage when Boomkins are like the dominant kings of spread AoE for the entirety of Shadowlands and they really need a single target buff. Like, man, just no, just stop. Like, I I've seen more stuff from him that has just made me just cover my face and cringe. Like, ugh. But... Yeah, I, I agree sometimes, you know, when they're together, the energy, they bounce off. Yeah, it's uh, for sure. I do think it is funny that, yeah, Dratnos and Tettles have become like, you know, a package deal in basically everything. Um, But honestly, like, I would, at the same time, right, I would rather listen to Dratnos and Tettle, Tettles, like, casting something than somebody who is just extremely boring and has, like, literally nothing to say. Because, sure, Dratnos and Tettles may say some silly stuff sometimes, but at least they're, like, amusing to listen to. Like, I, you know, I've said, you know, that Tettles sometimes has takes that I don't necessarily agree with, but I still enjoy reading, like, Tettles' tweets about Boomkins and stuff like that, because it at least makes me chuckle and go, like, oh, Tettles, wh what are you saying this time? Like, th there are some people who you know, have really stupid takes who I just can't stand at all, that's not Dratnos and Tettles for me. I at least find some of their, you know, some of the stuff amusing that they do, right? So it could absolutely be infinitely worse, which is the main reason why I feel like, you know, it's worth defending them. Because in the grand scheme of things, right, Dratnos and Tettles are infinitely better in terms of, like, actually giving, you know, insightful guides and commentary and stuff. And like I said, I think their actual, like, pre-made videos are definitely much better and a more like a better reflection of you know their insight and stuff like that it's one of the reasons i would never want to do any sort of commentary like that um just because i would have like fucking nothing to say like i i like to think that i know a decent amount about rating or mythic plus but if you put me in their position and i had to do fucking commentary for the mdi i would suck ass at it so i do not envy that who cares about speedruns and guides? Go back to doing shorts about your raid group or some stupid shit. Yeah. I mean, it's usually the opposite, right? Um, we'll see. I'm actually, I, I will say, um, for people who enjoyed the shorts uh, from my old guild, right? Like, and, and obviously, I've said before, that's not a reflection of that guild. It's more a reflection of just some of my friends within that guild who are, you know, fun to, to hang out with, right? And I still am talking and playing with a lot of them, despite leaving that guild. But I will say there is hope on the horizon for anyone who wants to see more funny guild shorts because so far, you know, I've only raided with these guys for a week, but the new guild I joined, I actually really like the atmosphere. And, um, you know, they're they're pretty fun to raid with. So, you know, there there is at least hope that I will make more guild shorts. I probably will give it, like, a little bit because I don't want to, like, jump to making, you know, videos. I want to at least continue feeling it out. Um, but so far pretty good uh i actually i do like this new guild so that that is good signs for people who were upset that you know there wouldn't be more uh like funny short stuff uh well we'll see how it all pans out obviously no promises right but at least it is not it's not a lost cause there is a, a chance why did that mob reset what the hell what is going on why is this mob fucking resetting okay what the fuck is it because of this stupid Void Wolf bugging out? Was that what was causing the issue? I guess? That was a really weird bug. I've never seen that before. Um... Botanica feels so long. You love how short Architraz is by comparison. You've got to be fucking memeing, right? There's no way you just called Architraz short. Please tell me you did not just say Architraz is short. You're, you're absolutely trying to fuck with me, right? Oh my god, I hate Architraz. Architraz is one of my least favorite dungeons in the entire game, and that thing it takes fucking forever. And all the scaling is terrible, all the bosses are- Oh, I fucking hate Architraz. Yeah, that- it, that's gotta be bait. Do I have a time goal set when I speedrun? No, not really. Like, when I'm doing world record attempts, I obviously have a time goal set. Like, if you watch my Guardian Druid world record run, I mentioned during the run that I was, um... I was hoping to get sub three hours for 10 to 60, 
and I was hoping to get sub um, sub two hours for 60 to 70. And I achieved both of those goals in the world record run. But I have no time that I'm aiming for with this because this isn't this is like a speed run, right? But it's not like a world record attempt. It's nothing fancy. It is I'm testing Survival Hunter. So what I'm more doing is we already know how fast like the fastest specs are. So the point of this run is to just do a normal run and see how fast Survival Hunter is compared to like what we already know is really fast. So if Survival Hunter gets a really fast time, then that means that it is like as fast as a lot of the other really good specs and that's good. But there are times where I will do a speed run on a spec that is really, really bad and it's like an hour or two behind my world record and that just goes to show that that spec is weaker in leveling than, you know, what I traditionally use, stuff like that. So, uh, there's no real time goal. It's more we're trying to figure out how long the time it takes to do this actually is, relatively speaking. Uh, let's see. Have I ever considered doing a speedrun where a dungeon twink drags me through random dungeons from 10 to 60? No. Why would I do that? That sounds horrifically boring and pointless. Um, so, yeah, no, I've never, ever considered that. And I never will do that, because that sounds dumb. Uh, you're a little confused. When you hit level 30, you needed to queue for BC Dungeons? What do you mean? Uh, Raphael or Kira, I don't know what you mean about level 30. I mean, TBC Dungeons in the route, like, they're included there. It has nothing to do with specific level, it's just you queue for TBC Dungeons as you level up because some of them are efficient. But if there's a bad dungeon, right, so I got uh, Botanica there, which is generally one of the, the worst ones, then I'm just going to leave and try again later. So, you know, whenever this Deserter debuff falls off, I'll try again. We hope we don't hit um, Escape from Durnhold. In fact, what dungeons do I still need? Probably a good thing to figure out. I need Underbog, uh, Manitoums, and Mechanar. Yeah. So those three dungeons are the only ones that I could get that I would still actually want to do. But there's at least three dungeons that I could potentially hit that I would run. So uh, I will, I'll keep queuing for it because of that. Uh, how am I liking Survival Hunter? Survival's good. Just to be clear, yeah, I've played Survival before, right? This isn't like... Like, I know a lot of my speedruns before something wins the poll that I've never played before. I have played Survival Hunter many, many, many times in the past. I've done speedruns before with Survival. So, yeah, this is definitely not my first rodeo with it. I'm familiar with the spec. Uh, it's one of my favorite melee DPS specs. So, yeah, I like Survival. Uh, let's see. Wildfire Bomb, Point. Uh, Butchery... Else. Probably Rejuvenating Wind. Actually, no, I'll take Binding Shot. Binding Shot's probably going to be more generally useful. I don't really think I'm going to use Wing Clip, so I'll just toss that. Let me try to kill this Ogron real fast. Alright, that was everything I needed. So that come on, here we go. Um Did a dungeon run with you as a shaman healer? Are you famous now? Uh wait, which healer were you? Which wait, which dungeon were you in, uh Joel Turamir? Because I wasn't like paying super close attention, but um Yes, I guess I guess you are famous now. But thank you. I appreciate it. Uh what class spec speedrun surprised me the most so far? Definitely Shadow Priest. Um Shadow Priest went from being a spec that I considered to be like not really that good to one that I now think is actually quite strong. Um I honestly think I would put Shadow Priest in A tier with like a lot of other melee DPS specs. It is very good. The only reason I may not, I maybe would put it like top of B tier is just because being a caster, you still have like some, you know, issues with, you know, having to round things up and then, you know, you get like your cast staggered, right? So it's still not perfect, um, but Shadow Priest is definitely significantly better than I expected. It is good, 
right? It is solidly like, you know, a workable leveling spec that actually has like, you know, efficient ways to kill things. Uh, so yeah, Shadow Priest, I would say, has surprised me the most out of all the ones that I've played. see uh you're enjoying the heck out of my run great content uh keep up the great work thank you brandon lewis appreciate it is tbc the best zone to get 60 uh, tbc is specifically for dungeon queues so i'm not actually leveling within tbc zones in fact tbc zones are some of the worst but in terms of like doing dungeons in between quests where where's the quest uh, what is happening? Oh, what? Okay. Uh, there was a weird delay there. Where Khadgar was not offering the quest. Unless I was blind? I could have sworn I checked Khadgar, and he didn't have a quest marker over him. I don't know, whatever. Um, yeah, so we only do TBC for the dungeons. My guide on gearing alts uh, reignited my WoW addiction. Uh... <laughs> You say thank you, and your wife says the F word. Well, I am glad you uh, enjoyed that gearing guide. I put a lot of effort into that one. I spent like two weeks making that gearing guide, so I'm glad that people are enjoying it. <laughs> oh, hello, Andy Roo. Good to see you. Ask Wheels about his feelings towards Dratnos next raid. Ooh. All right, I'll keep that in mind. Uh, hey. See. Well, I missed a lot. Holy shit, I missed a lot of stuff. Ah, oh. you don't judge him or his content. Uh, you know everybody says some dumb stuff. Yeah, you were slightly joking for sure, for sure. Um. Oh, thank you. What's the fastest route sixty to seventy as Demon Hunter? Your route doesn't matter. For your class like the route is the same for everybody to, regardless of class right so just follow my leveling guide um yeah that's uh that's all you need to know um you heard that dratnos was a meme and you were mildly surprised when you watched his prepared stuff and saw it was good yeah it's an achievement to have uh, not been seated versus echo earlier in the competition yeah uh, you missed the rest of your comments regarding Prospector Axe, but in short, according to Oribos Exchange, it could be worth a lot of gold. Ooh, all right. Well, that is, that's nice. I'll take that for sure. You're right about the Boomkin comments. Uh, you made a Boomkin named Alchemy. Nice. <laughs> that's good. Uh, Boomkins only do three times the damage of any other spec in spread AoE and 80% of the other single target specs in single target. Yeah. Uh, Tettle's Boomkin, you can understand wanting the spec to be perfect, but, but yeah, meanwhile, other specs are, like, you know, in dire need of, like, crucial buffs, so, you know, a, a lot of people get annoyed when, you know, Boomkin players will complain that their spec isn't perfect, right? Uh, speaking of balancing, you're glad S Priest got a single target adjustment this month? Yeah, they really needed it, right? Um... Talking about us to your stream, this is going in your trial thread, oh no. I mean, hey, I said good things, right? So, you know, should uh, should be good, right? Uh, but yeah, I, I didn't realize anyone from the guild was watching, but uh, I appreciate you uh, stopping by the stream. It's always like, you know, interesting, right? Uh, on, I... Oh, I have one more second on gun shoes. Okay. Just want to make sure I don't mistime this, and then I will continue to catch up and chat. Architraz is peak speedrun strats. Ugh, yuck. You, me <laughs> you memed by accident you met Mechanar. Okay, good. You've redeemed yourself with that comment, because saying Architraz is fast? Ooh, yeah. That is a... Uh... That's a questionable comment for sure. But Mechanar, I can agree with that. Yes, Mechanar is a solid one. Quick, say your guild is great and wonderful in every way imaginable. I'm sure there's a past trial and some loot funneling coming your way. <laughs> no, I'm a tank. I don't get fuck all for loot, right? It is kind of, you know, speaking of tank loot stuff, it is crazy the difference of, like perspective that like you know guilds have in retail and classic because like in retail right 
I am used to... Oh, what the hell? I hope my stream didn't crash, but the YouTube tab just crashed. Um, did anything happen with the stream? Dude, I'm getting some weird fucking issues during today's stream that I've never seen before. Uh, so I hope that didn't... You're still here? Okay. I think it was just my ability to read chat got interrupted. I've never had that happen before. Like, the, the page crashed and I had to reload it. I was pretty sure it wouldn't impact anything, because I know that as long as, like, the actual live stream connection is working, then I'm good. But that was very odd. I've never seen a stutter like that before. Um... Yeah, what I was saying before that happened, um, like in retail, I'm used to getting absolutely no loot because you're a tank, right? You know, it's more important to get the loot to the DPS and then even in many cases, the healers than the tanks, right? But in classic, I have just been getting fed loot nonstop. Like I am already at like, uh, what, like what, what is my gear score at? Like, I think it's at 5,550 gear score or something. Like I have the... Um, the 50 chest tank cape and like a bunch of other ridiculously good items and i just get so much fucking loot because like the the philosophy in classic is feed the tank i guess to keep them happy so they keep coming back right but it's just wild like i don't even care about loot but like i've just gotten so much shit now you know, i'm not gonna complain right like i'll take it but i'm used to being you know as, as a tank i have to farm all my own shit and m plus and stuff uh, I do not expect to get that, but it is a nice change in Classic, for sure. Uh, whatever, give me the next quest. There we go. Uh, let's see. The guild you're in is imploding over the most insignificant drama. You just want to raid? I feel that. Dude, I've... I mean, anyone who's been around here for a while, I have had some spectacular guild drama explosions like the peak being the whole like officer cheating on his wife with the demon hunter trial like that one was fucking wild but it's just like the amount of times i've seen guilds fall apart over the dumbest shit and it's like oh, just why like i that, in that same guild right like th that one guild had so many hits um and the funny thing about it is so the cheating officer guilds when that all happened, that was like from the old days, right? But back when that guild, when I was in that guild, that was on Melganis, right? And that guild imploded. But now that I'm back on Melganis, I've actually had to see the the guild leader of that like really shitty guild, like, you know, with the cheating officer and stuff. He's always in general chat saying dumb shit. And it like, it takes every fiber of my being to not like, you know, message him and be like, you know, hey, what's your rank in League of Legends now? Are you finally actually paying attention to your guild instead of constantly playing League and ignoring every discussion thing that's going on? Or, I mean, obviously, I'm not going to say that in, like, you know, avarice general chat. I'm probably not going to say anything because, you know, I need to be nice. I need to be not problematic, right? Um, but uh, I, I so much want to ask him, you know, if any of his guild officers have cheated on their wives lately, right? Because fucking hell. The fact that he's still around and he's still leading that guild, like, I thought it died. It did die back in fucking Nihilotha. But apparently he reformed somehow and he's still there and I have to read his dumbass posting in Aberus General chat now. And it's like, oh, God. Like, that was the one nice thing about not having to be a Melganis anymore. <laughs> or at least, I mean, I figured he wasn't here anymore, but fucking hell. But yeah, I, I feel you there. I've had some really unfortunate experiences with uh, stupid guild drama in the past, for sure. Um. Oh, shit. Hit a wall. As someone who prefers an add-on leveling guide, uh, then a ridding guide... Uh, join that. Let me at least get this stuff set up first. Uh, is there an add-on I recommend? No, I don't. <laughs> Asking me to recommend another leveling guide is probably the dumbest thing you could do. Uh, I do not. I do not recommend an add-on. I'm glad you prefer it or whatever, like, to each their own, but I'm obviously not going to recommend anyone's because I still think mine is better, so, you know. Um, just saying, Shadow Priest is so much nicer post 10.1 to level than 10.0. You wouldn't have been wrong thinking it's mediocre before that. Yeah, that's what a lot of people told me, that, like, the rework really helped out Shadow Priest leveling. So, uh, 
Who knows? Yeah, maybe I would have absolutely hated it if I tried it before. Uh, let me get Garrison Hearthstone. Throw this on bars. Uh, it definitely wasn't Rogue, but it wasn't Tanks or Windwalker. Yeah. So far, your favorite re rework is the removal of Rune of Power. Yeah, I agree. A lot of people, or a lot of mage friends I have, are really excited that Rune of Power is finally gone. I didn't really play mage a lot, so I don't really know much about it, but personally, I would not have liked having to stand in one place, so I can understand why they are not huge fans of it, for sure. Uh... Let's see. Have I seen the new Final Fantasy XIV announcement? Yes, and uh, it actually has not been covered already, so uh, you don't need to apologize for asking. That, that is actually, I'm glad you mentioned it because I specifically have not said it or anything about it. Um, but yeah, I mean, so far, I will say, out of the Final Fantasy XIV announcements, obviously new expansion, right? That's cool. Um, I, I haven't looked into it a ton. I watched the trailer. I read, like, I skimmed the front page of the Final Fantasy Reddit to see, like, you know, some of the major things that were coming. Uh, but I haven't watched the fan fest or any of the, the specific stuff, so I don't know all the details. But, I mean, it looks neat. I think generally the idea of having a more laid-back expansion instead of, you know, the world-ending threats that we've had constantly, where, I mean, the whole vibe of the trailer was kind of, you know, um, piratey, uh, like, stuff in like a chill jungle area, which seems cool. Honestly, I, I like that idea. I'm sure it's going to be more in depth than that. Like knowing Final Fantasy 14, there's probably going to be some big thing going on that we need to like, you know, save the world from. But uh, I like the vibe that the expansion's going for. And the one thing that I, I saw the screenshots on Reddit and I'm like, that is a weird thing to Photoshop. Like why would somebody Photoshop crossover between Fall Guys and Final Fantasy. That it's just like an odd thing to do. Um but I'm like it does seem like surprisingly realistic, huh? Like, you know, th that I basically thought to myself, that's a cool fake screenshot. And then I kept reading and there actually is a Fall Guys Final Fantasy 14 crossover. And I, like that broke my brain, honestly. Like of all the games to do a crossover with Final Fantasy XIV. Fall Guys? L the one with the little, like, Among Us guys that trip over each other on the fucking obstacle course? Like, that was not on my bingo card. Uh, very, very surprised about that one. Um, it looks cool, though, I guess. Like, I, what is it? They're getting, like, a new gold saucer, like, obstacle course. And I love doing the, the gold saucer, like, leap of faith thing, so... I guess that's neat. I haven't played Among Us since 2020, so I mean, I don't really care about that side of it, but it's definitely interesting, to say the least. Uh, and I haven't really looked into much past that, but um, yeah, I mean, it seems cool. I'll look into it more like as more information comes out, but uh, I'm excited for it. Uh, you have twinked a level 10 priest that tanks solos TBC dungeons that was built to help group speedrun dungeons. Yeah, I mean, a lot of people do that. Um, what should we call it? Uh, in Penance, you're going to go run Architrez right now to see how bad it is. <laughs> yeah. Um, Tank loot is wild. You get a trinket or two at the start of the tier and then wait for everyone else to be fully geared to get your two piece. Yeah, pretty much the only piece of gear I got this entire tier is I got um, I got our second beacon off uh, Heroic Sarkareth. Um, and that was like the only significant piece of loot I got. I was the last person to get four piece. Uh, actually, I take it back. I was technically speaking the fourth to last person to get four piece but that was only because we got like a million of whatever my token was um there were like there was one specific type of token that just none of it dropped so they had like a million left over and they just gave it to me because nobody else needed it and mind you my co-tank gave himself priority on four piece over dps which i thought was some bullshit right and he made up some fucking story about like there was a miscommunication in the loot council and that's why i got priority on my four piece like hmm yeah i don't know about that one um so 
Like, I am perfectly fine taking, like, bottom priority on loot, but when he gave himself, like, Blood DK 4-piece and I'm sitting there an extra week waiting to get my shit, I was like, alright, that's a that's a little bit kind of sus. Um, obviously, just adding on to the pile of, you know, m minor issues I had before, which I won't go into again, right? Uh, but that, that was just something that that reminded me of, of, like, yeah, that was kind of a little bit fucking stupid. Uh, but yeah, I, I'm very used to not getting anything. Uh, and Auntie Roos said, that's nutty. I assume that was in reference to what I was talking about, the guild drama stuff. Yeah, you haven't even heard the, the least of it. I mean, I told you guys the other day about, like, the, the guild that I was in with rocks and stuff. And that was... Well, I only covered the surface on that one. Um, but yeah, I, I have ended up in some really questionable guilds over the years. Uh, it, it has been a bit unfortunate. Uh, but yeah, the one in... The, the previous one that I was in on Malganus, if you want, I can... I'm not going to say it on stream, right? Because I don't want people to go harass them. But if you are curious, I can tell you the name of the guild, like, after stream or something. But yeah, it it was fucking wild. That was back in, in Nihilotha when I joined those guys. Uh, and I remember... <laughs> When I first started making videos, like, in the Shadowlands pre-patch, because at that point it was like, I had been in their guild just a few months prior, and then I, I first started doing my leveling speedruns, and I was just talking about, like, whatever the fuck I felt like. Uh, so I told that whole story of what happened in that guild that I joined in Nihilotha, and it ended up, like becoming popular among my viewers where everybody would always like ask me to retell like the cheating officer story and stuff like that so i basically gave aired out the entire dirty laundry of that guild which quite frankly they deserved it right but then um that uh that gm who like did a lot of that shit ended up finding out that i had talked about that and that he like came and left a bunch of nasty comments on one of my videos which uh, <laughs> yeah uh, I deleted them, but it was at least interesting to read all the shit that he said. Um, it's been, it's it's been a long, a long journey, right? Uh, you're minutes behind the stream. You're you're not minutes behind the stream. I'm minutes behind the chat. So, uh, spicy and I, if I just uh, or maybe you are minutes behind the stream. I don't know, but I am also I'm responding to things that were said like you know, ten minutes ago or so because. I, I want to make sure I read everything. So usually I go back and I'll I'll read through all the older messages. Sometimes if I'm at the bottom and I'm close to catching up, I will see messages like, you know, I saw that you just said that. Uh, is that all I need? There's three more Forsaken Camp Supplies. All right. Uh, it's not you. Battle.net is lagging in the game as well. Huh. Yeah, I will say that issue with the stream was not Battle.net, though. I had an issue with Battle.net earlier, and obviously my game crashed, but um, that was like a weird issue on YouTube's end, so I don't know what happened. You don't pay attention to Malganus trade chats? Well, this I'm specifically saying within a, a Barris general chat um, is where I would have to read all this shit, but uh, yeah. A Barris general chat on Malganus is where I saw this dude posting, and I was like, oh god, it's that guy. Um, you heard the leveling add-on with the goblin name is great. Goblin name? I'm trying to think of the goblin name. I don't know. Gallywix? Gallywix is a boosting community, though. I I must be confused or something. I don't know what you're referring to, Odor. Uh, me. I can't give that example and not tell the story. Has it been long enough that... Maybe it has been long enough that nobody's heard the cheating officer story. Because that was, like, back in 2020 in the early days of my channel. So, I guess there are a decent amount of, like, new people who probably never heard that. Um, the problem is, it's like, I always tell people to go back to, like, when I originally told it. Because no matter how you slice it, right? Like, I still remember everything that happened. But when I first told that story, it was only, like, months old. And nothing can really compare to telling a story when it's, like, fairly recent. And all of, like, the details are fresh in your memory. So, somewhere back then... Yeah, I know I know people say they weren't here back in 2020. I know. Yeah. It was in one of my runs, but I guess at this point, that run... I might have actually unlisted that run where I told the story now, so... Um, Zygor? No, Zygor's not 
the god Zygor is just the dude's name. Um, yeah, I don't think it's a reference to a goblin or anything. At least not that I know of. I'm I'm pretty sure it's not. How did I I thought I checked for Little Bjorn earlier, but I guess I didn't. Um Have I ever done a rogue speedrun? Yes, I did one. Uh it's if you watch my video leveling a fresh account, that was actually also a rogue speedrun. And I will probably do more in the future because rogue is Rogue is really bad, which means that I need to test it more because I need to find a reliable way for people to actually level up as a rogue. Um, so I will definitely get around to it eventually, but yeah, it's... Uh, because I did one fairly recently, I don't know if I would do one, like, super soon. It, maybe give it another month and I might do another rogue speedrun. We'll see. But there's a lot of other stuff. Like, it's been... I haven't done a warlock speedrun in, like, half a year or something... And people are always asking me to do a Warlock speedrun. I've never done a Rep Pally speedrun or like a, a Balanced Druid speedrun. Those are ones that people have been asking for for a while. So there's a lot of stuff that like, you know, a lot of people have wanted to see before another Rogue speedrun. So we'll get there eventually. Um, But yeah, no matter, like I could retell the story once I catch, like, okay, fine. Since a few people have said that they, you know, weren't here before... Um, and don't know the cheating officer story. I can retell it. It is, it's a fun story, but I will say if you want the best version of that, you're going to have to find, if you go into like my wow speedruns playlist, it's, um, I think it was the video. It's been a while. So I'm, I'm fuzzy on exactly the name. It was called speedrunning Alliance and telling old wow stories. I think is what that video was called. It's an old one, right? Uh, but when I told that story initially, it was, like, fairly recent, right? It had happened within um, within the last, like, three, four months or something like that. So all of the details were fresh. Uh, I remembered everything, like, perfectly, right? At this point, it's been three years, uh, give or take, since that happened. So I'm probably going to forget little bits and pieces of it. Uh, but I think the original telling of that story still holds up to this day. My mic quality was kind of shit back then, though, so I guess that is maybe something you'd have to put up with. Um, let's see. Just make sure I'm heading to the next zone and paying attention. Uh, the problem with Rune of Power is that you had to stand in one place as a hypermobile caster. Yeah, I can definitely see that being annoying for sure. Thus Among Us. Uh, Final Fantasy XIV has some crazy crossovers. Yeah. I guess they definitely have had some odd ones in the past, but this was one that I never would have expected, for sure. Just chilling the X-Pack does sound really refreshing. Yeah, definitely. Um. Okay, there we go. My gun shoes ended. I thought you said Mal'Ganis trade, no thanks, too spammy to even pay attention. Yeah. I mean, definitely the larger server trade chats can be a little bit hard to keep up with. Um, People talking about Zygor guides. I'm not... I'm not really going to comment. All I will say, whenever... Whenever people ask me for my thoughts or talk about, like, different leveling guides... All I will say on the subject of Zygor is I heavily dislike paid leveling guides. There's a reason I don't charge for my leveling guides. Um, I don't think Zygor is the worst one out there, specifically for him, but I don't understand why you would ever pay for a leveling guide that is, quite frankly, worse than mine, because obviously I think my leveling guide is the best, and I think there's a lot of other people who would agree with me. Um, so paying for something that you can get for free seems questionable. The only advantage, at least right now, is that it has the little arrow stuff that you can follow along with, but... One thing I will say for anyone who only likes the Zygor guides or whatever because of the add-on whatever that you can follow along with, a free option that some people have told me they've used is there is an add-on I believe called WoW Pro, and WoW Pro has like generic routes through a lot of different zones that I include in my guide, such as Silver Pine Hillsbrad. It's completely free, uh, which is the only reason you even are hearing me recommend it. Uh, so you can just boot that up and slap it on. It obviously won't have all of the detail of my leveling guide, right? But at least if you want basic information on like where to go for quest objectives, that is at least a passable free option, uh, at least until I get my version finished. 
Um, and yeah, owner, I know you were making a joke for the record. I, I fully understand you were joking, right? Um, but since other people were commenting on, you know, Cygor guides and their thoughts on it, I at least wanted to make sure I made it clear I read what you said. Uh, but I, yeah, I don't want to really comment on it. Uh, all I will say for Zygor is there are a lot of guides out there that are a hell of a lot worse than his. So, yeah. Um, um yeah, so, uh, yeah, I, I know, I know what you said, Goose Comics, and like, yeah, I guess I can't really speak to that, right? So, um, definitely I could see that if it has routes for everything, then sure. Um, let's see. Leveling guide is fine and all, but you wouldn't consider it better than the free routes Harlden provides? Yeah. I mean, quite honest, like, you know, cost aside, I think mine is better. Um, but like I said, you know, could be worse. Definitely could be worse. Uh, the... Where can you see my leveling guide? It's linked in the description. It's on my website, which, you know, I have a link to that below. I also have uh, video versions of the guide on my channel, right? So the written guide you can find on my website. The video guides you can find on my channel if you look for them. So, I mean, it should be if you just sort by, like, my most popular videos, it's there. They're um, generally the, the higher viewed ones. And I think I have a link to it in the description as well. I don't know. I also have links to it on my website, right? So, yeah. Easy enough to find. Uh, let me make sure I pick up this quest. It's insane the difference between optimized leveling and non-optimized leveling. Uh, your level 44 in six and a half hours to my level 37 and two hours 35. Yeah. I mean, for sure. Honestly, I think... It's a lot of it isn't even necessarily the optimization, right? Like I could get a time fairly close to this without all of the fancy stuff. It is really just route knowledge, like experience, route knowledge, all that stuff. That is what makes up the vast majority of the time save. Um, I guess that still counts for like optimized stuff, but yeah. Um. WoW Pro is great, use it for Lore Master. Yeah. I mean, I, honestly, like I said, if you're going to use something, I would say use WoW Pro just because it's free, right? And if you're going to use, like, basic routes for that, why pay for something when it it's just effectively the same? Uh, free is always better, especially when Blizzard can change anything in a patch. Yeah. I mean, ideally, right... I don't really know exactly how those guides operate, but I would imagine they have to keep themselves pretty tightly updated to account for patch changes, which I also do, and all my updates are also free. Um, but yeah, I also, like, I would feel bad if I charged for my guide and it was, like, out of date, like, for whatever reason I didn't have time to update it, because then, you know, people would be paying money for something that isn't accurate. Uh, doing your Architraz run, you already feel lost and incarcerated after going through the first corridor. You want to go back to Mechanar. Yeah. Hey. I mean, I, I I did warn you. I did say Architraz is one of the worst dungeons ever created. Also, what is happening here? I feel like there's slight delay in the the quotes. This is supposed to be going by a little faster. Um... There we go. Okay, this is... So I'm going to stand here away from the flamethrowers. And you don't need to kill the others. Just ward in still water. Then harpoon back to the grounds. Alright, nice. Also do potion of the toll here, which I should have done at the start, but... Oh well. There we go. Yeah, I, I, um, look, I, I don't know what else Cygor has built into it. I still don't think, like, I, I don't really agree with charging for add-ons and stuff like that in general. 
And to be honest, I don't really want to sit here and continue to discuss the merits of paying for an add-on because my thoughts on that are fairly well known. I I think saying it could go down by a buck or two is a little bit redundant because it shouldn't be paid. Right. Um, like, whatever. Uh, but like I said, don't really want to further discuss Zygor. The only reason I'm even entertaining Zygor is because at least, like I've said, out of all of the options, I still don't think it's good to charge for shit like that. But it's um not the worst. Why did I choose to play, play Volpera? Um, I always make my hunters as Volpera, just because. But Volpera is also one of the best leveling races because of this racial, Make Camp. You can set a, basically a portable hearthstone anywhere you want, and it makes it really easy to just move about in the open world. Yes, people do pay for add-ons. Which, yeah. Um, like I said, it's uh, obviously something I am diametrically opposed to, and do not want to discuss the merits of further, because I don't think there are any. Uh, anyways, uh, you do really appreciate that I post my guide in the mini-guides for free? Yeah. I mean, yeah. I, uh, I don't like, um, uh, whatchamacallit? I, I don't like gatekeeping any information like that behind a paywall. Whatever. I've been very clear about that since day one. Um... But I'm not going to sit here and act like it's easy. Like, on, all I will say is I understand why people charge for add-ons and guides and stuff like that. I don't like it, but I understand it. And, um, fuck, Blood Furnace again. All right. Uh, because I'll be completely honest, right? I've looked at, I, I've seen people making leveling guides either for classic or retail. And they're charging, like, $25 for it. And, you know, it, sure. I'm not going to say that the thought hasn't crossed my mind of, like, you know, if somebody's charging $25 for their leveling guide, and, you know, with the amount of people that use my leveling guide, if I charged $5 for my leveling guide, I'd be making probably, like, 300% more money as a spitball estimate than I am right now from just doing, like, YouTube stuff. So... Is it, of course, sometimes, like, you know, tempting to think, like, wow, man, that would be nice. Yeah, sure. But at the same time, I don't think it's good. I don't support it. And uh, I don't think people should do it. And I think at a certain point, you need to draw a line in the sand and say, I am not willing to cross this line for money. And uh, charging for information is something that I am not going to do. So, yeah. I mean, like, that's the thing. I don't, I don't know how much every single... Um, guide is, but I can absolutely say that I have seen multiple guides. Like, there is, and there, like I said, there is a reason why there are certain ones that I hate infinitely more than Zygor. And any dis there are certain guides, any discussion of it, I will immediately just delete the message either from my comments or chat because I don't even want people to, like, discuss it, right? I think it's that fucking terrible. Um, and yeah, some of them are like 25, like $25 for like 10 to 60 and then another $25 for 60 to 70. And it's like, what the actual fuck, you know, like how greedy are you? Jesus fucking Christ for one person. And obviously, you know, a lot of people end up torrenting these leveling guides because who the fuck wants to pay $25 for it. But even then it's not that good. Like to be completely honest, right? I used Zygor's leveling guide because one of my friends in Classic, specifically, one of my friends in Classic sent me the, the like, pirated version of Zygor's guide and said, try this. And I'm like, why? Like, I, I used it for literally 30 minutes, and I'm like, it's literally just telling me pick up all the quests and do all of the quests. And like, I guess maybe that's for Classic, right? But that's all it was. And I don't understand why I need a guide that tells me, like, and maybe it's for people who literally do just follow the arrow and they they cannot level unless they have an arrow telling them exactly how to complete this quest but like when i level in classic and i use questy questy tells me where to go it's like i pick up a quest it's like kill 25 orcs in this area it shows the area i go there i kill 25 orcs like i don't know i don't understand it um but yeah it's uh 
I I did not understand the point. I actually found it more annoying than anything because there were like a million little fucking pop-ups um, suggesting you do X, Y, Z things that I like unrelated to leveling that I'm just like, fuck off. Like I, I just want to level my character and um, it, it really annoyed me. Uh, but yeah, it's um, there. Like I said, there's some that are a lot worse. It's just, you know, if the leveling guide was actually really, really, really super good, I, I still wouldn't be happy with it, but I would maybe understand it, but they're not like, they are just generic telling you go to point A, go to point B leveling guides that offer absolutely no real insight. It's just pointless. Um, yeah. Goose Comics said the add-on that shall not be named is pure garbage and one of the people running it got called out for a scam and deleted his entire social media persona. Yep. 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 I'm glad you know the one I'm talking about. I've obviously mentioned it before. Um, yeah. I, I despise... The add-on that shall not be named. <laughs> I like that. <laughs> the Voldemort add-on, we can call it. Um, yeah, I absolutely despise everything about them. And I, I mean, for anyone else, to give you a hint, there's also a reason why I despise the hardcore add-on. Not necessarily because I hate the way people play it, it's because I fucking despise the people who run it. Um, so I have refused to play classic hardcore until official servers were actually a thing. Because fuck supporting those idiots. Hardcore is sus. I mean, the hardcore add-on is, like, whatever. Hard hardcore Classic, on its own, like, just as a thing, right? It's fun. I've been enjoying playing it on official servers. But the hardcore add-on is, like, right? Uh, like, the, the idea of people playing it, right? Like, I have nothing against people who use the hardcore add-on because they think it's fun, right? Like, people were playing hardcore Classic even before the add-on existed. So, there's I have nothing against that. But the makers of the add-on, one of the things that I find incredibly stupid about it is they're basically trying to turn hardcore into their thing. It's like, motherfucker, you just made an add-on, right? Like, you did not invent hardcore. You did not invent hardcore classic. All you did was make an add-on that gatekeeps people and tries to funnel them into your ecosystem so you can get them to pay money. That is all the fucking add-on creators did. And they're basically trying to control the entire hardcore classic community. And I fucking hate it absolutely dog shit so yeah i i have refused to touch it i can understand why people want to do it because you know i guess if you are playing hardcore classic right now on what is the server blood sale buccaneers i understand why it's effectively required um but fuck that fuck that uh and there's a reason that i've waited to try ha classic hardcore until the official servers came out wow add-ons capitalism version i mean a lot of add-ons are like that. A lot of the big add-ons that have people running them, you know? And it, for the record, not to say, like, all add-on creators, right? Like, obviously, the creators of, like, DBM and Bigwigs, which are two of, like, the most universally used add-ons um, in World of Warcraft, you know, they don't pay money, or they don't make people pay money for it. I think they, they have, like, Patreons and stuff, which, as far as I know, do well. And obviously, if you want to support the creators of those, by all means, go to their Patreon, right? But charging for it is... That's a whole different story. Um, yeah. They're, like, there's a lot of good add-on creators who do it because they enjoy it. And I understand, right? Like, you know, that you need to make money somehow, right? But uh, forcing people to pay $25 to use your stupid add-on is not the way to go. Um... You've never he heard of paid add-ons before? Must be more casual than you thought. Uh, I mean, it's it's definitely like a somewhat well-known thing, but I mean, it's it's not like I you could probably play World of Warcraft without knowing what a paid add-on is. It's not like essential information to know that it exists, I suppose. Um, and I would say paid add-ons at this point are more so tied to leveling. There's a lot of paid leveling add-ons. Um, and admittedly, it has kind of fallen off ever since I've started making my guides completely free. Not to toot my own horn or anything, but uh, paid leveling add-ons were far more like rampant and well-known back during like the days of WAD and Legion and stuff like that. Um, and I would see way more people actually using them when there was no viable alternative and people just gatekept information and held it to themselves because they wanted people to, you know, pay them money, right? So these days it's not quite as popular. It's more so a thing in classic, right? 
like certain uh the voldemort add-on uh actually tried to compete with me and by everything that i've seen hasn't really been going so well for them because you know it's dog shit right uh but there's no real viable competitor for classic at the moment until when i eventually make my guide for that which will be a while unfortunately i i don't know enough about classic just yet to make leveling guides for it but i'm working on it um but yeah uh definitely they tried to creep into the uh the retail space and don't really think it panned out no um stop guessing right uh because yeah, uh, if you guess it correctly i'm gonna delete your guess uh well so maybe i shouldn't say that because then maybe you'll wait until your comic gets leaked but yeah just uh, maybe i shouldn't even be like talking about it like as a joke right um but it's uh yeah it's um not something i really want to discuss in terms of like having people guess what it is um but yeah it's uh no like yeah i i I even said before, I, I don't want to talk about this, and then I spiraled off into, like, another mini rant about it. So, like, I have only myself to blame for this co conversation continuing, right? Um, so I'll stop myself there. Yeah, I've kind of beaten the subject to death. Can you toot my horn? <laughs> See, when you say it like that, it uh, sounds a little bit different. Uh, let me scroll up. I missed a, a few messages. Um... Uh, they used to say we can't figure out how to armor o Ogre's Naga. Now we have both, or good renders of both. Yeah. I mean, I think the issue with um, Ogre and Naga, right, is certain items wouldn't look well in it. But I mean, you could always pull, like, the Drakthir treatment and just make it so only certain armor slots actually show up. Um, I will at least read the remaining comments people have made while I was talking about it, because I don't want to, like, ignore that, so... Um, it's a gray area with Blizzard TOS, yes. The way that a lot of them skirt it is they'll put their add-on out there for free, which effectively does nothing. It's just an empty shell. Um, and then they will make you pay for the routes or the actual information to make the add-on work. Which, like, at that point, you know, it, it's a paid add-on, right? I don't give a shit what the technicality is. It's just a paid add-on. Um, me. I'll have to pick... Uh, I technically can pick a few talents. I'm going to pick that on the RP flight to South Shore. Uh, just because I want to continue going. Uh, most of these paid add-ons also use Haraldin routes for their updates because he's known for being a speeder. Yeah. Um, I mean, that's one of those things where... I, I can't directly... Like, one of the, the other things is, yes, I... I do highly suspect, right, that a lot of those add-ons will just copy me at this point. Because, at like... At the end of the day, I have the fastest times. I am the only one seriously speedrunning this game at this point, and I put out my guides and information for free. So it is natural that obviously the paid add-ons are going to just rip my information and put in their own add-on, which like, yeah. Um, obviously, that's the thing, though. I have no direct proof of that. I highly suspect it, as I'm sure many other people will as well. It's almost common sense. Uh, but technically speaking... You know, I'm sure what they would all, all argue is, you know, it's just, you happen to come to the information at the same time, right? Um, and I, I also, I don't like to to say that because it, it kind of opens the door for, um, I, I hate when people say that, like, because you did something similar, you know, you're copying each other. So that's why I'll never, I'll never really say that. I do think it is true, though. Um, but, like, for instance, I had... Uh, I had a another speedrunner. Um, I yeah, I had another speedrunner. Uh, back in Shadowlands when I very first started making videos on the subject. Who like I mean, if you were around at that time, you know who it is. Um, I don't really want to dig up old drama, so I'm not going to say their name or comment on it further. But they did this really petty shit and basically accused me of stealing information from them because I mentioned something about um, some, like, routing thing within WAD that apparently they had discussed on their stream, and I was and I was in the stream, right? But it was, like, it was a discussion. And they had mentioned something to me, to me directly, and I was like, oh, yeah, that's, that's a good point. Um, 
we should definitely start using that in the speed runs again. So I mentioned it in one of my guides. It wasn't, this wasn't like some secret tech, right? It was just like a suggestion. And I mentioned it in one of my next guides. This was very early on. I had only been making videos for a month. And then uh, because I included it in a guide, he acted like I had basically stolen proprietary information on him because I mentioned using certain consumables in WAD. Uh, and he demanded that I take down my video or he would copy strike me. And I, and this up until that point, right? He had been, you know, pretending to be nice to me and stuff like that. And then randomly two face complete flip, um, because, you know, I can only imagine because my videos started doing better than his, uh, and basically acted like he owns that information. And I, I straight up told him, go fuck yourself, fucking do it. Fucking copy strike me. If you think you can say you own information on a consumable in World of Warcraft, you fucking scumbag, right? Um, still to this day, absolutely despise the guy. Uh, I think what he did was really shitty, among some other things. Um, but it just weird tribalism bullshit like that of like, you know, I, you know, this is my information, my leveling route. Like, look, um, the, like, I, I want to think that in addition to my route, people also come to my leveling guides because I think it's well put together. Right. If my leveling guide was a complete fucking shit show and a mess and unreadable and stuff like that, then people would naturally stop using it. And then the people who did copy my shit would probably, you know, start becoming more popular because it would be a better presentation of that content, which is why I don't just put effort into the routing. I put effort into making sure the videos and the written guide and stuff like that is good. That matters, too. But the entire idea of thinking that you own information within a game, I think, is stupid. So do I think that a lot of those people don't actually do their own testing and just copy my information? Yeah, I'm sure it happens. But am I going to accuse them of it and get upset about it? No, because at the end of the day, who fucking cares? You know, it's information within a game. You know, they could, if they wanted to, find out about it on their own. Um, the only thing that pisses me off is when they directly copy my shit. Like, um... One, one YouTuber who I'm not afraid to say, um, uh, actually, I forget his name. That's how little I fucking care about it, but it reminded me, um, oh, what's his fucking name? What's the, the guy that tried to start beef with Bellular over the, um, like the, the sub numbers in Shadowlands? Um, God, I don't even, I, I if somebody remembers the guy who like, basically made like some random weird clickbait no not i don't know who akalon is um basically tried to make some clickbait call out video to bellular accusing him of like faking data when he was discussing like the shadowlands things and then bellular like clapped back with that whole video basically calling him Ethan Hart. Ethan Hart. dog shit youtuber fucking scumbag fuck that guy he has genuinely stolen my content like my videos literally taken clips of my, my actual videos. You can see my fucking character and just thrown it in there with zero credit. Like, I had viewers telling me, like, did you know that Ethan Hart is literally just ripping your stuff? And it's like, that really, that pissed me off. That, like, I actually went to that video and left a comment, the one a YouTuber informs me, or a, a, a viewer form, informed me of. Because that one pissed me off because b back then, my channel was much smaller, mind you. And I spent a ton of time doing testing on um on a legion a time walking mythic plus and i did a bunch of dungeons right because obviously when i make videos on something i fucking test it myself i go on to the ptr i do all of that work on my own and i use my own footage for everything right so i had done a shit ton of testing for legion time walking mythic plus i made videos on it and this dude makes like the most garbage clickbait trash fucking thing about legion time walking mythic plus and literally just takes my fucking footage you can even see there is like a few frames in his video where you can see the name of my video because as he was like pausing it to transition he did a shit job with the editing you can see the name of my video and stuff it's like it not only is it just so fucking scummy no no credit no anything but just lazy too to not even like crop out the fucking name of the video and like he tried to hide it right because it was as the screen transition was happening just absolute fucking scumbag and of course like i said i left a comment on his video and i basically said uh, i i put timestamps, and i'm like 
feel free to give credit to the creator, me, of the person who recorded all of that footage and did all of the testing for what you used with no credit, right? Um, and, and I actually, I checked back later. He never responded, never said anything, um, never added credit, right? Uh, but a, it was the top comment on that video for a while because I think a bunch of other people went down and saw it. And fucking bullshit, fucking asshole. Um, but yeah, shit like that. That is like what I really care about. That's when it's like, you know, you want to take information and re-spin it into your own thing, right? Whatever. But when you're literally just directly taking my my footage and my video and my testing that I spent time doing and doing and like reusing it without my fucking permission, fuck that. That is the only time whenever somebody has genuinely stolen my content that I have been really, really fucking pissed off. And um and I I mean honestly the unfortunate reality is it's not just me, right? Like uh Something that I, I'm sure um, some of you have seen, right? Jack's Films right now is on like a fucking crusade against uh, Sniper Wolf, basically calling her out for stealing TikTok shit. Funniest shit ever. Um, I've really enjoyed watching his videos, basically like just dumpstering her React content. But it's unfortunate that like shit like that just happens to a lot of people. And you have a lot of like smaller creators who actually do a lot of work like that. And then you have the bigger channels who put in absolutely no fucking effort and then, um, you know, just r steal everybody's content, give zero credit, and then just fucking profit off it. So, like, I absolutely, I mean, I've, I've always liked Jack's films, like, you know, all the stuff that he does. I've watched his videos, like, on and off, like the, um, uh, what, 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 I forget the name of the series, but the grammar one, where he makes fun of, like, people's stupid comments. Love that. Uh, but I respect the hell out of him for basically doing shit like this and going after content thieves because it's something that is a serious problem that needs to be fucking addressed. And I, I think what he mentioned in his video that is like really, really tilting, and he even said it was the reason why he did that in the first place, is when platforms like YouTube will actively like promote those creators and their content. Um, and then, you know, it basically perpetuates it when, you know, that shit never gets called out and is then encouraged, right? It's just really, really fucked. So, Sniper Wolf was a name you never thought you'd hear on the stream. I mean, I didn't even really know who the fuck she was. The only thing I knew of Sniper Wolf is that she was a COD content creator. Never knew anything else about her. Um, but, you know, I guess, yeah, I, I uh, it, it's relevant, right? Because I was talking about, you know, the, the content stealing stuff and... Um, I've been watching that stuff recently, so it's obviously fresh on my mind, but yeah, it's, it's really fucked up, and I'm glad he's doing something about it. Uh, anyways, I, I'm now even further behind on chat, ever since I spun off into, uh, that, that tangent. Um, let me see. Had a Hillsbrad over old Hillsbrad, uh, you almost got PTSD looking at those turtles in the river. Yes, definitely. It's unfortunate that they share the same, like, general atmosphere. Old Hillsbred Foothills, the dungeon, gives uh, Hillsbred Foothills the zone a bad name, for sure. Uh, come on, come on. Can I get the cast off? Nice. And I just need to plant this stuff. Um, and I should say, if you haven't watched the um, Jax Films video on Sniper Wolf already, definitely do so, because not only is, like, you know, it, it he does a good job of make it en making it entertaining, right? Like, I enjoy watching his videos in general, but it's, like, it's an entertaining video on a subject that is actually pretty serious, which is, you know, people stealing content, right? So it, it is actually, I would say, somewhat important to watch, or at least interesting to watch, I think. Uh, Hunter's Avoidance, I guess. Uh, let me just quickly spin my talents, because I keep forgetting to do this. Uh, Frenzied Strikes, definitely. Flanking Strikes. Probably Lunge, and then, yeah, two points in the Tactical Advantage. Sure. Um, okay. I'll, I'll read the stuff, because I, I don't want to, like, completely separate the topics, right? But... Um, since, like, we're on this subject, I'll, I'll catch up on chat later, and I will read the, like, recent stuff commenting on this right now, just because it's, you know, relevant at the immediate moments. Also, um, I forget who it was, but somebody in my Discord was saying the other day that they were leveling Survival Hunter, and they were struggling with it, and it felt slow, and, like, 
I still don't understand. <laughs> I don't understand how you could level survival and think it feels slow. Like, it doesn't have amazing sustain, but, like, you have a pet tank which soaks up, like, a shit ton of damage for you. And Survival Hunter has really good bursts with Wildfire Bomb and Butchery. Like, Survival Hunter is really good for leveling. So I, I am still very puzzled at, uh, at how they struggled to level Survival. Uh, is there a chest here? There's no chest there. I'll at least check for a rare mob. Uh, you remember that saga? Yeah, I brought up the Ease and Heart stuff, like, before, because this was... This was like two years ago, I think, when all that stuff happened. So obviously, if you've been here for a while, which I know, Alex, you have, right? Um, I'm sure many people will remember it. But, you know, I want to keep mentioning it because it was one of the scummiest things I've ever had happen to me at the hands of like another content creator, right? So it's, uh, yeah, uh, really unfortunate. You actually stopped watching Ezen's videos about the meta and blue post because he literally adds nothing to the news. Um, uh, he just reads info. Yeah. I mean, there's, like, that's the thing. I don't really, uh, obviously, I kind of give a shit about people who do that, right? I don't think it's good. I don't really think, like you said, it doesn't add anything. And there are a lot of channels that do that. It's one of the reasons why you'll never see me making generic blue post videos. Like, the closest that I'll come to making a blue post video is my video going over the leveling changes in 10.1.5, which was four minutes long, and I... Basically, I tested all of the leveling changes that were coming out, and I included testing footage and additional information that I had found while testing it alongside, you know, the relevant parts of the blue post. That is, like, the most I will ever do in terms of, like, blue post reading. But generally speaking, you know, I don't understand why people need a video to, like, tell them what is happening. Like, Wowhead, you know, for better or for worse, I know there's some issues with Wowhead. Um, I've complained about certain things about it, but for the most part, it does a good job of, you know, summarizing everything in articles and whatnot. And I keep up to date with like Wowhead news. So maybe not everybody wants to check Wowhead religiously, but um, I've never like needed another uh, like channel to help me understand that stuff. Um, but yeah, I, I personally never understood it in the first place, like I said, but he's in heart. The reason I took particular issue with him, outside of the fact that he, um, you know, literally stole my content, as I said, um, is the fact that he he does, like, the random... It, like, he did it, obviously, with Bellular, where he just randomly s says, like, extremely dumb, misinformed things and tries to, like, make a public nuisance of himself to try and start drama with other, like, YouTubers, like Bellular, right? Like, the whole Bellular thing was obviously just a way to, like, clout farm for him. Like, the little fucking gremlin wanted to just, like, attack a larger channel and make up some bullshit so that it would get more attention on his channel. Because the unfortunate reality of a lot of stuff is, you know, no publicity is bad publicity, right? Like, you know, if you're getting attention from Bellular, I'm sure it unfortunately probably helped him, even though he made a complete fucking ass of himself, right? So that is the main reason why I've, I, even before he did that, um, to me, right? I've always particularly disliked his channel, which almost made it, like, fucking poetic that one of my least favorite World of Warcraft YouTubers fucking stole content for me. Um, so now I have an even more justified reason to hate him and publicly call him out for being a fucking little fucking shit stain. So, yeah. Um, absolutely hate that guy. Um, but that is the only person who I will call out, because like I said, there have been some YouTubers in the past who... Like, like I said, the whole thing about that person accusing me of, like, stealing from them. It was shitty what he did, but, um, and he technically never really apologized for it, uh, but he kind of, like, he backed off and he at least said he probably should have handled it better, and then he basically gave me some, like, bullshit thing about, you know, like, um, let's just, like, not speak to each other ever again, right? And I'm like, okay, no problem with that, uh... But uh, also, I need to equip my level 41 stuff. But, like, I don't really feel like calling him out because it's, like, bygones, you know, let bygones be bygones. And as far as I know, that's an isolated incident. For better or for worse, he generally has a, a fairly good, this other person specifically, not Ezen Hart, has a fairly good reputation within the WoW community because I think he tries to, um, at least in public, act non-problematic, even if that maybe necessarily isn't necessarily the way he uh, acts behind the scenes. Right, so I don't really give enough of a shit to like call him out. Um, 
But Ethan Hart, who has on multiple occasions um, done really dumb bullshit things, yeah, fuck that guy. I don't care. I'll publicly call him out. Uh... Yeah, so I think this is the reason why I never bothered fighting Yetimus in a cave. Uh, back when I initially started doing speedruns on Hunter and Druid. Like, honestly, that was faster than having to kite Yetimus into the cave and do, like, you know, that whole setup. If you can kill him out in the world and just negate the knockback, you know, fucking piss easy, right? Uh, am I missing any consumables? I need to use Bear Tartar. What else? Uh, I have my scrolls active. Uh, ah! My experience potion has fallen off. There we go. Uh, what else? I think that's it for now. Uh, I could technically put Abyssal Healing Potion on my bars, but Abyssal Healing Potion was literally only there for Yetimus, and I didn't even need it. Um, let me scroll up a little bit. Um, sad that I'm in a run. Would love to see that stolen content. Um, I mean, I, I'm not going to dive back. Like, I, I suppose I mentioned the type of video it is. If you want to look it up and find it, you probably could find it, right? Um, but yeah, I, I'm not even going to post it or whatever. Just look for it. Like I said, if you want to find it, you can probably look it up. Just... It was a Legion time walking video. Um, and uh, if you want to find like the footage in question, my comment might still be there. I don't know if he deleted it. I stopped checking after a while. Um, so maybe my comment's still there from two years ago. Uh, but it was a yeah Legion time walking mythic plus one. And I was playing a warrior named Anji. So A-N-N-J-I. And you can see that character in the footage. I was doing Court of Stars, I believe was the footage that he took. Um, but yeah, I'm sure you can find it if you look. Asmongold immediately comes to mind when it comes to reactors that have profited huge off reacting. Yeah, so obviously that's that's like a touchy subject, right? Um, I obviously don't like, I've kind of made my thoughts on this known, right? I don't like that Asmongold does react shit. I don't like react shit in general. And I've never, never loved Asmongold's videos. I will say, small credit to Asmongold's. In many cases, he at least provides some insight to the video. Now, I don't think that's necessarily universally the case. Um, I haven't watched enough of his content to know, but I think whenever Asmongold is watching a generic video about, like, you know, non-World of Warcraft or MMO or whatever related stuff, um, I can't imagine that, you know, all of the shit that I've seen pop up in, like, you know, my recommended of Asmongold reacts to XYZ. There's no fucking way that he has insightful, actual commentary to add to all this stuff. At a certain point, yeah, it is scummy react shit. Um, but I have seen enough examples of Asmongold actually contributing at least some commentary and relevant insight uh, into some of, like, the MMO-specific things that he's reacted to that, like, it's, it's better. Um... It's still not good, right? And I know a, a bunch of people have, rightfully so, called him out for doing React content many times in the past. Um, and, you know, his defense is always that, effectively. That, oh, well, I always, like, actually try to add stuff to it. And it's like, he's not 100% wrong, but at the same time, it, it is still not good, right? And, of course, one thing, obviously, you know... Credit to Asmogold where it's due. He credits the creators in every single situation that I've seen, which it's sad that we need to say that, that like, hey, at least he credits the creators. That should be a baseline. But as we now know with, you know, mentioning Sniper Wolf and stuff, obviously that is not a baseline. Uh, it is unfortunately not the case. So, you know, the fact that at least from everything that I can see, he always credits the creators and in many cases, like actually tries to, like promote their stuff beyond just linking their original video um like there's been once or twice where i'll see him reacting to something mmo related and he'll talk about like oh yeah there's this channel that does like xyz thing that's really cool i like that make sure to check them out if you like this type of stuff so he does like a bit more above and beyond than just including the source which is why like i've said not like a big asmongold fan and definitely don't like the react stuff in general but if we're like saying which one is worse he at least is probably as good as react content as if, 
is ever going to get because everything else is a bit shitty. Um, a lot of big channels just steer towards React content, low effort for high reward. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Um, that tweet from YouTube, I wonder where Sniper Wolf gets all those videos to react from her fans. Yeah, that one. Oh, man. <laughs> that was definitely really questionable on YouTube's part. Uh, fucking hilarious, though. Like, the fact that they would actually tweet that. Jesus, fuck. Um, yeah. Uh, different guy than Taliesin. Yeah, I... Honestly, I don't really know much at all about Taliesin. I have never watched a single one of Taliesin's videos. I haven't, I haven't heard anything bad about him, but I also haven't heard anything interesting about him. As far as I know, Taliesin is just a guy who is friends with people at Wowhead, and he makes. I, I, I mean, there, there is a reason I have never seen any of his videos. I have never seen anything that they have made. Uh, Taliesin, what's the other Evidel? I don't know how to, if I'm pronouncing that right. I have never seen a single one of their videos that has actually made me go, wow, that seems interesting. It it seems like the most bare bones surface level World of Warcraft coverage you can get, which, you know, maybe I shouldn't say that because I, like I said, never watched it, um, but I've never been interested in watching it. But at the same time, I have nothing bad to say about them per se, because I've never seen their videos. So I know nothing about Taliesin. Um, can't really comment on that. Uh, Mr. GM, I will say, though, I, I haven't really watched many of Mr. GM's videos, but one thing I, can, I do know about Mr. GM that I will at least say I respect his content is I know he actually does PTR testing. So I haven't watched his videos, but I have seen multiple instances of, like, Mr. GM's posts on Twitter where he will, like, actually share things that he found on the PTR. Little, like, thing, stuff that, like, I don't really test, right? You know, casual... Um, casual, like, transmog stuff or whatever, um, which, you know, like I said, never really the type of thing that I spend time testing on the PTR, but I have seen some tweets from him where he talks about something he found on the PTR, and I've actually gone, like, huh, that's interesting, like, I didn't hear about it before him, so I don't really know anything about his videos per se, but I can at least say I know for a fact that he actually does his own testing, and that is rare, a lot of people don't do that, so you know what, like, however good his content is i don't know he at least tests his own shit and for that i respect him um but that is all i can really say about mr gm uh let's see what else oh, this one i know doesn't sell for too much uh oh my pet is taking the scenic route down oh there we go I will have to be careful about these. Um, now I need to actually uh, heal my pet. Because these are elites actually really dumpster hunter pets. But as long as I use mend pet properly, I should be fine. Uh, what else can I put a point into? Um, I should... I want to put two points into Viper's Venom. And then I'll probably put one point into Sweeping Spear. So Viper's Venom... Uh, I have two points to spend here. Uh, I'm actually going to put two points into Wilderness Medicine just to buff Mend Pet. I actually think that's probably better. Um, let's see. Actually, you know what? I'll read... I'll catch up and chat a little bit after I finish killing these rares because these guys are actually not the easiest in the world. This one's pretty easy because the stun only goes in your pet, so, like, you don't really need to worry about the rest of the damage. But this next one, I at least need to watch for Mend Pet. Make sure I'm using that when needed. Alright. Does this affect my pet? Oh, yeah. Survival of the Fittest does affect your pet. I'm just going to pop that so my pet takes 20% less damage. Probably good. But yeah, honestly, like, whenever people say Hunter is not good for leveling, Hunter is, like, by far the best elite killer class in the entire game because of pet tanking. Like, I guess you could say Warlocks can maybe do it kind of, but Warlocks cannot reliably heal their pet as well as Mend Pet. You just press Mend Pet and your pet just won't die. It outheals pretty much any incoming damage. Um, so... 
Yeah, I think hunters, the fact that they are like amazing elite killers, it's obviously not as important for the route these days, but it is still a significant advantage to hunters that automatically makes them very, very good. Um, not like S tier, but like, yeah, solid. Uh, okay, so at this point, now I can head to Gorgrond. And I will get my remaining 13 levels within Gorgrond. Uh, it's kind of an interesting topic there. When you stop playing WoW, the only time you got WoW updates was when a new YouTube video came across your feed with WoW news. That's at least one inst- Okay, that's- yeah, that's a fair point. Can see someone watching a patch notes vid, less for the notes, but for that specific creator's thoughts. Well, yeah, but th that's the point, right? If there is a specific creator who has insight on that, right? Like, that's the reason why whenever there is a leveling patch, I will usually cover it, because I know people want to see my thoughts on leveling changes. Um, but- if there are, like, generic Mythic Plus changes, well, I'm not, like, a big Mythic Plus content creator, so, you know, why would I make, like, a, a video about Mythic Plus changes? Where You'll see that, right? Go to a lot of, like, generic WoW YouTubers, and you'll see they'll put out a million videos of, like, huge Mythic Plus changes, and it's like, but who cares, right? You're just reading the patch notes, like... Yeah, obviously, if somebody's going to go to somewhere for, like, the changes, they'll go to a creator. So I'm not knocking that, right? Because, like I said, I've done that. But also, when I did that video, I included actual testing that I did on the PTR and actual insight into how those changes will impact the leveling route. So not knocking that aspect at all. But I, I do absolutely not understand the people who will watch the videos of someone just reading the blue post to them. Because at that point, just fucking read it yourself, right? There's no insight there. Uh, sorry if you already said it, but do you think M Plus in retail is the worst we've ever seen it? Um, it depends on your perspective on that. Uh, no, but I understand why people might think it is. Uh, for me personally, I also keep in mind I play a tank, right? And I also happen to play one of the two tanks that's actually viable for M Plus, even though I am not actively pushing M+. plus so i'm throwing that out there as a disclaimer that i am not personally upset about like the comp stuff though i at least do recognize that is the current comp situation is unhealthy for the game though it does not personally impact me uh i also just don't really care that much about mythic plus at the moment but at the same time it's like if we're asking do i think mythic plus is the worst it's ever been i think i would have to ask what you mean by that because do I think Mythic Plus in general is the worst it's ever been? No, not even close. Um, definitely not even close. Do I think N, like top end M plus balance is the worst it's ever been? Maybe. I don't really know enough to say for sure, but there have also been some seasons where I'm kind of biased, uh, where basically if I didn't play Prot Warrior, I just couldn't get into fucking groups, right? Like for most of BFA, I would literally get laughed at and told, go play Prot Warrior. Like, people would genuinely, like, I would apply to their group, and they would just message me, like, lol, not Prot Warrior, something like that. And it just tilted the hell out of me, because, like, even though I wasn't playing the meta spec, I still knew how to fucking tank the dungeon. And this wasn't, like, high-end keys. It was, like, fucking plus 15s at the time, which was, I guess, the equivalent of plus 20s now. Um where I'm just trying to fucking fill my vault, and I'm getting, like, declined, despite being an extremely high IO Vengeance DH at the time, um, I still was getting declined because, um, I'm not Prot Warrior, right? And that really fucking tilted me. So, I, I think that, you know, <laughs> it's nothing new having metas where, you know, one spec dominates. I think Aug Evoker is honestly the bigger issue right now, so it's more that, like, the classes that benefit from Aug Evoker are not melee, really, or they are, like, very specific specs, which is why you run that very specific comp. And in that sense, I guess it is unhealthy. Um, but at the end of the day, also, I'm going to be honest, statistically speaking, it probably doesn't impact you. So I, I don't know specifically, uh, Reese, uh, what your level of Mythic Plus progression is. Maybe you are, like, pushing for a title or something like that. Um, but statistically speaking, the amount of people that I've seen complaining about augmentation evokers and stuff, it doesn't impact them. 
a lot of people will see what the top players are running and think, wow, I can't do my plus 20 for the week if I don't have an Aug Evoker. But like, I've done multiple plus 20s in the past week or two without an Aug Evoker, and it went perfectly fine, right? So I think a lot of people are maybe overreacting about something that really only impacts the top title pushers uh, when really general game balance is actually pretty fucking solid. There are specs before that you just genuinely couldn't bring to Mythic Plus because they were so fucking undertuned, and nowadays that's not really the case. So, to I guess to give a final answer to your question, do I think Mythic Plus is the worst that it's ever been? No, not by a long shot. Um, it, there's obviously a lot of bad elements to it, and I think Blizzard needs to really take a look at what the fuck they want to do with Augmentation Evoker because it's been a little bit of a shit show ever since it came out. Uh, but I, it could be a lot worse, and it has been a lot worse. And quite frankly, I think what's important is, is it fun? And well, I know a lot of healers have been saying that they really don't like the design of the current Myth Plus season. Can't speak to that. Don't play a healer. Um, personally, I have been enjoying the season. Ooh, nice two and one kill. I've been enjoying the season a whole hell of a lot more than I have many Mythic Plus seasons in the past. So... I uh, I really am not going to sit here and complain about, like, you know, it's not perfect, right? I I think Blizzard has done a better job. I hated Season 1 quite a lot, uh, but I've done a decent amount of keys so far, and yeah. I don't know. I, that's a very thorough answer. Nice, I got four quest items in Affliction Ridge. That's above average. Uh, hopefully that was a, a thorough answer to your question, at least my thoughts on that. Uh, some of the people who made the content get a react from Asmin have even come out and saying that Asmin reacted to the video made it very beneficial. Yeah, for sure. Because like I said, Asmin does go above and beyond to like actually, you know, help promote their channel. Which, like I said, I don't love react content in general, but I can at least acknowledge that the way Asmin Gold does it is probably the best way to do it. Yeah. Um, let's see. Uh, let me scroll up. My opinion with Asmin Gold's... Uh, my opinion with Asmogold, he definitely increases viewership for a good amount of content creators. Uh, but the bigger thing is, if you ask him not to react to your videos, he will not react. See, that's also good. Yeah. Um, I didn't know about that, right? I, that That's one of those things where it's depressing that we need to say that that's a good thing. But, like, I agree it is a good thing because the unfortunate reality is a lot of people won't do that. But, like, that's a, in that case, that's good on Asmogold, you know, for being willing to respect creators' wishes and that. Uh, because while I would I would hope that that would be something common human decency, right? Uh, the unfortunate reality, as we all know, is that is not the case for everybody. So that's that's nice to hear, at least. Uh, sometimes you're asking yourself if it's just better to go to the scummy route for short-term gains, but the road to paradise is a narrow one. Um, should have said... I, I'm not sure I understand that particular message. Um, I, I mean, I, I know, like, the general idea, I maybe I missed the context on what it was. Like, obviously, I think, like, I, I even said that before, if you're s saying more so, like, it can be tempting to basically, like, you know, do scummy stuff, stuff if it makes you a lot of money, I agree. Yeah. You know, it's definitely not easy to avoid, you know, falling into the temptation of, you know, doing shitty things like stealing people's content and whatever and making a quick buck, but, you know... That's why some of us have, you know, actually like a code of ethics or basic morality that we try to follow. Uh, also, I can't kill the target, so I hope my pet does a good job because I can't do anything. I think it's got this. All right, serpent, you're doing a good job. There we go. Ring the gong one more time. Uh... Uh, perhaps too much to ask, but at some point, could I level a core race up to 60? I mean, I have, but not really. Like, I I guess it, it is almost a little bit... I know I know you just want to see other races. It is a little bit too much to ask because it honestly adds nothing, right? The only thing it adds is Exile's Reach. And, like, I know maybe some people want to see me level a Blood Elf, but I guess to say yes, it is a little bit too much to ask because I've done it before. So it's not like I've never done a video... But allied races are nice because I'm mostly testing the chromie time route. And um, being able to save 30 minutes for every single run I do adds up a lot. Uh, so yeah, I don't really have any plans to do a base game race, right? 
Um, if you want to see that, I guess I'll be doing classic speedruns, right? So you can watch some of the classic races. Um, but yeah, no, I'm pretty set on sticking with allied races for most of the testing runs. Uh, Arcane is pretty up there if you have CDs up. Uh, I wish I knew what that was in context to. Can't imagine any core race would differ much from normal alliance, allied race routing. Yeah, exactly. That that's the point, right? Like if the if the core races were different fundamentally, then yeah, I would test them. But they're not. You just do Exiles Reach, and then it is exactly the same. So if it was different, then believe me, I'd be testing them. Um, but there really isn't much to test within Exiles Reach. It's the same thing. It's just I have to do Exiles Reach before starting the actual run. Uh, so yeah, I I don't really want to do that. Um, so far, yeah. I mean, I, I have done it in the past, right? But it's, yeah, I think I've, I've answered that sufficiently, so I won't, like, continue repeating it. But since you mentioned it again, it's, yeah, it's just not something I'm going to do, right? Um, if I, obviously, if I do a full 1 to 70 speed run in the future, which I might do, then maybe, but, yeah. I, I don't really want to, particularly. Exile's Reach is just a fucking... Not only is it linear and there's really not much interesting to it, but it is a fucking pain in the dick to do for speedruns because you can't mail stuff over. So I have to start the run and then like midway through, mail everything over. I, I just fucking hate it. So I don't do Exile's Reach. I just play Allied Races. Because it's the exact same and it is way easier for me to do... Uh, because it's, like, less of a headache. So that's why I do it. Um, so yeah. I, I will say, I generally speaking try to, you know, like, I obviously I have the polls to let people pick um, the classes and specs I play. Uh, sometimes I'll even put up a poll for what race I'll play. If it's something where, uh, I forgot to refresh my XP pot, but who fucking cares. Um, if it's, uh, if it's, like, something where I've already decided that I'm gonna play a particular class or spec, I'll let people maybe vote on the race or something like that, because I know some people like to see different allied races. Um, but that that is one thing where I will say, unfortunately, I am not really willing to do that. Just because of, you know, it's not really worth my time to test. Uh, just seems unhealthy to me for keys. Even now, the plus 20 weekly bracket is asking for Shadow Priest and Aug Evoker. Uh, I haven't run into that. I, I mean, I would imagine as a DPS, it's obviously going to be harder because spots are more competitive. But the reality is, as a DPS, right, like, I, I mean, it's like I said before, where I couldn't get into groups as a prot warrior, but e it's even worse for DPS. There are so many of you, right? If you want to get into a group, even if you are playing a meta spec, unless you are like a super geared Shadow Priest or Aug Evoker, yeah, you're going to have a hard time getting into a group. And that has kind of always been the case. It's maybe a little bit exacerbated now because it's very clear how good Augavoker and Shadow Priest are. But let's be honest, it's not like this is the first time ever in WoW's history where there are people out there gatekeeping meta specs and saying if you don't have like this particular spec that's really overpowered, don't apply to my group, right? That happens all the time, even if they aren't really that good. Uh, it's just that's WoW, right? That's how Mythic Plus has kind of always been with the way that... uh people play it so yeah i don't know i wouldn't say this is anything particularly new it's you know maybe just a little bit worse now than it was before uh, let me throw spectral power on there throw this oh we passed the quest turn in uh, and then drums of deathly ferocity and then I need to clean out my bags real quick. Yep. Um. Let's see. Should probably be enough space. I don't want to like sit here and clean out everything in my bags. Uh, but that should be enough for sure. Oh, now that I'm 51, that was fast. Now I can use my consumables.
Uh, some weeks you don't even want to log on to your 420s with the amount of time it takes. Yeah, I could feel that. It's definitely difficult if you don't have like friends or guildies to run with. Thanks for your views on it. No problem. It's more that the trickle down of the high end M plus scene leads to people doing stupid stuff, such as believing that meta comps are the only comps. Yeah, but like, I, you're not wrong, but. You know, the question was, Mythic is Mythic Plus worse now than it has ever been? And in that case, no. Because that is something that has always happened, even before Aug Evokers. Is it dumb? Yeah, it's absolutely stupid. I agree with that. That, you know, people base their plus 20 comps off, like, you know, MDI or, like, plus 26 shit. Obviously, that's stupid. Completely agree. Um, but my entire point was more so, that has always happened. Uh, and that is nothing new to just Aug Evoker. Um, also, I got such good RNG in the um, original Affliction Ridge setup. I think the only thing I need is Orc Thorn from uh, the mobs back there. So. Oh, nice. We got Elemental Crystal. That was really fast. Okay. So far, this is going well. So, I'm going to head over here to this orc. Oh, my harpoon just didn't work. Okay, that orc has no loot. Uh, that guy didn't drop it. Where's some more orcs? Oh, come on. Three seconds. Ah, oh, I missed it. Ah, oh, fuck. Man, why? I hate harpoon. Harpoon is like one of the dumbest mobility things in this game. Half the time, it just doesn't fucking work. Like, I would have been able to kill that orc if it wasn't for Harpoon just bugging out twice. Where it just randomly had line of sight issues over a tiny hill. Uh, I used it earlier and it just didn't move me at all. It's just really fucking annoying. I remember um, Grappling Hook when I played Rogue was also really janky. And just half the time, it wouldn't actually work. And that was just really, really, really frustrating. Um, uh, you've heard some of the concerns with M+, plus is that the mindset of the upper keys... Oh, yes, yeah, same thing. Yeah, I, I mean, it's definitely a concern. It's just I don't really think it's any worse now than it has always been historically. Went to the local farmer's market this morning with your wife and got such a huge haul of fresh-picked harvested food... Also got a huge jar of local raw honey. Interesting. That sounds pretty fun. Uh, oh, there's somebody else here. Uh, oh no, my pet is inting. My pet is inting. Oh no. Fuck. I don't want to pull that mob. Oh, come on, pet. Okay, we're good, we're good. I thought he was going to aggro that big elite guy, and I don't want to fucking fight that mob. That would be a massive time loss. Uh, let's see. Uh, another giga benefit of leveling a hunter or any other class of the combat reset is mounting. Uh, what should we call it? Is mounting quicker and not getting that stuck in combat bug? Yeah, for sure. Yeah, feign death is really, really nice for that reason. I completely agree. Uh, let me spend my talent points. I want one point there, one point there. Wildfire Infusion. Um, natural Mending. Uh, in Eyesight, probably, so I can take Death Chakra. That fucking bomb only hit the one guy because he charged to me immediately upon getting into combat. That's troll. Let me... So I need to heal my pet because it's taking a lot of damage right now. I also like how the Serpent Stink Bomb... Or ser serpent Sting Bomb uh, applies... Uh, whatchamacallit? Serpent Sting to the mobs now in addition to the original effect because it's possible to get that without actually having Serpent Sting talented at lower levels, so 
the fact that you still get a benefit from that bomb, even though you don't have Serpent Sting regularly, is pretty nice. I actually quite like that. I think it's a neat little change. Uh... This guy... And... I love Wildfire Infusion, by the way. Fucking banger talent. Really fun. Oh, wait, shit. Where did this guy come from? Huh. Uh, let's see. Easily your favorite part about Hunters and Mages. Uh, you hate that stuck in combat bug. Sadly, does it redeem rogues? Yeah. Unfortunately, yeah. Rogues can vanish, but they are still... Um, unfortunately, uh, poorly equipped in other areas. Someone pitched the idea that you should have an option to have core races start at level 10. Yes, I completely agree with that. I would love for core races to be able to start at level 10. Um, and, uh, Matthew Roundbranch, thank you for being understanding on that. I know there are a lot of people who, like, would say... Ah, I really want to see a core race leveling run, and then when I explain why I don't want to do that, they'd be like, you know, pissy about it, and be like, ah, you should just do it anyway. I appreciate you understanding. That is, unfortunately, rare to find sometimes. Um, and, like, for the record, just to say again, I understand why you want to see it, and, like, I get it. It's just, yeah, it, it is a little bit, unfortunately, too much of a uh, additional time investment. And it's honestly, it's less of the amount of time that it actually takes. It is mostly... Mostly because of the fact that, you know, you can't actually get anything set up in Exile's Reach at level 1, so it's just really boring and frustrating for me to do, personally. Um, like, if I had to do Exile's Reach every single one of these times I did a speedrun, I would fucking hate doing this. Uh, it's just not fun for me at all. Uh, gatekeeping seems to be a core part of WoW that cannot be removed. Yeah, exactly. Mechanome when? Fucking never. Um, you guys can keep asking for Mechanome all you want. It's never gonna happen. I don't care now that Blizzard has given me Mechanome finally against my consent. I have it on my unlocked race list. I'm still never gonna play it. Fuck Mechanomes. Uh, Exile's Reach seems like it would be a good candidate for an optimized speedrun of just that. I mean, there are people who do that. But it's not fun. Like, Exile's Reach, it's the type of thing where... If it was actually fun to play through, I understand what you're saying about it's a good candidate for, like... You know, an optimized, like, little tiny speedrun of just that. And that's a reason why there are people who do that. Like, Azero is somebody who um, is, like, regularly in my stream. I don't know if he's here right now. But a lot of times he'll pop into my stream and he's, like... He talks to my Discord sometimes. And he does a lot of... Um, Exiles Reach speedruns. And he's always asked me if I'm going to do Exiles Reach speedruns, and I always say no, because I don't think it's fun. <laughs> um, it's like, it, it's cool that some people enjoy doing that, but I just hate Exiles Reach just in general. And I don't know. The only thing I've ever maybe considered doing speedruns of is the Demon Hunter starting zone. Because the Demon Hunter starting zone, you know, it's actually enjoyable to play through. You have fun stuff, you know, like that fell crystal that gives you infinite fell rushes and whatnot, and the quests in general are, like, much better in terms of design and stuff. But Exile's Reach, it's like, it's not fun. Like, I, it, it, you're basically speed running a tutorial, right? And that's just not enjoyable to me. Because there's so many mechanics built into Exile's Reach that are meant to be, like, handholdy and boring. And it's intentionally like that to try and help new players, but that just means it ends up being really frustrating and annoying for um, veteran players. And I think Blizzard goes a little bit too far, right? It's one thing to, you know, make the game handholdy, but the dumbest thing that Blizzard does in Exiles Reach is they literally fucking restrict features like edit mode. Like, whatever developer thought that restricting edit mode within Exiles Reach was a good idea is fucking brain dead and needs to be fired. It's stupid. Imagine being told you can't customize your UI until you hit level 10. Like, what the fuck? And I know that there's a command that you can run to get it to work, but, like, you shouldn't have to fucking do that. It's stupid. Are Again? What the fuck is going on with World of Warcraft today, dude? That's the second crash in one stream. I haven't even... I, 
I haven't had a crash in WoW in like over a week. And now I've had two and three. What the hell is going on with this game right now, dude? Jesus fucking Christ. Oh. Yeah, um, I don't like Exile's Reach. I'll end it there. Uh, who would have guessed that a buff class is either undertuned or giga OP? Exactly. I mean, that was the complaint that literally everyone raised when Augmentation Evoker was, um, when, you know, people saw that it was going to be a thing, right? Um, it, like, everybody saw this coming, right? It, it's just now it ended up being overtuned, so we have the issue of everybody needs to run it. Literally, that's, that's what everybody was saying beforehand, yeah. It's not even a WoW thing. Meta optimal session is a modern gaming thing in general. Impossible to play any sort of multiplayer game without running into it. You only miss it in games where the difficulty is so low that things can be face rolled uh, to begin with. Um. Mm, I mean, yes, you're correct for the record. Um, but I would say it is. I would say it's a bit of a bigger issue in games like World of Warcraft cooperative games, right? That's where it starts to get annoying when people do, like, the meta obsession thing. I guess you could argue that, like, if somebody is trying to push their M plus score... Also, I forgot to use my Champion's Honor ability, but I can just do it here, so it's not a big deal. Uh, if somebody is trying to push their Mythic plus score, right, you could argue that it hurts them to invite, like, subpar specs because they're competing against the other players on the leaderboard. But at the end of the day, if you're just going for, like, key completion... You can get keys done with, like, any sort of specs. It doesn't really matter. I see- I didn't get the fucking Ogron quest item? Dude, what the fuck? Um, well, that sucks. Uh, now I need to go back here and just kill random Ogron until I get this fucking stupid item. Because if I don't get the Ogron horn? Dude, are you kidding me? What is happening right now? I can't remember the last time I haven't gotten this particular item, because there's so many Ogron, and you only kill them. Oh my god, what the hell? Please, Blizzard. Don't. I mean, I, I've got an above-average RNG, but it would be a little bit unfortunate if my above-average RNG was, um... What the fuck? No Ogron horn? How many did I kill? Dude, what in the world? That was... Okay, well... I mean, we had good RNG with the quest items earlier, but that was one of the unluckiest bits of uh, Champion's Honor RNG I've seen in a very, very long time. I can't remember the last time I've done a run where I did not get that item. It is extremely unlikely. I killed how many of them? It's like a 10-15% drop chance? That is... That is really, 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 really bad. Well, that sucks. Um, oh, well. It doesn't really matter that much. Just like a little bit kind of tilting. Um, that like... Of, of all the items to not get... I'm double checking. Like, did I just not... Did I get it earlier? And I'm like, no. I... I I'm... Uh, that is... Wow. Yeah, that actually just happened. Okay. Uh, but yeah, uh, entire thing I was saying, um, it's more understandable people trying to play the meta in multiplayer games where their success, like, you know, hinges upon other people not, like, hard trolling. Like, for what it's worth, in games like, you know, League of Legends or MOBAs and stuff like that, where it is a competitive multiplayer game, for better or for worse, it makes sense for people to... Oh, it's an alliance player. Um, they are in the Shredder. Yeah, I, I want to be careful, because if they wanted to, that person in the Shredder could drop over here and flamethrower me in the face. And that flamethrower actually kind of hurts, and it looks like they're level 54, so they're the same level as I am. Unless maybe the Shredder is affected by world mob scaling. I'm not entirely sure, but it could be possible that, that their Shredder is leveled up to, uh, whatever I'm at. But, uh, they are... Well, they went into Stealth. 
So, yeah. um, it's a rogue at the very least, which uh, normally I wouldn't be scared of. But if there's any class that could sneak up on me and gank me without me realizing, it's probably going to be a rogue. Um, we'll see. I mean, I I doubt that that would actually happen, but now I'm actually kind of concerned. So I'm gonna at least try to pay attention a little bit. Okay, and I need a few more of the Gron. Unfortunately, this guy took all the easy ones, so... Hmm. Bit of an awkward position that I find myself in right now. Uh, also, I think, yeah, I have one or two more talent points. Fury of the Eagle is a very big pickup. Death Chakram, very big pickup. Um, uh, oh, I also still need to break two more eggs. Where I can get this boulder breaker. And that one is bugged. Oh, no, it's not. It's... Wait, is it fixed? They finally fixed this Ogron? Oh, wow. This particular Ogron used to be always permanently evade bugs. I guess they finally fixed him at some point. That's uh, good to know. I'm trying to Fury of the Eagle, but they're like loosely spread. It's a bit of an awkward position to be in. Now I just need two more eggs. And, alright. Um. Me. One more egg. Oh my god. This is the longest that has ever taken me to do the Valley of Destruction bonus objective just because of that rogue. Uh, unfortunate. Um, let me find where I was at in chat. You were going to say the same thing. You can't name any multiplayer game that has the same level of severity with WoW as gatekeeping. Um, I don't play League of Legends, but I've heard it does have a similar level of gatekeeping, so I'd probably say that. Uh, but yeah, I don't know. I mean, like, for instance, when I used to play Heroes of the Storm, right, which was the only MOBA I ever really got into, um, there was a while where I really liked playing Chen Storm Stout and Heroes of the Storm, and Chen Storm Stout was honestly pretty fucking trash, but I loved his playstyle. It was really, really, really fun. And, I mean, honestly, I think I was very good at Chen, Stor Chen Storm Stout, like, you would watch people play it and just absolutely suck ass, but, like, I knew how to do all of the combos with him, and I would actually perform really well. But there were times where I would be, like, picking Chen Stormstout in a ranked game, and people would be like, oh, no! And, like, half the time, I basically felt, like, forced to play Diablo, because Diablo was when I played back then, it was the meta tank, and it was like, you needed to play Diablo, because that's, like, the only comp that people, like, really wanted to run. It was like you would play Diablo for like you could suplex people and throw them into your back line and you would just play around that. So I kind of felt pigeonholed into only playing that because people would bitch and moan if I ever tried to play Chen. And, you know, they weren't entirely wrong. That's the thing. I liked playing Chen. I was good at playing Chen, but he didn't really work with the meta and he was kind of under -tuned. You had to like work really hard to actually make him viable. So, I mean, it, it definitely happens. And I don't necessarily fault people for it. Oh, somebody took the treasure right out from under me. Uh, I also figure I'll queue for one more TBC dungeon. On the off chance I get uh, Underbog, I still have the Sanguine Hibiscus in my bag that I haven't actually gotten to use. And you know, they, it is that particular dungeon would be pretty good. Mechanome plus mirror image is funny. Yeah, I'm sure. I'm sure it does look funny, because mechanomes in general look fucking ridiculous. And I have no interest in playing one. Uh, let's see. It's not only Harpoon, Grapple Hook from Outlaw. Yeah, there you go. Uh, unless you consider rank lockouts not letting you queue with certain bracket gatekeeping. Yeah, that, I wouldn't really consider that. Uh... Have I seen the new Final Fantasy expansion announcement? I did talk about that earlier in the stream. I have seen it. Um, I think it looks cool. I don't really have any major thoughts. The only thing I mentioned earlier in the stream is I think the Fall Guys crossover is a little bit interesting. 
uh, was surprised about that one. Uh, but other than that, I mean, I think it looks like a cool expansion. I still, I can't get the image out of my head of, like, the Final Fantasy characters running across the Fall Guys track. It just looks so ridiculous. Man, is this Blood Furnace again? Oh, it's Ramparts, but I already did Ramparts as well. All right. Well, we never did get Underbog, so my RNG for dungeons this run... I didn't get Escape from Durnhold or Architraz, so, like, you know, it could have been worse, but... Yeah, overall, not amazing dungeon RNG. You would never do a Mechanome, even if you donated to him. I mean, look, there is a price for everything, is all I'll say. <laughs> but, uh, for Mechanome, that price is fucking high. And I'm definitely not just gonna do it for shits and giggles, because fuck Mechanome. Uh, if I knew it sucked that much for you, I wouldn't have asked. No, it's it's all good. I, I understand, right? Um, but yeah, there definitely is a reason why I do um, why I do my speedruns on allied races. Mechanome racial plus storm earth and fire. Yeah, I I would imagine that does look goofy as hell, <laughs> for sure. Oh, fuck, I did my bomb order wrong there. Scan for viruses? I did actually scan for virus viruses and defragment my HD. Um, yeah. I don't know. I mean, honestly, I would say World of Warcraft is definitely performing po more poorly today than it historically has, but I already actually think I will need to buy a new computer, which, you know, sucks, but it is what it is. Um, but I've been hitting for a while now general performance issues and like even if it's not just happening to me obviously like the memory leak shit right there have been enough performance issues that I've encountered over like the past year or so and it's just gotten worse and worse that I do think I will need to unfortunately buy a new computer so we'll see probably gonna do that at some point over the next week or two um but you know it's it's an unfortunate reality um, now, uh, probably this, we'll go down the middle, get a coordinated assault. Uh, oh shit, I didn't pick up the quests. Ah! There we go. Not sure if it's the same issue, but you fixed your Bnet issue by clearing the Bnet cache folder. I don't know if that would be causing crashes within World of Warcraft. Uh, you had the Ogron Horn not drop after 11 kills? Yeah, that's... that's also brutal. Uh, see you later, owner. I probably missed, uh, your message, but, you know, you'll see it when you rewatch the stream, I'm sure. Uh, the Shredder hurts? Yeah, I definitely didn't want that dude to flamethrower me. Oh, my pet died. Oh, shit. It must have had, like, some sort of dot effect on it. I don't really know. I wasn't paying super close attention. Uh, need one more mushroom, which I can get over there. See, quests like this, by the way, are why Guardian Druid, or just Druid in general, is so good. Being able to do this mushroom quest without fighting these mobs, like, this is the situation where it just saves you, like, 15 seconds straight up. And then you don't end up being stuck in combat, like, with mobs like this. So, that is, like, just a massive advantage of Druid. Just being able to flight form, interact with stuff. Uh, same thing with, like, you know, some of the other ones. There's the uh, the one where you have to pick up all the pots, that bonus objective later on. That's another really good one for Druid. Um, there we go. And start the roleplay for that. I always forget to do that, to start the roleplay beforehand. And I guess I'll have to grab a mob there. Fucking Harpoon did it again, man. Oh, all right. What is hap- what am I stuck on? Okay, some fucking mushroom thing. You forgot I play FF14? I play most MMOs. Most, like, large MMOs I play. Uh, the only, like, MMOs that I know about that I haven't played is, like, I haven't ever played Black Desert Online. I know, like, you know, some people play that. Um, 
Honestly, that's the only mainstream MMO that I haven't really checked out. Uh, and even then, it's like... Iffy. If you can call it a mainstream MMO, it's kind of like, you know, not. Um, but yeah. Don't make you log in on to your rogue. Yeah, please don't. Uh, you love to you. Uh, you used to love Hots. You played a mean Lily. Oh yeah, yeah, Lily was fun. Uh, I think she was one of the few healers I played. She also like was simple to understand. Really, you quit all PvP games. Do that. Love Hots. Yeah, it was really good. It's a shame that they killed it. Ever since they announced that they were, um, like, just effectively ending development on it, I, I've stopped playing it. It was still a fun game, but it's just, you know, I'm not going to play a game that has no future, right? I also, by, by that point, I I wasn't really into HOTS that much anymore, regardless, so, yeah. I also, I don't think I ever got Orc Thorn, so I think I can maybe... Maybe kill this uh, tree. I'm going to get it low. Oh, fuck. It got the buff. Oh, something I did cleared off its debuffs. I don't know what that was. I'm going to do Fury of the Eagle here. Ancient. Oh, ancient branch. Okay. We got it. First kill. Well, I guess that kind of makes up for, um, you know, the shit RNG I got earlier. And did I, I can't, did I get Orkthorn? Is it in the list of completions? Proof of Strength, Granai, Botanai, Bloom. I don't think I did. Yeah, I don't see Orkthorn on the list. Yeah, I knew I didn't get Orkthorn. Okay. Um, let me see if I can quickly get... I'm fast. I need to go sl I need to go like kind of slow. Okay. Well, there was a chance that I got wasp stinger first try, but you know. Odds are it wasn't going to happen and it took me a little bit too long to get Orkthorn to reliably um move it into uh the next pull. Uh Tyrianth said, what am I doing for tomorrow's stream? Well, as it so happens, uh, you can literally read about that in the pinned comment. Uh, the poll at the top of the, the chat, if you don't see the poll that I've linked, um, go ahead and just refresh the stream. It should show up. But I've pinned a poll for tomorrow's stream. It tells exactly what I'm going to do, and you can vote for it, right? So the, the TLDR is I'm going to be doing, um, uh, whatchamacallit, I'm going to be doing two level 40 to 60 runs, but the poll is still ongoing for what I play. I think currently, last I checked at least, Unholy DK was in the lead and um, Fire Mage, I think, was second. Uh, but the thing is, the top two winners of the poll will be the runs that I do. Because I'll be doing two runs tomorrow. So that is what I'll be doing. So if you want to see one of those specs in particular, you know, make sure to vote. It's I'm going to be keeping it up. Um, or at least I won't be closing the results of the poll until, um, you know, I, I don't know when, like early tomorrow morning. Basically, whenever I wake up and say, okay, I need to start preparing for my stream in a few hours, that is when I will look at the poll, say, all right, which one won, and then I will start prepping that stuff. Uh, so probably another, like, you know, 16 hours or so you have left to vote. Is there a reason I stream on YouTube instead of Twitch? Because I think it's better. And because all my viewers are already here, right? You know, I started making YouTube videos before I started streaming, so it only makes logical sense for me to continue on here. But that gets asked a lot, so that's all I'll say on the subject, right? I, It's really that simple. Uh, I have a few more bonus objectives to complete. Should do a mech during one of the mass xp buff promos if you wanted to humor the ones that ask oh you mean mechanome um maybe i don't i don't really know though like 
I mean, like, at this point, like, I will say it's partially a meme, right? Like, I don't really give that much of a shit about Mechanome, but, like, I don't really want to play one because I genuinely hate it. So it, it would be, like, if I were to play a Mechanome, you know, I would have to race change that character or delete it because I just genuinely don't want to play a Mechanome. Um, it's, uh, like, also, to be quite honest, I don't love playing Kul'Tiran either, you know? It's just not my favorite, um, not my favorite race in the game. I just don't love the design. I don't really love the way armor looks on them. So if I ever take one of my old Kul'Tiran characters and actually play them for whatever reason, because, you know, maybe I need a druid or something, I usually have to race change it. And, uh, I don't know. I do it because obviously I need to for, um, Kul'Tiran druids. Like, they're the only ones who can be guardian druids on Alliance. But I have absolutely no reason to play Mechanome, so I just don't. Right? Um... But yeah, it's, uh, it's it basically, it started off just being the one race that I never bothered to unlock. So obviously the reason why I never played it up until now is because I just had zero interest in it. There was zero advantage to it and I just didn't want to unlock it. So like, why would I go through the process of doing the allied race shit to unlock Mechanome when I just have no interest in playing it and it's like not good? Um, now I technically don't really have that excuse because I did get it for free because um, Blizzard gave all allied, allied races to all people. So uh, even I have it now, but it still just isn't something I particularly want to play. Um, like I said, it's partially a meme at this point. You know, people have been asking me to play Mechanomes. Now I'm like, fuck no, I'm never playing a Mechanome. I do genuinely hate the way they look, uh, but... I don't fucking know. Maybe. Maybe in the future I might play one. But it's, um... <laughs> it, it would probably... You are kind of correct there in terms of it would probably need to be during, like, a special event, right? Um, I would do a Mechanome run I don't know, for, like, a fucking subscriber special or whatever. I don't... I don't really do, like, subscriber specials or whatever, but I, I sometimes will do, like, you know, if, if I hit a, a mini milestone, I'll do something that people have been asking me to do for a while. Um, that isn't, like, too major, uh, just because, you know, why not? So, I mean, fuck it. What, if I, if I say, if I say, like, 50k subs and I do a Mechanome speedrun, like, you know, is, will, will that appease the Mechanome players, right? Well, we'll fucking set it in stone, then. 50k subs and I'll do a Mechanome speedrun. Oh, shit. Ah, uh, <laughs> I missed all of those mobs. Oh, oh well. At least this person didn't kill all of these guys, so... It's not like I missed all of that as well. Double Volpera Survival Hunter. Are they playing BM? Uh, yeah, they're playing BM because they have a second pet. So, du double Volpera Hunter at the very least. Uh, I agree it's funny to ask about mechanomes, uh, but you don't care. Yeah, I figure most people do it ironically at this point, because I've made it clear that I don't like playing mechanomes. It's like, back when I always used to say how much I hated playing Blood DK, or at least hated playing Blood DK while leveling, and everybody would always ask me to do a Blood DK speedrun, and I always would say, I'm not fucking doing a Blood DK speedrun. And then finally, back in Shadowlands, I put Blood DK on one of those leveling poles, and it won by a fucking lance. <laughs> <laughs> because of course everybody wanted to see me play a blood dk and it was one of the most miserable speedruns i've ever done but at least i fucking did it so you know uh but yeah sometimes i'll do that we'll see hmm. is there a chance that twitch could help extend my audience not even fucking slightly no going to twitch would do absolutely nothing for me in fact going to twitch would actively harm me because it would draw attention outside of my YouTube channel, which would mean that less people are actually being directed there. It would be even harder for me to connect people to my actual leveling guides and stuff. Um, yeah. It, drawing, moving people to Twitch would be the absolute worst thing I can do. And, like I said, I don't want to get into it a lot, but I, I just don't fucking think Twitch is a good site, right? Like, I, 
I have literally zero interest in streaming on Twitch because like every time this gets asked and I, I say genuinely, the reason I started streaming on YouTube is because I started making videos first and I just think it makes more sense. And I always personally thought, you know, YouTube was better just like in a vacuum, right? Um, people are like, but would you want to switch to, to Twitch if it was an option? And like, no, um, obviously like I got started here for a reason, but I have like, why, why would I switch to Twitch? What advantage would it give me? Literally nothing. <laughs> There's absolutely nothing redeemable about Twitch as a site. Like it's, if you already have an established community there, sure. Keep streaming on Twitch. But like, I mean, are we going to pretend that Twitch hasn't done a million things recently to fuck over their creators? Why the fuck would I want to stream there? It's ridiculous. There's absolutely no benefit to me. Which is why, like, I whenever I see people, like, saying that, you know, oh, Twitch isn't going to, like, fail as a streaming service, I'm like, I don't fucking know. Because as somebody who does stream and make videos, I can tell you right now, Twitch literally has nothing to offer me. In fact, I actively have no interest in streaming there after hearing about the stuff they've done. So it's not just, like, people criticizing Twitch for the sake of it. I, I am... Uh, part of at least maybe you could argue a small um, part but part of their target audience right in terms of like getting new creators in so that they can you know leech money off of um so they should be trying to make their platform as appealing as possible right now they have done the opposite i can't obviously i can't speak for all small slash medium sized creators right um but i can tell you right now that i have zero fucking interest in streaming on twitch um there's nothing that it can do for me that YouTube hasn't already done. So, yeah. Maybe, like, the only reason I could see streaming on Twitch is if you have no interest in making videos at all. And, like, it's just, uh, you're, like, you're literally just streaming, right? That's it. That's all you do. But if you have any intention of making videos, there's just literally no fucking upside to Twitch at all. And that's, like I said, I don't, I've, I get asked this, like, enough that it kind of irks me having to repeat myself. So I'm not going to repeat it again, but like that that's that's all I have to say on the topic. There's just no fucking reason for it. Um you love Coltiran Druid hating on Mechanomes is base though. I I should say I don't hate Coltiran's like it's not the worst thing in the world. I just don't really enjoy playing them. It's not something I really have fun playing. Like I I like my recent Coltiran Druid because I based it off Boris Ursus from uh Total War Warhammer. So that's the only reason I like it. But, like, generically playing a Kul Tiran outside of, like, Warhammer references, I just, no, not interested in it. Let's fast-track Harald into 1 million subs so he can main a Mechanome. Hey, I didn't go that far. <laughs> uh, it, it's gonna take a lot more than that to get me to main Mechanome. Fuck that. That may be something I draw the line at, at fuck no. You also can't be a Mechanome Demon Hunter, so, like, no fucking shot. Also, where? Okay, I, I don't know if you saw for a moment there, the um the map told me that I had zero completion for this bonus objective, and I was like really panicked for a second. Like, did it really not keep track of all the shit I just did? But it's a weird display issue, so like I, my heart stopped for a moment. Um, yeah, I do leveling streams every Saturday and Sunday. I what was the question? Uh, oh, Xiao Ling said, I would like to know if there will be a new 10 to 70 or 10 to 60 guide video. Um, like, well, yeah, the question was a little bit different. Um, so I'm, to be clear, I'm not doing a new 10 to 60 video. My 10 to 60 video is still like almost entirely accurate. The only new thing that I've done for that is the, dun the dungeon leveling. And I made an entire video on that subject. So the way that I'm handling guide updates is I have my main guide, which Obviously, for whatever reason, Blizzard decided to completely change leveling stuff in the middle of the expansion, and my, like, launch guide became obsolete, I would update it, right? Um, but it's still 90% accurate, right? Um, the only thing that has changed, there's, like, minor adjustments that I've made to the route, and, like I said, the leveling stuff, and then what I'll do is I make those, like, effectively, like, little add-on videos, where you can consider dungeon leveling versus questing to be kind of like, you know, a little add-on to the original leveling guide. Um, so if you haven't already watched that, you know, go and watch it. I've included it on my written guide, though. And that's my next point, right? The, um, 
the main way that I do guide updates at this point is I will do like on a new expansion, a big guide like that. And then every update will be on the written guide. The written guide is constantly updated. I do have a few small changes planned for it. Like very, very small to be clear for 10 to 60, very, very minor route adjustments, specifically stuff within like the first two levels of like getting started. Um, and it's honestly not really applicable for like regular players. It's more speed runny, but you know, I figure it's important info. So I'll include it anyway. Um, but generally speaking, the guide is like fully up to date, the written guide. And then I will include like video resources. So if you go to my written guide now, I, you'll see, um, like information, like on my regular video guide. And then you'll see like dungeon leveling versus questing link there. I even have it like embedded on the website, right? So you can watch it there. Um, so all of those resources are there. So to answer your question for 10 to 60, no, I, I do not plan on up to, uh, doing a full rework of that guide anytime soon um, because there's no reason to quite frankly if there's ever small changes i'll make a little mini guide about those particular changes um, but there's no reason to do any major overhauls to it right now of course when the next expansion comes out and there are as always significant changes to it i will like make a new a new video like i did uh, i made my original video back in shadowlands and i updated it right so i will of course do that after Dragonflight, but for now, unless there's anything super major that completely reworks it, no. However, for levels 60 to 70, yes, with an asterisk, I am making a new guide. The problem with levels 60 to 70 is a lot of my new guide updates hinge upon the changes that Blizzard has made in patch 10.1.5, which do not work. So I cannot update my guide currently. Because the reality of, I'll probably, uh, I'll split the difference soon, and I think I'm going to do a written guide update soon, because that I can do whenever. And then I will make the video guide whenever the changes are actually live. Because the problem with 60 to 70 stuff and making a video on it is you can't change a video retroactively. That's why, like, I have to do what I, what I said, where I make, like, I keep the written guide up to date, and then I, um... I make like little addendum videos. I can't go in and change stuff in a video once it's posted. So I need to make sure that when my t updated 60 to 70 video guide is posted, it is completely accurate, completely up to date, and everything has been tested. And I cannot currently do that because Blizzard's game is fucking broken. So until they fix their shit, I cannot make that guide, at least not a video version of that guide, but it is something I am planning to do. I have been working on it. Uh, you know, I even have like a, a work in progress script, right? But you know, I can't really do much until I've actually tested it and actually been able to play the changes and see how they impact the route beyond my theoretical idea of how they would impact the route. Um, but I will probably at least update what we know right now within the written version, just so people can rely on that. Um, but yeah, unfortunately, Blizzard has kind of made it hard for me to do a 60 to 70 guide. Uh, no problem. Uh, you only watch Twitch during drop promos? Yeah, I guess... Technically, that is the only thing that I can maybe benefit off of by going to Twitch, but also, like, not really. Um, I, I don't really care enough, right? Like, obviously, if I could have access to, like, those drop promo things, would it be nice? Sure. But do I want to stream on Twitch and, like, build up my shit just so I can eventually maybe be part of those Blizzard drop promos? Not really. I don't really, really care enough about that stuff, so, yeah, that's what it is. Uh, I am content to just stay here. Uh, I need five more demons. And... Okay, I freed enough Draenei. I also should be using this more often. Uh, okay, there's two more demons. Oh, there's two more right here. Perfect. So I can do this. And now we use the ballista stuff. A rare Talador questing experience. <laughs> yeah. It is kind of funny how we very rarely get to see Talador anymore. Outside of Alliance runs obviously do Talador because it's efficient to cut through here on the way to Gorgrons. Um, but Horde Talador? Yeah, this definitely isn't often. But... I mean, the main reason we're here, right, is because, you know, I didn't get enough experience in dungeons to, you know, finish in Gorgron, which is the main advantage. But honestly, Talador is not bad, so. 
I, I only really hate it when I have to go into Spires, because like Spires, it's not bad, but it definitely is a, a decent step down from the other like top efficient leveling zones. Um, let's see. As a big fan of the Sailor Fantasy, you do love them wholeheartedly. Kind of know you're a minority. I love their aesthetic, right? I love the, like, Kul'Tier and Heritage Armor, I should say, also looks really cool. I love the general design and theme of, like, Kul'Taras as a whole, I think is cool. I just, um, I just don't really like... The main thing I said I, I dislike is how armor works in them. Like, whenever you try to do, like, armor on Kul'Tierans, a lot of times it ends up being warped and stuff. So a lot of sets that I traditionally run just look really terrible on Kul'Tierans. And, um, yeah, that, that always just bothers me a little bit. It's not a huge deal. And especially, right, there's other races, like, I think Dark Iron Dwarves are actually pretty cool. I would say out of the, um, out of the Alliance allied races, uh, my favorites would be probably in order, like, Void Elf and Lightforge Draenei are kind of close. I don't really know which one I would say I like more. My favorite combo is Lightforge Draenei Paladin. As I've said before, it's just, I mean, it's too perfect, right? Lightforge Draenei Paladin is just, it's iconic. So, I really like that. I also love the Lightforged Heritage Armor. So, I like that, but I would say outside of Paladin, Void Elf is probably my favorite Alliance Allied race, and then Dark Iron is like a close third. You're waiting for the skinny cult here in humans? Yeah, they, they never did really add them, huh? I remember people thought there was going to be like customization options for a while, and then it just never happens. So, I don't know, that was always kind of odd. Also, at this point, I'm, like, so close to... I think this was around exactly where I hit level 60 on my Demon Hunter, too. Huh. Um, But I am so close to level 60, I don't even think I'm going to do quests and spires. I'm just going to run around and grab treasures until I hit max level. Uh, oh, here we go. Stuck in combat bug. I can use feign death and move on. So we can see uh, Hunter feign death dealing with the stuck in combat bug fairly effectively. Nice. Uh, this, honestly, this treasure may just get me the level up. Yeah, there we go. That's it. <laughs> That's all it took. One treasure inspires. All right. And just to double check, the XP is still not working. Somehow, we're at like, what is it, week 3, week 4 of patch 10.1.5? They still haven't fixed this shit. Honestly, just unbelievable that that change has not been addressed. Like, how have has nobody at Blizzard looked at that and said, yeah, maybe we should um address the fact that that sh shit just isn't working. Uh, So, I will be playing Classic Hardcore in a little bit. Since the, you know, we just finished the run, right? So... Uh, I'm going to catch up on chat real quick, because obviously I'm almost caught up, I'm towards the bottom, but there's a few messages earlier that I skipped, so I want to make sure I at least read those. So hopefully it won't take me too long to catch up on chat this time. And once I've finally caught up on all that stuff, we will switch over to Classic Hardcore and play that. My goal for today for Classic Hardcore is I am level 12, I played a little bit off stream, and I've gotten to like, the point where I'm pretty much ready to do the Druid Bear Form quest, so... I will stream until I have completed the bear form quest and gotten that, and then I will probably stop. I don't know how long it's going to take, but that is my goal, at least for the stream. Uh, but I saved that for stream because I know a few people, the last time I streamed Classic Hardcore, were curious to see how I handled that quest um, and like whether I you know struggle with it or not. So I basically 100%ed Teldrassil minus like one or two things, which I'll probably finish up at the start, and then we will move on to that. Uh, GG on the speed run. Thank you. What's the best and fastest uh, class spec to level? Guardian Druid, probably. Uh, not one to whine about Horde favoritism nowadays, but the Kul and Racials are such a meme. Yeah. I mean, the Zandalari ones are, like, also... I, I don't know. I think Kul I definitely agree their Racials are worse, but the Zandalari ones also, like, the... Um, what is it, Pter Pterodax Swoop or whatever it's called, is fucking terrible. It really doesn't do much. Um, the the whole, like, Prey to the Loa thing is kind of neat, but their other racials are also kind of just whatever, so I don't know. I don't think Zandalari racials are that great anyway. 
Um, personally, I wouldn't really give Zandaloria as a good example of like good Horde allied race racials. And frankly, Horde has it kind of bad, right? Like, if you like, let's look at the allied races um, and like just discuss their racials because I think honestly, for the most part, allied or alliance have it way better. Kultir and I, I will agree, their racials are a bit worse, but the most egregious cases are on the Horde. Yeah, Brush It Off is solid, too. Like, Kultirans aren't amazing. Haymaker's okay. Brush It Off is solid. The swim speed thing is nice. And Kultirans have a really good, like, profession bonus racial. Which, you know, obviously not everybody does professions, but it's nice to have. It, definitely not bad. Um, wait, I still haven't even completed the Mechanum quest? Um, yeah, so these fuckers, um, they actually don't have terrible racials. It's definitely on the weaker ends, um, but, like, for endgame stuff, they're okay. Uh, Lightforged has sick racials. The giant laser beam is really, really cool, really fun to use. Um, they also, like, I think gain experience from demons, something like that. I forget exactly. Uh, Void Elf racials are pretty cool. Void Elves, it's, um... The big ones I know is they have that disc that they can throw out that teleports them after a few seconds. That's really just handy to have. They also have, um, when you're a caster, your spells don't suffer pushback when you're attacked. That's really good. Um, it's a bit niche, but in the niche cases where that is useful, it's very, very useful. And it's something that you can't get anywhere else, I don't think. Um, so that is like a very unique and powerful racial um, and they also have, like, some other just generic racials. Void Elves have pretty solid racials. Um, and Dark Iron Dwarves, obviously, like, you know, what do I need to say? They are, I would say, out of every single allied race, these have the best racials, by far. They're, like, whatever it, poison dispel is insane. Mole Machine obviously hasn't really been updated as of late, but it still, for leveling and just general utility, very nice. They gain movement speed when indoors. Dark Iron has some really fucking good racials. Uh, you can see uh, the specs of what they have by right-clicking on them. What do you mean? Um, oh my god, you can actually... Fuck, I never knew that. Shit, good point. Okay, we, we can actually see it. All right. Yeah, um, so while I'm talking about Dark Iron, I, I never knew this was a thing, by the way. <laughs> so <laughs> that is... Um, that's good to know. Uh, that's useful information. Uh, but yeah, they get like the purge. The blacksmithing improvement is pretty nice as well. Reduce physical damage taken. Dark iron racials are fucking bonkers. Light forged get um, resistant to holy damage doesn't matter. Obviously, erupt on death is kind of dog shit. Uh, increased experience from killing demons. I just saw Goose Comics said he wants to see a demon leveling guide. Um, but light forged Draenei, while they have some whatever racials. Uh, their, like, gigantic laser beam is very fucking strong. It, this, I would say, this is on the lower end of power level stuff. It's probably around the same as Kul Tirin, but at least it's fun as hell to use. I love the Light Forge Draenei racial. Um, Void Elves, yeah, spells can't be delayed. Uh, I forget exactly what their, like, Empowered by the Void thing does. Um, and obviously, Void Storage is, the you know, flavor, but it doesn't really matter. Um, resistant to shadow damage, actually sometimes useful. Like, we very rarely ever get holy damage boss fights, but shadow damage, I mean, half the fights in Aberus are shadow damage, so, yeah, Void Elves, honestly solid. Um, what is Kul Tiran? Yeah, Kul Tiran is the profession thing, resistant to frost and nature, eh, not as useful, but still decent. Um, Brush It Off is pretty, what is it, Shrug It Off is pretty good. Um, and then Haymaker is like, niche uh and mechanomes what do they have mechanomes can pick locks uh they have the emergency heal acts as a personal crafting station god i fucking hate this race it's such a meme um and then they yeah they have like some other racials that they fight they have like the distracting thing and some like passive stat buff i think all i know is the mechanome racials like numerically are solid but yeah um and if you mean the void elf racial uh, they have two ones, because teleport through a rift in space, that's the one where they, like, shoot out a little thing and, like, teleport there. Um, I don't know what their effect does, or unless you're saying the effect shoots out a dark spacey bolt. Yeah, I don't know. Um. Let's see. 
Have I checked out all of the boosters in Chromie Time War Mode Searing Gorge? I have seen that. Yeah, I think so. Um, I saw it accidentally, I think. I, like, passed by them one time looking at something else, and I was like, huh, what the hell is going on here? Um, uh, I didn't know that was still going on. Uh, let's see. But yeah, if, um, we look at Horde Racials real quick. Nightborn, I like Nightborn, right? But, like, Arcane Damage Resist is not really that useful. The very few Arcane Damage fights. Increased Magical Damage is literally, like, I guess if you're playing a Nightborn Priest or a Nightborn Mage, it's fine. But this racial is literally useless for half of the races that night or classes that Nightborn can be. Their portable mailbox is kind of nice, and their slow racial is kind of dog shit. It just doesn't really do anything. Um, so I yeah, I'm not really a fan of that one. Um, High Mountain Tarin, obviously decently fine. Um, Bolt Rush, Bull Rush is like situationally kind of good uh reduced damage increased versatility is both like okay but not like super impactful the most impactful thing i would say about high mountain tarin is the increased chance to get meat and fish obviously if you don't know about the stranglethorn fishing extravaganza this racial breaks it in half high mountain tarin is not even close to the best race for doing the stranglethorn fishing extravaganza because of that racial so i guess that's like one niche really good thing about it uh but Overall, I mean, still not insane. Maghar Orc has, I think, the worst racials in the entire game. Faster mount speed that doesn't stack with other stuff. Pet health increased. Who the fuck cares? That has to be... Pet health increase has got to be the worst racial in the entire game, bar none. What the fuck does that matter? Like, can you be... May can you be maybe Maghar or Warlocks? Does it benefit Demonology? Like, I remember there used to be this thing where Demonology damage scaled off their pet health. I don't know if that's still a thing, but that is the only reason in the entire game I can think of as to why increased pet health is anything but completely fucking worthless. It just does not matter at all. The what a trash racial. Who the fuck designed that one? Um, The XP pots. Yeah, the XP pots cap out at 50. They don't work past level 49. Um, you're filthy moon guard, so you pick character based on RP. I mean, that's totally fine, right? I'm Play what you want, right? I'm not saying, you know, you have to pick based on racial. But, you know, since the topic was brought up about Alliance having worse racials, I want to clear that up. That, no. Vaghar Orc, their racial bonus, the Invoke the Ancestors granting you their powers, this is basically their only racial that does anything, and it is fucking rubbish. It gives you a random stat that is complete RNG that you may not even use. It It's so bad. And then they have like the mount speed bonus that doesn't stack with stuff. Pet health increase, like I said, dog shit. And to give you an idea of how bad Magheart works are compared to Dark Irons, they have a reduced duration for poisons, diseases, and curses, whereas fucking Dark Iron can just remove that effect and they get a stat bonus for clearing it off. It, like, what... Who the fuck designed the Magheart work racials? It's just so bad, man. I don't understand. Uh, survival Hunter feels fun? Yeah, I like Survival Hunter. I've always liked Survival. It's not like the fastest spec in the world, but it's good. It's like above average for sure. Um, so Xandalari Trolls, because I, I know you compared them earlier, right? Uh, racial traits, regenerating is just not really that good because regenerating, it's like... There's so few situations where being able to stop and heal yourself, like, out of combat... Can it be used in combat? Maybe it can be used in combat. All I know is tanks are basically the ones who would get the most use out of this, but, like, you need to channel it in combat. You can't. So it's pointless, right? There's no reason to use it. Getting more gold... Like, I guess if you make a character specifically for farming gold, discovering more gold from creatures is, I suppose, appealing. Um, it's broken for PvP. Okay, yeah, that that's one thing fair. I don't PvP, so if you're telling me it's broken for that, I'll take your word for it, right? Um, and... Pader... <coughs> Tried to talk while drinking water. Not a good idea. <coughs> um, Pterodax Swoop. I will at least give Blizzard credit here. It is thematically appealing. It is a cool racial... But a 15-minute cooldown is just way too high. It, the racial sucks ass. It's one of the worst racials. 
it's cool. It's at least not dog shit worthless garbage like pet health increased. Um, but it's a terrible racial. So the only good racial for Zandalari is the Beseech Aloha thing, which... <coughs> God. God damn it. Um, I will give you that. It is a very cool racial. Uh, Zandalari, I think, if we're talking about what the coolest racial is, even though Zandalari's ones overall maybe aren't amazing, the Beseech Aloha thing is not only very good, um, but it is, like, fun and flavorful getting to, like, do that. So that is maybe, I would say, a fair comparison. Um... But overall, like, you know, and then I guess Volpera, if I'm saying which race at for Horde has, like, the most interesting racials, obviously it's Volpera. The irony of it is Volpera actually are, like, the worst race. Like, if I look, um, I guess let's look at Warrior, because obviously everybody can be Warrior. So let's look at uh, Fury Warrior, uh, races, I'm checking Blood Mallet, by the way. Volpera are second from the bottom. Actually, Lightforge Draenei is bottom for Fury Warrior. Wow, that surprises me. But Volpera is second from the bottom. Nightborn is just above that. Yeah. Um, and yeah, the nice thing about Zandalari Troll is their racial is flexible. So like, if I'm looking at like for Fury Warrior, which I like, I said I only picked because everybody can be that. So it's good to get like a one to one comparison. Um, but obviously, certain things like Nightborn is very clearly not going to be good for Fury Warrior. Um, but like on the list I'm looking at, Void Elf is the best allied race behind Dwarf Tar and Human. Uh, then Mechanome, which, like I said, Mechanome Racials, they're, they're whatever, but, like, they are numerically good. And then Zandalari Troll with the Paku buff, Kul'Tiran, High Mountain. Um, so, like, a lot of the allied races are kind of towards the top here. Um, and if I look at something else, like, let's look at tanks, Protection Warriors. Void Elf is number one. Uh, Mechanome is number three. Uh, then you have to go down a little bit. You find, like, Kul'Tiran, High Mountain. But then, for Prot Warrior, what is the worst, by a sizable margin... Obviously, by sizable margin, I mean it's like, what, 300 damage, according to this sim? But still, that's a large difference um, in this comparison. Volpera, worst by far. So, I actually, I, I can't really genuinely say that Volpera is, like, the best allied race for Horde. It is the most fun and most interesting, because Make Camp is a really cool racial. Nose for Trouble is decent um, in terms of survivability. Uh, fire Damage Resist is okay. Um, and obviously getting eight additional bag slots is very, very nice. Volpera is a fun race, but the bag of tricks, whatever it is, the, the thing where you like throw a little thing at the enemy, dog shit racial. It is numerically one of the worst in the game, and it is just boring. It's not fun to use. So yeah, Volpera from like, I'm pretty sure everything I look at, let's look at Monk. Uh, let's look at Brewmaster Monk, right? Uh, Volpera, second worst. Lightforge Dran Lightforge Draenei, worst. Wow. Um, see, that actually surprises me. Is Lightforge Draenei at least still good for Prot Paladin? No. Yo, wow. Lightforge Draenei fell off. It's at least, like, up there. It's the number one allied race for Paladin, which I guess isn't saying much because it's just that, Zandalari or Dark Iron Dwarf, um, for AoE. I guess maybe their racial isn't even worth using on single target anymore. That's unfortunate. When I played it back in BFA, the racial was, like, ridiculously strong, so... Yeah. Uh, Lightforge Jam... Dran... Er, blah, words. Lightforge Damage Racial Move is just as weak a bag of tricks, but it hits AoE. So, one thing I can absolutely say for certain about Lightforge Dran I Racial, on AoE, it is good. Um, but it does seem like on single target, it is about as weak as bag of tricks now. Um, so Bag of Tricks is just fucking terrible. You regret making a Lightforge Pally rather than having a normal Draenei? Um, I mean, yeah, normal Draenei Paladin is also very cool. Um, the Ion Cannon is useless in M+. Man, really? Oh, that sucks. When I played back in BFA, it shit hit hard, right? It, it was a really strong racial. Um, I haven't played my Lightforge Pally in a while. Oh, they nerfed it? Ah, uh, okay. Yeah, that sucks. That would explain it, right? Because I remember when I was playing Lightforge Draenei, it was like, it, it was simming like 2,000 damage back when, you know, damage, I forget exactly how much, but it was like something like 2k damage above the next option, which was a significant jump. It was one of the biggest differences in racial damage at the time. That sucks that they nerfed it. Draenei racials are terrible? No, um, they're definitely not. Uh, Heroic Presence is solid. Um... They get, like, a passive heal, which is, like, whatever. Uh, resistant to shadow damage, also not terrible. 
Um, Draenei, I, I think, is, like, very middle of the pack. Their racials aren't amazing. Um, yeah, and, like, looking at Sims, let me look at Fury Warrior again, because that's usually a good one to look at. So, looking at Arms Warrior. Arms Warrior, it's literally dead middle of the pack. This might actually be the middle option. On single target, uh, slightly above average, if I look at Fury. Uh, Draenei, actually above average. Uh, AoE, it is... Uh, AoE, it's pretty much exactly middle. Yeah, so Draenei is, like, average. Um, Heroic Presence is a very solid racial. It's just, it gives you primary stat, right? Which, nobody dislikes primary stat. So, racials like that are always going to be solid. Uh, 20% heal is a lot more useful. Yeah, there's that too, right? So, obviously, we can only, like, when I'm saying the numbers, like, which one is good and bad, this is purely numerically based on the racials that you can actually use to contribute to damage. Um... So, obviously, Lightforge Draenei's heal is nice utility, but we can't really measure that on a sim. But, yeah, you're correct. Um, and what else? Yeah, Maghar Orc. I will say, at the very least, Maghar Orc, generally speaking, is a bit ahead of Volpera consistently. Because, like, if you get a good stat off your racial, but it is RNG, right? If you get a good stat, it's okay. Um, their racial ability, the Invoke the Ancestors thing. Volpera racials are just actually fucking dog shit. Um, really, 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 really bad. Um, what else? Uh, I guess, yeah, and uh, Night Nightborn is honestly probably the worst for anyone that can't benefit from the magic buff, but if I look real quick at... Let's look at Priest. Um, Priest single target races... Uh... Actually, Nightborn's, like, below average for Priest. What about Mage? Um, It's above average for Arcane single target. Arcane AoE, it's also above average, but it's... Mechanome is actually best for Mage. Jesus Christ, that's cursed. That is horrendously cursed. Eh, anyways. Chilling as a Panda. I'm looking at Blood Mallet. I guess, for people who aren't familiar with Blood Mallet, maybe I should probably link it. Um, Good website, really good reference. I'll link it in chat. Um, has good, like, information on trinket sims and stuff. Just generally a very useful website to look at. Um, obviously, don't take this as, like, the end-all be-all for, like, serious endgame. Like, if you're trying to optimize your character, right? Do your own sims. Do your own research. Blood Ballot is really good at getting just, like, a quick, big-picture look at, you know, what's good for, like, a particular class or spec. It's usually fairly accurate. Um, but obviously they, you know, they have to use template sims because they need to apply it to everybody not just like specific characters so your exact results may differ from blood mallet uh but this is generally a pretty good resource i've been using it since bfa uh, let me catch up um do i have any tips or strats for volpera camps um i mean you pretty much saw it in that run any trick that you can use for volpera camp i already showcased in this run pretty much with like setting it heading back to orgrimmar turning off war mode then using return to camp that's really it um, pet racial is a callback to the regular orc one. Yeah, but at least the regular orc one does something. Like, the regular orc racial increases the damage done by pets, which actually does something. <laughs> Increase pet health is fucking terrible. It does nothing. I don't care if it's a callback. Then it, it should be some sort of callback that does damage. Right? That, I, I don't know. I get that you're, you're probably correct that it is a callback, but it is just an ill-conceived callback that needs to be changed. Uh, Windwalker is better than BM. For open world questing, generally, yes. Uh, for dungeons, obviously, though, play Brewmaster for tank use. Fave racial is going to be Velf, uh, Void Elf Caster, no delay, yes. Yeah, I, I said before, definitely, I, I love Void Elf racials. Um, Void Elf is... Yeah, Void Elf, I would say, is probably overall outside of... Wait, and I'm kind of sad now, because apparently Lightforge Paladin sucks these days. Which, I've been saying before that one of my favorite combos is Lightforge Pally. I have my Lightforge Pally still. I think it's on Area 52 now. Um, let's see. Uh, yeah, this one. So I still have my OG Lightforge Pally that I played like way back in the day. Um, so it kind of sucks to hear that this racial is apparently like really dog shit now because it got nerfed. Which, you know, I love the look of Lightforge Pallies. They look awesome. Um... Yeah, just unfortunate. 
But outside of that particular race class combo, I would agree that Void Elf is my favorite alliance allied race. Swap back to Melganus. Um, let's see. Uh, chilling as a panda in a corner. Yeah, I love uh, panda racials. Panda racials are very, very fun. Um, panda, for anyone who doesn't know, pandas, um, they get, uh, their, whatever it is that the touch that, like, interrupts enemies isn't that useful, but I've used it sometimes to good effect. Uh, the increased food buff thing is very, very, very nice. Um, obviously there's some utility stuff, like cooking skill and increased resting experience, but, like, take less falling damage, um is, uh, whatchamacallit, it's one of those that is deceptively good. There are so many things that you can get away with by having Bouncy, um, that you just wouldn't be able to get with otherwise. So I love, um, Bouncy. Uh, you main Holy Paladin, uh, it really is good, yeah. How do you search by race? Oh, uh, if you go to Blood Mallet and you click on, like, one of the, um, like, it, let's say I clicked Blood DK, if I go to the top, there's little drop-down menus, Death Knight, Blood, Trinkets, and then Casting Patchwork. Under where it says trinkets, you would do the drop down and then go to races. And then you could sort by single target, three target, or five target. Uh, and Goose Comics said, you can't just show that and not... What do you mean? My my random um, warrior that doesn't have any clothes on? This, yeah, half-naked orc woman. I mean, this is... What do you want me to say? This is a character that I leveled up to 50? And notice how all of the slots that are missing armor are where the heirlooms would go. So, yeah, that that's what happened there. I leveled this character up to 50, I took off all of the heirlooms, I mailed it off, and now there is a half-naked orc sitting in, uh, sitting in my character creation. Uh, she's amazing, I guess. Um, goblin racials can be helpful. Yeah, well, obviously, right, like, you know, you can't talk about horde racials and not talk about goblins. Um, specifically rocket jump, right? Uh, Rocket Jump is just ridiculously useful in so many situations for a few different classes, priests specifically. So a lot of the priest players I know are goblins now because they need Rocket Jump for certain mechanics, definitely. Um, okay, I've caught up on chat right now, but I still missed a few messages earlier, so let me catch up on those. Uh, let's see, what server do I do my speedruns on? Well... This particular speedrun, the Hunter run, was on Malganus. So right now I'm playing on Malganus, but previously I played on Area 52. I mean, I've done speedruns a lot of different places. Like my um, my Alliance speedruns a lot of times I either did on like Wormrest Accord, Kel'Thuzad, Storm Rage, right? I played on a few different ones. Um, I even did speedruns on Brazilian servers on, on Nemesis, or what was it? Uh, was it Nemesis, I think, that I did speedruns on? Because it's like really low pop. So I think, yeah, I still have Speedwagon from way back in the day. I have Speedwagon on a Nemesis over here. So I've done different speedruns all over the place. Uh, but right now, mostly either Area 52 or Malganus are where I level most of my characters. Uh, does the crafting thing work for Dragonfly crafting stations? I don't believe so. I obviously don't play a Mechagon or a Mechanome, so I don't know for sure, but I don't think it does. Um, Void Elf Racial is like the Venthyr Doorway. Yeah, really nice. Um, honestly, like, low-key, I have considered making Larice here a Void Elf. Uh, but the thing about Blood Elf is, Blood Elf is another race that has, like, fairly useful racials. I can show it here for people who aren't familiar. Um, Obviously, like, the Arcane Resist and Enchanting is whatever. They also get Critical Strike, which is just good. Numerically speaking, it's, like, average in terms of damage. But Arcane Torrent, it's not the OG Arcane Torrent. Like, original Arcane Torrent back, like, pre... When did they change it? I think it was Legion that it got changed. Pre-Legion Arcane Torrent was fucking bonkers. Like, every single time I play Classic and I play my Blood Elf Prop Pally... And I just, I get OG Arcane Torrent back, and then I go back to retail, and I'm like, I don't have Arcane Torrent anymore. Or, I do, but it doesn't silence. It's just, like, I had forgotten how good it was, and then I started playing Blood Elves on Classic, and I it just all came back. I'm like, oh my god, I love this racial. Why did they remove it? Um, so, original Arcane Torrent was, like, one of the most broken racials ever. Um, to the point where, basically, 
dungeon comps in WAD for challenge modes were just all Blood Elves whenever you could make one. Uh, the only person we didn't have playing a Blood Elf was uh, our Druid, because they obviously couldn't be a Blood Elf. Uh, but yeah, Blood Elf Arcane Torrent was just so obscenely broken. That said, even the nerfed version of it is still quite strong. Uh, a good example of it is like Dierna. So I pretty much, in Vault of the Incarnates, I could never swap off Blood Elf because I was in the assigned Mass Dispel rotation for the Dierna ads. Because the one of the mobs would put a heal on every single ad that needs to be purged. So you either need to have a Priest Mass Dispel it, or you need to have a Blood Elf Arcane Torrent it. In fact, I don't even know how Alliance Guilds dealt with that mechanic because, like, imagine needing... I think what you would need like two priests to rotate master spells and having to keep track of that assignment. That sounds fucking awful. We had two blood elves and one priest and we would just like do it like, you know, in, in order. So I would get the first dispel, then the other demon hunter got the second dispel, uh, and then our priest would get the third dispel. Um, and we handled that mechanic, but that was like a mechanic that for Horde, at least you literally needed blood elf racial to deal with it efficiently. So like I, I even mentioned at one point in my old guild, I'm like, can I race change my character? And they just told me no. They're like, no, you need to stay Blood Elf. We need you to dispel the ads in Dierna. I was like, okay, <laughs> damn, that sucks. Uh, like, I like Blood Elf, right? But I specifically wanted to go Void Elf because I like the Void Elf racials. Um, but yeah, Arcane Torrent is actually very powerful in certain situations. Um, it's not always useful, but when it is useful, it's like, it is game breakingly broken on the level of like dwarf right with stone form so there you go uh let's see what else did i miss the transmog discount for avoid elves is really good too was thinking more race fantasy for zandalari yeah true i mean like i said i think that the picking your own god thing thematically is one of the coolest racials you know period uh, even if the rest of them aren't super great uh, you love Dark Iron? Yeah, Dark Iron's very fun. Uh, <laughs> Druid Bear Form will be easy at level 12 for you. On your Tarin, you soloed it at 10, but it was tight. Yeah, I considered doing it at level 10, but it was one of those things where I wanted to continue playing um, Classic Hardcore after the stream because I've just been enjoying it. I was going to play it a bit more, but I just kind of ran out of time during the week, so I only got two levels past the stream. Um, so I figured I would just, like, 100% Teldrassil for fun, and uh, hunt all the rare mobs and stuff, which I got almost all of them. Uh, I will be able to show that when we swap over. In fact, at this point, we probably can swap over because we're done talking about the racials. So real quick, let me open up Classic Hardcore. I'll still read the messages I missed. Because I missed a few of them earlier. Like, much, much earlier. Um... Also, for the people who messaged me on Discord, I will I will get to that after the stream. Okay, let me game capture. WoW Classic. And oh, I can also remove my live split now that we're done. There we go. Um Yeah, what was uh there were a few message I messages I missed way before. Um so I want to make sure I at least get around to those. Um, yeah, I missed a few messages back when we were talking about the Voldemort add-on. Mm. Let's see. The paid guides aren't better than WoW Pro, exactly. Um, I missed a question about, like... Dungeon spamming. Uh, the Sarkareth boost you bought wiped. Oh, owner, when you're... I would imagine, owner, you're going to be watching this in the recording, but that is uh, unfortunate. I missed that message. Uh, the hardcore add-on is pretty good, but you won't use it because of who made it. Yeah, I agree. I think the general design of it is interesting. There's a few... Like, I have some slight problems. I guess this is actually relevant now that we're like, on Classic Hardcore. I have some very minor problems with, like, the design of the Hardcore add-on in terms of, you know, the restrictions it puts on you. I kind of understand why some of them are necessary to basically make it more fair, but I've talked about this before, right, where, um, like, I'm kind of developing something somewhat similar for, like, the challenge run format, which will kind of be, like, an addendum to my leveling add-on whenever that's done, 
And I'm going to be like very loose on restrictions for my challenge run format, because at the end of the day, if you are, uh, what, what you call it? if you're cheating it, you're just cheating yourself, right? So there's certain things that I think if a restriction just makes it less fun to play and doesn't really significantly add anything, I think that's just silly. And I think that you shouldn't do that. So there were a few things like specifically the solo self found addition to it. I kind of understand why it exists because of the fact that you can't have like people intermingling things. But what a lot of people did anyways, they just turned off the add on bot shit and then turned it back on. And from what I've heard, you, you could get by it. Um, and I just never found that interesting anyway, because the people who are going to cheat are going to cheat, right? So the entire point of hardcore should just be don't fucking die. Don't be stupid, play well, and you know, don't screw up. But when you force solo self found on everybody, you know, there are going to be people who skirt around it, and then everybody else just has to play an objectively worse version of the game. And I actually love the idea of, you know, actually having an economy. I've said this multiple times. I'm really excited for it. I'm thinking of, I might go for, like, leatherworking on one of my characters, because I'll probably level multiple. And I think I'm going to go for Devil Sword Leather, because I figure Devil Sword Leather is, like, something that everybody's going to want the moment they hit max level. It's really good for a lot of different classes and specs. And it's hard to get because you need to kill Devil Sores, and they're, like, hard to actually kill. So if I manage to get the Devil Sword Leather um, recipes and I'm able to reliably craft them, I can make a fortune off that. And it was already a good seller back in Original Classic. But imagine now, you know, when there's the added danger of having to, like, you know, kill the Devil Sores and stuff. I get that you could probably farm it in a group, but still. Um, so I think stuff like that, little crafting um, things like that that require you to invest in your character and do dangerous activities, the ability to do that and then make, like, more profit off it than normal because of the, the risk that you took in learning all of that stuff, I think that's really cool. That's, like, a huge appeal to me for official hardcore servers. So stuff like that made me not love the add-on in general, and it's one of the reasons why I didn't want to even try it at all. But, yeah, I definitely wouldn't have even bothered just because of the people who made it. Uh, is survival the best spec for leveling for hunters? I would believe so, yes. Uh, it's... I don't really think BM is that good anymore. BM hasn't really changed a whole lot since Shadowlands, which is both a good thing and a bad thing. It hasn't gotten worse, but it also hasn't gotten better. So the problem with um, Shadowlands is when you couldn't like pick your talents with the new Dragonflight system, a lot of specs suffered from not really having great access to a lot of their really good tools until later. Whereas BM had, you know, pet tanking, which is just an inherently good thing, and reasonably good access to their core abilities early on. So BM was at least solid for leveling. It definitely wasn't like one of the best leveling specs. I would say it was like above average, like maybe low A tier. But I would actually say the amount of specs that have now gotten the flexibility to take like really powerful options early on, whereas BM hasn't really gotten that flexibility, has actually made BM kind of fall down in power um, for like its leveling speed. It just is not nearly as good as it used to be relative to everything else, even though it technically hasn't changed a whole lot. Like stuff like survival, right? Survival was really hard pressed to get a lot of its core fundamental abilities until later on. But now you get wildfire bomb like almost instantly and a lot of the really good synergy packages with it. So survival is actually quite good. I mean, you can see in the run that I just did, that was a fairly solid time overall for like a no dark moon fair speed run. And I mean, I, I wasn't even really trying that hard to like, you know, speed run as quickly as possible. Survival is just good. It's fast. I would say it's definitely up there with all the other like solid leveling specs and definitely a tier. Um, and I would say it is probably a decent bit better than both BM and MM. And I also think that historically I have underrated MM after playing it last weekend. I think it is slightly better than I gave it credit for. Uh, it's still, I would say probably the weakest hunter spec for leveling, but not by nearly as much of a large margin as I would make it out to be in the past. Uh, you remember back in the 2000s, there were so many web ads for WoW gold making guides. Yeah, it used to be like an ep epidemic, basically. Uh, let's see. All the things has quickly become one of the most popular add-ons out there. Yeah, for sure. All the things definitely is a large add-on that a lot of people use, and it's also not paid. Definitely a good example. Uh, I like how if you want to check if your guide works, you can just watch my VODs. Exactly. Yeah. Um, you know, you it's completely transparent, right? You can see exactly how efficient everything is. Uh, let's see. 
Uh, some, somebody said they came back to the game and they were trying to level and found a lot of paid add-ons. You ended up just watching my video and leveling with that. Awesome. Um, let's see. I'm, I'm like reading a few messages that, you know, because this was with the whole add-on thing, I don't want to read out all the names. Uh, so I'm not going to... I'm reading these messages. Uh, oh, I, I see. I missed one of Anolana's Architraz updates. Got to the last boss through the spawning of grub parasites, and oh god, Millhouse popped out of the stasis pod. Yeah, that's the only good thing about Architraz, the Millhouse. Uh, that was the first time Millhouse Mana Storm ever appeared in WoW, I think. Um, imagine if somebody uh, hoarded game knowledge in Dark Souls and claimed that they were the one who did it. Yeah. Uh, I think at this point I caught up in all of the old messages. I'm skipping a few of them just because it was on the topic of, like, you know, the, the paid leveling guides, and I don't want to read out all of those. Um, but I think I've caught up on all of that stuff. Oh, uh, shit, I think I missed it while reading the old messages. Uh, the Great Watubi donated $3 and said, thanks, I enjoy my streams. Glad to hear it. Thank you for the donation, The Great Watubi. I appreciate it. Sorry I was late to catch that one. Uh, it didn't pop up um, before. Also, I just realized... Um, I've been missing certain messages because when earlier in the stream, when my stream, like, or uh, when my YouTube panel, like, flickered, right, and I couldn't read chat, um, it turned, it, like, flicked my chat from live chat, which shows all the messages, into top chat, and I didn't notice it did that, so fuck. Uh, I think, and I can't scroll up that far. Well, that sucks. Uh, that means I may have actually missed a few messages that I won't be able to see. I'll... Shit. I, maybe I'll go back after the stream ends and look at chat and see if there were any that I didn't read that were, like, questions for me. Now I feel bad. Shit. I hate when that happens. Um... Yeah, there, I, there's definitely some messages here that I just did not see. God damn it. Uh... See. Now, I, now I have to reread everything just real quick. Technically, I don't need to, but I, I want to. Um, but now I feel bad. Oh yeah, so like when Goose Comics, when you messaged earlier about you can't just show that and not talk about it, I wasn't sure what you were referring to because you, your message, your first message of the hell is that transmog on that warrior, that for whatever reason didn't show. On the top chat, so I only saw the second one. I why I still to this day do not understand why YouTube even has the quote unquote top chat thing. Why would I randomly want to just have half of my messages not show up? It's just so fucking annoying. Um Is Coltiran Guardian Druid dog shit? No, Coltiran Guardian Druid's fine. I mean, it's what I used for my world record run. It's obviously it's the only allied race that can be um a guardian druid, so or can be a druid in general, so there's that. Uh, I would say, let me let me double check Blood Mallet. Uh, I would imagine it's not bad. Uh, Guardian, go to uh, races. Uh, Coltiran is actually above average. So, in nice thing about Druid is there aren't many options. Uh, for Druids, the options are Tarin is for single target number one. Tarin racials are pretty good. Uh, Troll is good. I would imagine Berserking and actually, wow. Tarin and Troll are a decent bit ahead of the other options. So, for pure single target at least, those are probably your best bets. Then, uh, High Mountain Tarin, Kul Tirin, and Night Elf are all basically dead even. Uh, then Worgen and Zandalari Troll with Paku are, like, just a little bit far behind. Now, what about AoE? Let me check. Troll still number one for AoE. Uh, yeah, Troll and Tarin both ahead. Uh, by, like, a decent margin. And then it's kind of the same thing. Uh, the only thing is it looks like Kul Tirin is the worst for uh, AoE damage. But only by a very, very small margin. Like, less than a thousand damage. So, less than a thousand damage on AoE right now is a very, very, very small difference. And also, Kul Tirins have uh, Brush It Off, which is, survivability-wise, very strong. And that is something that you can't really measure here. Now, the other races do kind of as well, right? Like, um... Uh, Tarin has War Stomp, which isn't necessarily good for survivability, but, like, having an AoE stop is very nice. Uh, Night Elves are obviously good options because of Shadow Meld. That's just very strong. Um, and Sandalari Trolls have some flexibility there. 
Uh, but yeah, I would say for the Alliance players, it's pretty even between Kul Tiran and Night Elf based on what I'm seeing in terms of damage and, you know, their utility. Night Elf probably at the very top end better for Shadow Meld. Kul Tiran, not bad. So yeah, uh, definitely don't feel bad about playing a Kul Tiran Druid. They are solid as fuck. Uh, did I do the speedrun already? Yes. Uh, this is the latter half of the stream. We're on hour six, so the speedrun is already done. Sorry. Seems weird goblins get an alchemy bonus and not an engineering bonus. So the reason I would imagine goblins got an alchemy bonus is because gnomes already had it. And obviously these days they've started doubling back. Like um, there are multiple people that have blacksmithing bonuses. So, you know, they've already started you know, going back in that. But in Cataclysm, when they didn't have like there was no alchemy bonus, right? So I think instead of making two different engineering bonuses, which thematically would work better, they just figured, fuck it, we'll give goblins the alchemy bonus because it at least kind of fits. Uh, but yeah, I think that's the reason why that happens. Uh, I think there's a good argument that sending good gear to your alts basically voids the challenge. Uh, I I disagree with that. Um, Depends on what you mean, right? So, first off, I still think at the end of the day, even if you were to send a lot of really good items to your um your hardcore character you still need to not fuck up right like there are people who are playing at max level with thunder fury and shit and they still die so i i get that like people will always try to draw this line where it's like oh but you know hardcore the real challenge is getting to 60 and like i get that but at the same time you know if you're able to kick yourself out in full bis and still do difficult stuff at max level i still think you can have a challenge leveling up right Obviously, if you're sending yourself all this crazy gear and you're pulling extremely slowly so there was literally zero chance that you die, I guess maybe it defeats the purpose of the challenge. And to be clear, I'm not saying I want to do that, but let's say, you know, I get leatherworking on one of my characters and I make a um, hand-stitched leather bracers um, for my druid on, like, one of my alts. Is Does that really count as, like, voiding solo self-bound? It it's just, it's a hand-stitched leather bracers, right? But if I were to send my druid a bunch of, like, BOE blues and greens and really overpowered stuff, i kind of get you there. But I do think for the most part, it's, I don't know. I, I think it's perfectly fine. And still, at the end of the day, who gives a shit, right? If somebody wants to cheat and they want to send over blue and green items to their character and do all that shit, and you're playing completely fair normally... Why does what somebody else do ruin your fun in Classic Hardcore? Just do whatever the fuck you want to do, whatever you think is fun. Speaking of which, I'll enter world, right? Um, now that I've caught up. Uh, but do what you want to do, do what you think is fun, and ignore what everybody else is doing. Who cares? Do I have a tier list for leveling speed? Not officially, I'm working on it. So one of the main reasons why I've been working on doing all of these different runs with like every single spec is I want to eventually make a tier list, but I want my tier list to be like fully completely accurate. So I could probably spitball a tier list and you'll hear me throwing out stuff like A tier, B tier, S tier. That is like my spitball guesstimate on what I think they would fall under. Uh, but one of these days, finally, when I have tested every single spec in the game and can accurately rank them all, then we will get a tier list. Hopefully sooner rather than later. I mean, we've been blasting through a lot of these specs, right? So uh, at this rate, shouldn't be too long before I'm able to make it. Uh, you got Architraz on LFG after that. Queuing TVC after level 25 was a mistake. Yeah, I'm kind of surprised that I never got Architraz or Dernholt on that Hunter run. I got Blood Furnace a lot, which is still unfortunate because I had already done Blood Furnace. But I mean, I guess I'd rather get a duplicate Blood Furnace than escape from Dernholt. It at least feels less shitty. Uh, honestly, you do a fantastic job of interacting with chat. Thank you. I try. Uh, it's uh, I mean, it's a lot of work, right? But i that's the main enjoyment I get out of streaming, right? You know, I could do all of these runs in a video. I've done multiple videos where I level and just talk and tell stories and stuff like that. So the entire reason to be streaming this stuff rather than doing it in a pre-recorded video is for chat interaction. You know, if I didn't interact with chat, then like, what's the point? Um, but I, I'm glad you think so. Uh, top chat, I think it's a more for spam protection on like a thousand plus viewer streams. That's, yeah, that's definitely a fair point. I guess if you had like so many viewers where you only wanted to see like, you know, the main messages instead of somebody sending like 10 messages at a time, I could kind of understand that. Yeah, I guess um, not something that really impacts me. 
I do feel like though one of the weird things is top chat is the setting by default. And just statistically speaking, there are going to be more small streamers on YouTube than there are large streamers, right? So I feel like live chat should be the default where you get to see every single message. And then for the big streamers who want to only curate their chat and stuff, you can manually enable it. The fact that like by default, I just miss out on half the messages. It's just a weird setting. And I don't think I can change the default setting. Oh, Jade West uh, became a member. Thank you very much. I have vision that she lacks. Uh... has no idea how to lead our people. Oh, this is, I was like, I realized that Fandral had like weird or i realized this night elf had weird voice lines and i'm like wait that's odd and it's uh fandral Staghelm, which uh i have not played a night elf in classic so i did not realize that he was an npc just chilling in um darnassus and that's cool that he has unique voice lines has no idea how to lead off. his uh his voice is a little bit interesting though Tyrande has no idea how to lead our people stuff like that that is uh uh, where are my other quests? I have one to turn in at the Temple of the Moon. Now, speaking of memberships, I need to, at one point, there, there are so many things that I keep meaning to get around to doing for, like, a membership stuff. Like, right now, I only have, like, the standard um, little icon for, uh, you know, I have, like, the, the picture of my dog, right, which is also my profile picture for, like, the member icon. Um, I'll at some point probably need to get variations of that. I've also thought of making emotes, right? But I don't know. I, To be honest, it's so hard for me to like make emotes for like members because I have never been an emote person. It, like it, when, whenever I watch like streams and stuff like that, I've never, um, I've, I've never done like the whole like spam Twitch chat emotes. So it's hard for me to really understand what the appeal is and therefore what people would want in terms of emotes. So like... I guess if anyone has suggestions on like what you would want as like obviously related to my stream, right? Um, what kind of thing you would want as an emote? Uh, I don't know, maybe like a mechagon or mechanome emote or something like that. That's like the only thing off the top of my head I can think of. Um, but I I don't know. I just can't really think of what people want. But like people have asked me in the past if I'm gonna make emotes, and that's something that you know uh, reminds me. You know, members, um, I need to do that. I just, I, I've never gotten around to it. I'll probably at least to start off with, like, submit, like, because I have to, like, submit the emotes and they have to get approved by YouTube or whatever. So I'll probably do, like, pictures of my pets or something, like, pictures of my dog doing wacky faces. I don't fucking know. That's the only thing that I can think of. That or my cat or something like that. I have a few good, like, images of my cat. Like, my dad, my dad used to have, like, an image or a picture of my cat Mittens that he called like Mittens his bitch please face. So he would basically send me that picture of my cat as like, you know, effectively a reaction emote. Um, so I guess something like that would probably work out well. Uh, I'll have to, I'll look into it eventually. Oh, those, these boots are actually an upgrade, nice. And I have to place these spinnerets, I guess in this fountain. And then go back up and turn this stuff in. We love the dog, awesome. The dog, speaking of the dog, uh, Mr. Tucker, who I, I've mentioned his name before, but he has been, he has been in trouble lately. So uh, Tucker has a bit of a biting problem where sometimes he gets into like this weird like trance state uh, or apparently it's called like possession aggression where like if somebody, you don't even really notice it, but um he will like bite at people uh, if they try to take his toy accidentally. Or like one time, uh, my stepmom was trying to pick up a towel from nearby him, and she didn't even realize that he was like, you know, playing with it because she just saw him sitting remotely near it. And then he like lunged at her and bit her because of that. So he is in some uh, hot water at the moment uh, because of that. He has been a naughty dog. I, mean, I think I still have a light armor kit. Yeah, we. We're looking into ways to train him and stuff like that and uh, make it better. But it's definitely, it's not great. It, it is a little bit unfortunate. Uh, we'll have to figure out how to solve that problem. Um, but also, in, in more less serious news, he lately has been barking at everything. So 
like there's been like construction work around the house recently and it has like he is like the, one of the skittish most skittish puppies i've ever seen i guess he's not a puppy anymore but he acts like a puppy so we still call him a puppy but there will be like someone like you know hammering something very slightly outside you can very faintly hear like don't 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 like at one point and then just from wherever in the house he is and you know i can hear him wherever i am because he's so loud i just hear like Rawr! and then he just runs around the house barking and he will just keep doing that like once he gets set off he will just sit there bark 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 and then somebody will literally need to go find wherever he is in the house which is usually like upstairs like on you know this area where you can see outside of like the windows where he's trying to find where the noise is coming from and you have to like literally go up to him and be like tucker chill the fuck out uh and he has been very very loud lately uh, especially because i think my dad has mentioned before he does like um aw like he teaches aws classes where you know he has like his whole setup in his office and stuff like that um and you know he has to like do that stuff and like you know read through presentations so sometimes in the middle of one of his presentations the dog just starts going and he has to like it interrupts him so yeah, Tucker has been <laughs> difficult as of late. Uh, but, you know, of course, still still love him. He's still a good dog 90% of the time. It's just, you know, the the other 10%, he can be fairly naughty. All right, so Teldrassil quests, mostly done. I've gotten every single one of these rare mobs, except for um, Thregil. And I haven't done these quests in, like, the Barrow Dens, which I guess I'll knock out uh, now that I'm almost done. My dad technically is a streamer, um, I suppose, and in a sense, my dad does stream. But, you know, he, he gets paid to stream, like, official teaching, like, you know, AWS stuff, so it's a little bit different. But, you know, I will say credit to my dad, like, you know, the whole thing about being able to talk for, for hours, right? He can do that, too. Maybe that's where I got it from, right? The ability to, uh, to talk nonstop, because he has to teach, like, a... Eight hour course. He does get like a lunch break though, at least. So but yeah, like his uh his things are long, the lectures. Uh, I actually I took one of his classes like um what was that? At this point it was like half a year ago or so. On like introduction to AWS stuff, because he was trying to teach me about AWS and get me like when I was getting the website set up. So I actually, I, I sat in through the entirety of his class. I even did the, the homework and stuff like that. Um, and, you know, credit to my dad. He's a good teacher, right? Obviously, you know, he's a good teacher in that he helped me with, like, math homework and stuff when I was in, you know, high school and college, maybe not as much, though there were a few times where he definitely did help me, but mostly in high school and stuff like that. But obviously, at this point, I mean, he's literally getting paid to teach, so clearly shows I had I had a good like free tutor when I was a kid it's pretty nice that the website I, I mean the website looks solid um it could definitely be better um but yes my my dad helped me do a lot of the basic setup on the website like my dad got like the the general graphic design stuff set up like the framework and you know, helped me set up, like, you know, the, the different transitions. I obviously did all of, like, the actual guides and pages. And, like, he taught me how to, you know, I, I know how to code, like, from other stuff, but he taught me how to do it for um, AWS. Um, what was the thing? Adam, I think, is, like, the program he installed, which is, like, the the thing where I do all the code. So I do, like, the coding in Adam, and then I have to, like, submit the file um, on AWS, and then it, like, updates the page and stuff like that. So... Uh, he definitely did help me out with that. Um, and my mom is a front-end, or used to be a front-end web developer. And I've been meaning to ask her for, like, help on, like, getting some of that set up. But uh, she moved, like, she moved to Colorado. Uh, when, when was that? I guess it was, like, a few months ago at this point. So at this point, I can only really talk to her through Discord. Um, so it's a bit harder to, like, you know get her to to help with stuff like that but one of these days i'll have to figure it out uh my dad said he's not a web designer he doesn't claim harlden.com as a marvel of design yeah i mean it's at least like it's good as a obviously a starting point right um but definitely we i think we both want to improve upon it long term 
but it's it's at least serviceable, which, you know, I'll give my dad credit for that. Uh, I appreciate that. Uh, I'm also just streaming and teaching WoW stuff. Yeah, pretty much. Um, it's functional exactly, yeah. I mean, for now, that's all that really mattered. Um, do I still think Aff is the best Warlock leveling spec? So, I would say Warlock and Rogue are definitely the two classes that I know the least about. I haven't really tested Destro and Demo nearly enough for me to comment realistically if it's the best. I think Aff is good, though. So, like, I have been told by Warlock players that Destro and Demo have, like, certain problems when leveling up. And considering Affliction is just a good leveling spec, like, it, it checks all the marks, right? Unless Destro and Demo are able to do that stuff but better, which from Warlock players I've heard they can't, I would imagine that uh, Affliction is still the best one. Uh, oh man, this guy's doing this quest at level 9. Props to him. Uh, assumed my AF speed run the... Uh, oh, you just watched my AF speed run the other day, so I assumed it was recent. No, that was actually 8 months ago or so. Uh, it was it was a little while ago, yeah. Um, I've been... I've put Warlock on the polls recently, so... Uh, I'm definitely looking to do another Warlock speed run when I get time. But there's two Night Elf Druids here. Uh, but... You know, it just, it kind of hasn't won yet. In fact, if I look at the poll results right now, let me tab over. Yeah, right now it's unholy, actually, fuck, uh, poor Destruction Warlock, it's actually in last place. So I feel like there is still a chance, you know, it's, um, we, we still have like about 12 hours or so left to go until a, a bit more than that before I finalize the poll results. Uh, Elemental Shaman still, I think, has a chance of overtaking Fire Mage if enough people vote for it, but Destruction Warlock is pretty solidly in last place, uh, so I don't really think we'll be seeing it. Um, wow, there's... I've gotten a lot of comments in the time that I've been streaming. I'm not used to seeing that many, like, notifications on new comments. Um... Uh, Aflock blows everything up in leveling dungeons. Seed of Corruption is so ridiculously broken in AoE. Um, well, so the nice thing about Affliction that I found, because I always used to think Affliction wouldn't be amazing because of the dots, you know, mobs not living long enough to really get the full benefit. But the reality of it is, with stuff like Seed of Corruption, a lot of your stuff, like a lot of what Affliction does is it makes their dot damage instant. So like Seed of Corruption, you apply to multiple things and then you kill one mob and then all the mobs just kind of chain explode and just kind of kill each other. So you don't need to wait for like the damage to kind of tick down. It's it's all just about like setting everything up and then blowing up all the mobs in one sitting, which is, you know, burst damage like that is always ideal. Um, My dad said he's now leaving to visit the local tavern. All right. I mean, if you can bring me back food, I would appreciate it. But like, if not, it's all good. Um... What is Rage Claw? Um, I feel like this guy should be the objective of a quest, but like I don't see anything from him, so I guess I don't need to kill him for anything. Huh. Any classic players know what the hell Rage Claw is? Like, is he for a quest or something? <laughs> Bring us all some mozzarella sticks. Yeah. Oh, they're all running from him. Fuck it. You know, if they're too afraid to fight him, I'll fucking fight Rage Claw. I'm overleveled, so it's not really much of a flex, but like, I guess we'll see if he drops anything. A uh, shiny red apple. Wow. Huge. Yeah, maybe he is a quest objective. I don't fucking know. Seed of Corruption itself is your top damage. Yeah, that's usually the case. Um, the name Rageclaw rings a bell that it was, uh, uh, mentioned or something. Oh, it's the Night Elf Hogger. I can see that. There's another quest called Oban Rageclaw nearby. Oh man, he also has a super fucking fast respawn rate. Yeah, I could see him being the Night Elf Hogger if he respawns this quickly. And he's like two levels above everything else in the subzone, so. Shiny Red Apple will make or break a hardcore run. Ooh, I got a wand. All right. 
I mean, I can't use it, but like, maybe I can sell that on the auction house. It's a, a nice little pickup. I also have no idea where I'm going. Because there's, it says there's something in here, the Ravenclaw Talisman. Also, yeah, what the fuck? This mob just non-stop respawns. I'm gonna just play it safe here, because I could have just not fought him, but I want to get the loot from that mob I killed. Oh, nice, I hit level 13. Alright, I'm gonna loot this mob, and then I'm just gonna back the fuck out, because... Low-level wands are essential for priests, so you'll make bank. Nice. That's good to know. Did I respond to the roguelike question from earlier? Oh, shit. I might have missed that. Uh, I know I missed a few messages, so I was about to go up and scroll. So let me let me find your message. Because um, I think right after uh, Jade became a member, I missed a few uh, messages. Um, Truello said, stopping by to say you're awesome. Thank you. I appreciate it. Uh, oh, I see what you mean. Um, will you be making your roguelike app for WoW leveling uh, public? Probably yes. I still, I'm not 100% sure what I want to do for that. And it is one of those things where, like I've said before, I don't want to like paywall any information. So what I will probably do is, I well, I will definitely make like whatever the base version of it is public. So you will be able to, to play it, right? That is something I just want to do because I want people to be able to use it, right? That's obvious um okay how the fuck do i get up there uh maybe i need to go down this tunnel oh rage claws in the way i think maybe i need to no is there a passage here that i just didn't see because i'm blind oh yeah i'm i'm just fucking blind there's a tunnel right here okay um oh shit there's two mobs uh Right. Well, if I wasn't overleveled, that would have been very spooky. But also, one of the reasons why I'm not really paying that much attention is because I am overleveled. And if I die here, I'm fucking terrible at this game. So, yeah. Oh, fuck, okay, that's actually spooky. Um, did it pull? I don't think it pulled. The mob respawning directly on top of me definitely... <laughs> And I, I was like, oh, that is instant karma from me saying that if I die here, I'm dog shit. Uh, thankfully, I did not pull it. That uh, that, that could have been bad. I'm going to kill it here, just taking no chances. Um, Let me just quickly read the other message so I can get back. Uh, really impressed that you read every single message. This is your first time watching me, and uh, congrats. Thank you. I'm glad. I Yeah, I, I like doing that in streams. Um, but to answer your question, Tyrianth, yeah, I'm still not 100% sure how I'll do it going forward. But the original baseline version of it will be 100% free. Um, and it's also one of those where I don't want to like leave people with like an outdated version of it. So I, I don't know how I'll handle it. Like, I'll be honest. Here's the reality of it. Um, it's... Uh, I need to eventually find a way to, like, make money somehow more than just, like, you know, YouTube. Because it it's fine for now, but, you know, I'm not going to sit here and pretend it's great. Um, and I don't want to, like, obviously I'm never going to, like, monetize the leveling guide or anything like that. I don't want to, like, pay well information. So my options are limited. Uh, I definitely want people to have access to that. I will kind of see how I want to do it going forward. Um... But yeah, uh, we'll see. What I might do, I think currently something that maybe I'll consider is everybody will have access to like the the guide, uh, or not the not the guide. It's everybody obviously will have access to the guide. Uh, everybody will have access to like the challenge run format itself. So, um, I maybe I'll pick this quest up because I think these guys are, um. Yeah, I might set up a Patreon eventually. The member system is kind of what I've been using as like a mini Patreon for now. It kind of serves a similar purpose. Um, okay, I thought this was an escort quest for a second. So I didn't want to start it until I was ready, but it's not an escort quest. All right. Uh, yeah, a lot of people have told me to make a Patreon. I might eventually, for now, I'm just doing, you know, the member system. Would highly recommend a Patreon. Yeah. 
Um. Also, wow, these pups got hands. I'm gonna just blast down Green Paw really quickly. Did not expect a green mob to hit that hard. YouTube has that built in. Yeah, Patreon, you know, I still think there maybe is some merit for me to eventually make a Patreon because it does have better features like, oh, no. Uh, okay, I think I'm fine. Um, like, for instance, one thing that I can't really do until YouTube improves its functionality. The only, like, the literal only reason why I'm actually considering a Patreon instead of just doing it all here on YouTube is because there is a significant issue with the way that YouTube does members-only videos. So, I have, I, I've done members-only videos, um, but, like, while I, I only have a few members at the moment, I don't think any of them have actually watched the members-only videos, partially because it's, like, really hard to find them, because there are only two ways to really do it. You can either make a members-only post and basically include the videos there in, like, an un unlisted videos and, like, basically have the post direct people towards it, or you can set the video as members-only, which, I've said this before, it's the dumbest way it's ever you could ever implement it, it basically shows up in recommendations for other people and tells them, you can't watch this. It's like, you. this is a members-only video, you can only watch this if you become a member to the channel. Why the fuck would I want it to be recommended to people then? Like, that is just the dumbest thing I could ever do. Because, like, not only is that just stupid, right? Basically showing people, like, you know, you can't, like, basically advertising something, you can't watch this. And you'll see... The, the only time people actually use this, from what I've seen, uh, is, you know those, like, cryptocurrency channels? Like, that Kira TV and CoffeeZilla will dunk on and stuff? They will have these, like, members-only videos on, like, the top ten ways to make money in crypto, and it's members-only. So it makes it seem like you're like, ooh, wow, I better pay this guy money so I can watch his video. But, like, that's also not the point of, um, why I would want to make a members only video the entire point of why i would want to do that and the ones i've done so far are like behind the scenes stuff like i made a members only video where it was just like unedited footage of me doing preparation for the world record speed run so the the cult here in druid run that i did i have it like in a playlist right now um it's like four hours of me testing random shit to try and prepare for doing that run which is one of those things where I'm sure, you know, if somebody became a member to my channel and they liked watching my actual leveling runs, that's something they may find interesting. Because, like, you know, I go into, like, a little detail on why I'm testing certain things. I also, I tried out a few items that I didn't end up including in the run because they didn't end up being as good. But maybe the thought process of, like, you know, why I thought this may be good and how it didn't pan out, somebody might find that interesting. So that's the type, type of, like, bonus whatever stuff um, that I would do. I also... I've uploaded, like, um, uh, what's it called? Like, unlisted dungeon runs and stuff like that, which, you know, just un uh, generic stuff that honestly wouldn't perform well as an actual video, but, you know, maybe somebody wants to watch it. Um, what about putting them into a playlist? That's exactly what I did. Yeah. Um, so if you, Psycho Teddy, if you want to watch it, there is a playlist on my channel that you should have access to called Members Only. Um, or I think I, I just called it Members, right? And it is exactly what you just described. Um, the problem is... I think this goes to show, I don't think you even realized that that was a thing. <laughs> and it's like, there's no real great way to communicate that through, like, you know, the, the member system on YouTube. And, like, the ability for people to find it is terrible. So I either completely shoot myself in the, shoot myself in the foot by making it, like, a public members-only video, which is terrible, would never do that, or I do the playlist solution. But the unfortunate thing about that is, like, members don't even realize it's a thing. So... It, it kind of defeats the purpose. It sucks. Um, so all that to say, I think I've kind of proved my point there. Uh, it's YouTube system is terrible with that. It, it makes it horrifically difficult to basically have like behind the scenes, you know, special videos like that bonus things. And that is something that Patreon does really well. So hopefully YouTube gets their fucking act together and fixes that. So you know, I can actually have a functioning, you know, bonus behind the scenes footage type system in place. Um, but at the moment, I may do Patreon for that. I don't fucking know. Um, but I, I haven't really looked into it. I'm just kind of hoping that eventually YouTube fixes that stuff. Also, what mobs do I need to kill for this item? It's, um, Shaman Voodoo Charm. 
Okay, so it specifically drops off the Gnarl Pine Shaman mobs. Uh, there's none up there. So I guess I'll just keep walking around until I find a shaman. Uh, but yeah, that's... Oh, fuck. Somebody's already killing one. That's the unfortunate thing about the current YouTube member system. Uh, that, that is like the biggest downside to it at the moment. Uh, and I've been trying to find a workaround. It's a little bit more difficult. This is the prequest to killing Rageclaw. Ah, well, now we know what he's for. <laughs> so that's at least nice to know. You're probably blind, but you're not seeing it in the list of playlists. Um, if you check... Uh, one thing that would make it very easy to find, check the, the recent posts, because you will definitely be able to see the members-only posts. That, for whatever reason, YouTube made it so the posts only show to members, but the videos show to everyone, which, like I said, dumb. Um, but I made a post that basically has a link to it, so you should be able to find it there. And then... Uh, I, I'll probably try to reorganize the playlist, but everything is within there. What I did is I, I've organized the playlist now, like unlisted videos, um, that I don't have up for whatever reason. Um, some of them I will include in other playlists, like, uh, you know, old speedruns are, even if they are unlisted, they'll go in like the WoW speedruns playlist. Um, but some like really old fun videos that I, I don't really want up like publicly I threw in there just in case people might enjoy watching them but uh, there are also a few like you know bonus footage type things on there especially the recent uh cult here and druid one uh you remember because you like my content um yeah I mean I appreciate that I figured that was the case um so I I appreciate that regardless uh but still I mean I I know that that's like I know you didn't become a member for like the bonus videos right but i still feel bad that you know something that i've been trying to get set up isn't clear and i don't really know what else i can do because you know youtube's uh side of things is just kind of fucked oh there's a shaman okay uh no one around so i should be able to get this tag nice um did somebody oh i guess they must be using the add-on that's why everybody knows that they died the playlist is in the member post what a shit show YouTube is. Yeah, that is... It's such a pain trying to figure that stuff out. Um, and one of the other problems, right, is because, like, you know, I set that up a while ago before anyone actually became a member. It's one of those things where it was really hard for me to actually figure out if everything's working because there's also no setting for me to see what it's like for a member. Like, I can't view my channel and stuff like that from the perspective of a member, so I just kind of have to guess. And I have to set the stuff up and be like, I hope it's working. Um, but I didn't really have anybody to ask. Um, I guess technically, I think my dad, my dad like did the membership thing. So I probably could have asked him, but he did that like later on. So I never actually really thought of that. But that, in hindsight, probably would have been a good idea. Uh, making sure it actually worked on my dad's end. Um, oh shit, there's, see there's a shaman patrolling up and down and I want to kill it before this guy's done drinking. Come on. Get the moon fire. I got it. Okay. I feel bad for this guy, but I need the mob tags. Kanye pops into being a member. I mean, he did it on his own. Uh, I think I didn't even ask him to. At one point, he, um, like, after I had set it up, I think he noticed that I had set it up. And then I just got the notification. And then later on, like, you know, when I went to make coffee or something and I passed by him, he's like, by the way, I became a member to your channel. Like, yeah, I saw <laughs> it gives me a notification. Um, but yeah, he did that like a little while after I got it set up. Uh, Negan said, Harlden, would you be enthusiastic for an expansion where WoW enters the metaverse? Uh, because of the gnome, because the gnomes invented, invented virtual realities and one of the raid bosses is a giant virtual bank named Megapoly. I mean, that is oddly specific, which I guess is kind of the theme. Um, but look, if Megapoly is like a banger raid fight, like, you know, Painsmith, Raznal tier, really fun boss, I'm down. I don't, at this point, I do not give a shit what the story is. If it's fun, that's all I care about. So, yeah, I'd be down for Megapoly if he's a fun raid boss. Oh, shaman shit. Nice. Uh, just came back. Did I say some of my older speedrun guide videos have been delisted or are available via YouTube member sub? To be fair, most of them are... I don't even know which, um, which videos are now only YouTube member. Yes, 
and I have I have a playlist with all of them in there. But I should also note all of the actual speedruns and guide videos that are actually maybe not the guides. The guides I I don't think I have in public playlists. I maybe I do somewhere. Um, the speedruns all the way back to like the original one are still viewable in the WoW speedruns playlist, which is just public. Like anybody can watch that. Uh, all right, I guess. I guess we have to compete for uh, drops on this, but you know, whatever. Um, but yeah, so all of the old speedruns are still there. The type of stuff, the types of old videos that I have on there, to give some examples, is like some of my Torghast speedruns. Um, and not even Torghast speedruns, but I made a few like fun Torghast videos back in the day. Um, like I did layer 8 with no anima powers or something like that. Yeah, that's the kind of stuff where also the editing was like not the best, so I don't really want to include it in the playlist. Um, a few of those, I, those are the ones that I have taken out of every other playlist, but I at least included it in the members playlist. And it's not necessarily a case of like, um, I only want it to be visible to members. It's like, I just don't really want it to be visible to anybody, but I figure, hey, if you already like my content, you know, you probably won't care if the editing is not like amazing and super good and looks like really outdated. So maybe you'll get some enjoyment out of it. That was my reasoning with that. Um, the main thing in the members only playlist, like I said, is like behind the scenes footage, that type of stuff. Those are the types of things that I use the, uh, the members only playlist for. But I have thrown in some of the old videos like that just for shits and giggles, right? Um, also, like, a few a few old, like, clips from my stream. So there was a time when I, like, made... I guess I still kind of do this now, but with, like, shorts and stuff. Uh, but I would take, like, you know, parts from my speedrun, like, little individual rants, and make them into, like, standalone videos. And I made that, uh, like, uh, into the members-only playlist, because I removed those from everything. But technically speaking, I think if it's... All of those things, all those little rants, are somewhere in one or two speedruns. Um, I don't really think any of that is, like, unique to uh, those videos, per se. Megopoly takes damage based on how much gold you have. Ooh, that's an interesting mechanic. Uh, that's kind of pay to win, I think. Uh, are there any shaman on the bottom floor here? No, it's just all Gnarl Pine defenders. Um... Yeah, Gnarlpine Augur. Hmm. Perhaps even pay to lose, yeah. Uh, let me scroll up a little bit. I think I missed one or two messages earlier, but I just want to double check. Uh, oh yeah, I did miss a few. Um... see uh. oh yeah i was also yeah i was talking about the um the challenge run add-on which i'll have to do at some point i think these guys are doing a different quest than i am so at this point i'll leave the group uh probably already thought of this um I just saw, if you die in hardcore, do you die in real life? Thankfully, no. Uh, but I mean, technically, I'd be fine so far, because I have yet to die in classic hardcore. I'm still waiting for me to get my cheeks clapped by something. I've almost died a few times, but I've managed to scrape by by the skin of my teeth in every single scenario. Um, Barrowdens are second to Rabbit Warrens in Confusion. Uh, confusion, yeah. The layout is definitely um, a little bit hard to follow, for sure. Get my refreshing spring water. I'll throw this here. Just, I'm using it when I still have like most of my mana. Uh, but yeah, distracting insanity. So you probably already thought of this. Would be good to see if you're uh, able to create a program that can update the site and add on. You know, update one push everywhere. Maybe I think it would just be a different format though. So, like in theory, obviously I understand like one push update is like important for you know companies that are updating across multiple platforms. I get that that is like an important thing to have in a lot of scenarios. I don't really think that the add-on in the site would be transferable because for the record, even after I've already made the add-on, I'm not going to be changing the guide to. I'm gonna decline now because I I kind of want I honestly 
I want my shaman tags, and I want to get this quest item so I can get the fuck out of this fucking Barrow Warrens area. Um, man, this is such a low drop chance, dude. What the fuck? Um... Uh, but yeah, so... The, the guide itself, I still think I will always continue keeping the written and video guides as big picture stuff. The add-on is a little bit different because the add-on would be like step-by-step -step instructions, which is also one of the reasons why it's not necessarily easy to, you know, make an add-on just from scratch, right? Like, if I wanted to make a basic add-on that just showed my guide on screen, I can probably do that fairly easily, but that's not what I'm going to be doing. The entire point would be to actually adapt it to an add-on format, where I have, like, you know, every single quest step with, like, little tips and stuff like that, and it goes into, like, much more detail and actually points you in the right direction. That kind of stuff isn't really that important, and honestly is a bit fluff for, like, a written or video guide. You know, don't really want to do that. So, I would want to make sure, like, it would, honestly, every single thing would be different. I would the video guide would obviously give more visual examples. The written guide would maybe give a few more like small details, but it would still be more big picture, like here are all the main things you need to keep in mind when going through the zones. And then the add-on itself would of course be like, you know, the step-by-step -step instructions. So I don't really think, you know, something like that would really apply, but it is it's a good thought, right? Um, something to consider, at least obviously streamlining streamlining the process and making it future proof is always something good to you know, be mindful of when you're making new things. Um, oh, this is gonna pull. Fuck. Not a big deal. Uh, there's a Gnarlpine Defender as well. I should be fine because they're low level. Um, there we go. Not too bad. Ooh, Malachite. I mean, you get like a shit ton of Malachite, but I'll never be unhappy to see it. Uh, Negan said, I'm on a vacation in Utah to get away from your grandparents who are still arguing about the Jailer. You ran into Bellular in the desert. He was praying to an ancient statue of Asmongold. That is uh, some interesting hijinks you've gotten yourself into. Uh, okay, yeah, I think that was... Oh yeah, Analana said, I remember that from YouTube Red adverts. They would uh, show you a 10 second clip and then try to hard sell you on the subscription. Yeah, like personally, I always hated that. So the last thing I wanted to do was do that with my videos, right? Um, so I hate that that's like the only real option YouTube gives you. Uh, someone got level 30? A bunch of people have level 30, yeah. Um, I don't remember when that was. Uh, but yeah, a bunch of people have gone there. If I look... Um, Oh, the quest item finally dropped. Yeah, there is right now 25 people at level 30. A bunch of... Why are they in Caverns of Time? What the fuck are they doing there? Well, that is... That is interesting. Uh, and there must be some, like, guild doing a weird... Are they trying to do, like, a level 30 raid on, like, the fucking dragons outside of Caverns of Time? That's the only thing I can imagine. That is... Odd. Um, and then, yeah, there's some people doing Shadowfang Keep. Uh, that guy has the name Rem. That's neat. Uh, but yeah, there's a decent amount of people, uh, who have already hit 30. Um, I need to be careful here, because if I fall off the bridge and pull a bunch of mobs, I actually could die to that, so... <laughs> I'm not gonna read that, but uh, they picked an interesting place to do that for sure, Veros. This is PTR. Yeah, I'm I'm playing on the hardcore PTR. Um, yeah. So obviously, level thirty is the cap here. Honestly, I'll be happy if I just hit level thirty once on the PTR. I don't really think I'm gonna level like too many other characters until official servers. Official. I'll I mean, I guess it depends on how it goes. Maybe I, like, die really early and get tilted and stop playing. It's- oh yeah, it's open. It's, uh, it opened up on Thursday, I think. Um, yeah, it's, it's been open for a few days now. 
You can say they're having a good time, yeah. Oh yeah, there you go. Somebody else just hit 30. Kotir. Are they in the guilds? I'm in some big guild called Uwu. Um, uh, I don't see Kotir in this guild, though. One thing I liked, the um, I think it was either the guild leader or like one of the uh, the highest levels in this guild when I looked. Yeah, uh, one of like the officers, I guess, in this guild, if you can call him that. I don't know how they got officer rank. His name Joe Goldberg, which, you know, I've been watching you lately. Uh, so I thought that was a neat little name. Um... Okay, so now I need to kill Rageclaw. I'm just going to wait for Rageclaw to patrol around here, because I know he comes at this point. Um, did I hear that there's a Fortnite-themed mechanic that got data mined on PTR? Um, yeah. I mean, honestly, I think people are really overreacting about that. I saw some, like, absolutely just demented takes about people saying that they're going to quit the game if they ever add Fortnite to World of Warcraft. Like, what the fuck? <laughs> it's data mined mob abilities. Like, I think one of the dumb things that WoWhead did is they said it was a boss ability. It's not a fucking boss ability. It's just a data mined generic uncategorized spell used by a mob. Um, so that could mean literally anything. Uh, the fact that there is a generic data mined set of spells that are Fortnite themed could either mean that there is a rare mob that has Fortnite-themed mechanics, which Blizzard doing weird, funny reference stuff with rare mobs is nothing new. Uh, that is completely par for the course. Um, and it could just be, like, I don't know, Blizzard decided to troll people? I, I no fucking idea, right? Uh, where do I use this? Oh, I have to use this on his body. Oh, fuck. Um... But yeah, it is it is just non-information. It's a classic example of Wowhead randomly trying to like stir up bullshit drama over just a non-existent topic. It, I don't know. There is, um, uh, whatchamacallit? It, it's just, yeah, I don't know, it's weird. It's a fucking stupid Wowhead article for sure. Um, I think it's neat that the, um, that it's happening. Like, I don't. I don't really care one way or another that they're adding Fortnite abilities to like a random mob, but the way Wowhead worded it, Wowhead said something to the effect of like, uh, Fortnite uh, boss mechanics data mined on the whatever PTR, and then they said something like complete random bullshit speculation, something to the effect of like, at the end of the post, could this mean that we'll be getting a Fortnite themed raid boss soon? Like. I mean, it could mean literally fucking anything, so I guess. But why are you, a website that's supposed to be reporting on actual news, making rampant fucking speculation like that? It's just fucking stupid. Um, and, like, honestly, even if Blizzard does include those mechanics in a raid boss, um, who fucking cares? They literally had an Among Us raid boss. And it, like, I mean, Lords of Dread was... I don't think it was a bad boss, but it was like... Not the most popular boss for a variety of reasons, um, but honestly, I think the Among Us mechanic was one of the cooler parts of it. I think it was, like, actually interestingly implemented. The only thing that was mildly annoying about it is that, for whatever reason, the Among Us mechanic is what kind of sparked their crusade against, you know, add-ons being able to find hidden auras, because some developer was probably really butthurt that within like a day of the raid coming out people had already put together a weak aura that told you exactly how to handle the among us mechanic and you didn't need to actually do it yourself which i mean admittedly it's a cool idea but that's the kind of thing that's just really fucking annoying to have to do in the middle of a boss fight so yeah i i wouldn't um mind as much this guy said ha ha we got it I don't know what that means. Um, I probably missed some other context, because I don't think he was talking to me. Um, I think I can take the quest reward, and it will just... Um, let me just get rid of something in my bags. Brushwood blade. There we go. Oh, Spicy Knife became a member. Thank you. Uh, yeah, like I said before, I mean, if you're, because I know you mentioned that before, if you're looking for the, um, 
the other videos. Uh, find the post. There's a member's post directing you to the playlist, and then you should be able to find them. They're in there somewhere. Uh, I've gotten a few of them. Uh, let's see. His officer rank is Femboy, or Femboy Enjoyer Uwu indeed, yeah. They definitely have gotten their roles on point, but I think my role is still Initiate. So, uh, where am I? Yeah, here I am, Lenara. I, yeah, I'm still Initiate. So they gave, like, a fancy role to, oh, this guy's thing is Twitch TV, by the way. Um, maybe they gave a special role for him? I don't know. Um, but my role isn't, like, thematic or anything like that, so, lame. Uh, what are people talking about in the guild chat? Uh, what goes best with Pally? Rogue. Frostmourne. Why not two Pallies? A Pally and a Warrior would be nice. I was a Pally healer when TBC came out. Two times Pally is the best. Blood Elf. Rogue goes well with Pally. Rogue Pally, Lock Pally are good. Every class that isn't sharing armor type. Are they talking about, like, leveling duo setups? I guess that must be what it is. And then someone said, two Pally is good until 20, then other classes start pulling way more damage. Eh. I thought Pally in Original Classic was actually one of the slower specs to level. Oh, I am not an expert. Uh, okay, so I need to turn in one quest in Dalinar, and then one quest over there. And I'm almost done with all of Teldrassil. Might be a friend of the leader? Yeah, probably a friend of the leader. I mean, they also, that said, they have Twitch TV in their name, right? Something TTV. So it could just be memeing on them for linking their Twitch. Which. Probably something I would do. Sure, I'll find them. Awesome. Yeah, if for whatever reason you're not able to find them, just let me know. Like, shoot me a Discord message after the stream and I can help you. Um, but hopefully they're not too hard to find. Uh, Wowhead can sometimes be absolutely bonkers. Yeah. I, I can't remember if I ranted about it on stream or in my Discord, uh, but there is a Wowhead article about Diablo 4 called Blizzard, Please Let Me Spend My Money in the Cash Shop. And it's basically saying that they're a collector and they like buying all of the things in the cash shop to fill out their collection. And they're upset that the cash shop stuff doesn't look good, so they don't feel as motivated to spend their money on cash shop items, and they wish it looked cooler, and they hope Blizzard puts some of the cooler armor sets in the cash shop in the future. And it, I mean, that has to be, like, the dumbest thing that any human has ever said in the world, right? Like, the fact that that not only is something that anyone actually thought and then said, yeah, this seems like a reasonable opinion to share with other human beings. But then they decided to make a Wowhead article about it as if it's actual fucking news. I I just, I saw that, like, I don't, I haven't played Diablo 4, but I was looking at Wowhead for something World of Warcraft related, and I saw that article, and it just fucking broke my brain. Like, how can one person be so fucking stupid that they think Typing those words out is a good idea. Just wild shit, man. Um, I, there's still a lot of good stuff about Wowhead, but the quality of like the articles on Wowhead has fucking tanked over the years. These days, some of it is just fucking trash. Stuff like that, especially. Like, Jesus Christ. Uh, what do I still need to craft? Um... I guess I can move my healing potion up here, and then I guess I'll buy another cooking recipe, why not? And I'll make some more bandages with my linen cloth. Uh, the top post in the membership section has the link to the members playlist. Oh, awesome. I didn't realize that. That's good to know. Uh, Paladin is slow as hell level, but it's basically built around group play. Yeah. No, obviously I know Paladin is like very good in groups and stuff, especially Holy Paladin, while leveling up in Classic, but... Uh, I've heard, like, Rep Pally and especially, you know, while leveling up can be very, very slow. Um, yeah, okay, I'm glad other people are agreeing with me on how ridiculous that post was. That, yeah, that one was fucking weird. Uh, can I cook anything else? I don't think I have any, yeah, I don't really have anything else. Uh, 
can't really learn any new recipes either, so... All right. Reading the article, it seems pretty bonkers. The color palette would be out of... Oh, yeah, they talked about, like, the fairy mounts. Or not the, the, not the mount, the fairy appearance. Um, the fairy dragon thing. Um, the concept remains. It's an iconic piece that players want to use. Yeah, fucking... It's just so, so dumb. So absolutely stupid. Yeah, so stuff like that has made me just really not like Wowhead anymore. I mean, I still use it, I'm going to be honest, because, like, they are still a good source of information. But, uh, I will definitely openly criticize it when possible. Ooh, okay, that's actually a really nice quest reward. Uh, yeah, that is significantly better than the dagger I have. I guess the only advantage to the dagger is it's, um, has plus two attack power, but, I mean, still... Ooh, there's another follow-up quest. Kill Ursal the Mauler. Right, where is that? Oh, oh, he's all the way in the corner here where that rare Grimma is. Right, I guess I'll have to go fight him. And I can take that. I will still need to level up my staff skill a little bit. Uh, I can go ahead and make some light leather from ruined leather scraps. Do I even need this mace anymore? Actually, this is still better. That's crazy. This one-handed mace that I looted, I don't even remember where I got this. I think I just killed a random mob and looted this off it. But I've been holding this in my bags, because whenever I eventually learn how to use one-handed maces, this thing, it's better than the fucking staff I just got, despite being one-handed. Crazy good. And that's one of the nice things about killing all of these rare mobs all the way across Teldrassil. I've managed to get, like, a bunch of really nice, like, odds and ends items. Um, like, where was it? I guess I've replaced most of them. I got Bard's Cloak. This was off one of the rares I killed. Um, I think the Gypsy Gloves were off a rare. And everything else has been, um, just, like, either quest rewards or I crafted it. Why is it important to kill the rare mobs? It's not. Um, or do you mean, like, retail? Because obviously, retail leveling, it's important to kill rare mobs for experience. Um, as for why I'm killing rare mobs in Classic, the only important reason, I would say, is gear. Like, every single time you kill a rare mob, you get, like, a guaranteed some sort of gear drop. Uh, it's not always necessarily something that you can use, but, like, I got, like I said, this cloak off a rare mob, which was pretty good. So I've been going around hunting rares just to get that. Now, there is one rare, this one, Black Moss the Fetid, which I killed the other day, and it drops a quest item that starts like a mini quest chain. So um, that one, I guess, is worth getting, but the other ones aren't nearly as important. So I'm at least going to check this cave for Thregel just to see if he's up, because I think it would just be really cool to like have killed every single rare mob in Teldrassil before moving on. But, you know... If he's not up, it's not the end of the world. And I'll just do the last quest and then move on to the bear form quest. Uh, and also, this stuff is, like, grossly underleveled. Oh, another guy died there. What level is this dude? This dude's level 8. Okay, he's probably high enough level to tackle this cave. This is the cave, by the way, where I almost died. So... If you didn't watch uh, the stream last weekend and you want to see, like, the clip of me almost dying, I actually turned it into a YouTube short. I might do that going forward with, like, you know, little fun moments like that that are, you know, I, I would say interesting to watch. Um, but because that was, like, a really, really close call, uh, I decided I was going to make it a YouTube short. So that's up on my channel, you know, for anyone who missed the last stream and didn't see that. Let me make sure Thregel only spawns. Oh, he spawns all the way throughout the cave. So I guess there are multiple spawn locations. Or no, he only spawns here and there. Alright. Yeah, based on what I can see from here, it doesn't look like it's up. So, this one singular rare mob does elude me in the end. Uh, but... Eh. I got all the rest of them. Uh, this guy's in the wrong spot. I'm... You know what, I'll help this guy out. Because I imagine he's probably here to, uh, he's probably trying to kill this guy, the one that almost killed me the other day. So I don't want him to die in this cave. 
Uh, I think I did that at like level 9 and I still almost died. So, figure I'll make sure he gets out of here alive. Uh, cool, thanks. No problem. Uh, I am being careful because I think if I get too close to that mob... Wait a second. The mob that almost killed me isn't here. Does he have multiple spawn points? Is that why Questy was telling me to go to the wrong place? Ah. Oh. So, I remember when I almost died to the quest mob, one of the reasons it almost killed me is I pulled multiple, like, grells at the same time, and I had to, like, you know, deal with two different mobs at once, and that was, like, really sketchy. Uh, but it looks like that guy isn't here now, that quest mob, so I think he must have multiple spawn locations within the cave, and that explains why Questy was sending me in the wrong direction. It was probably directing me towards just one of the possible spawn locations. Well, that makes sense. That also means that I must have gotten a really bad spawn location for that guy, because he's right next to multiple mobs. Um, well, now I feel even better about being able to handle that quest, if it's not even guaranteed that you're going to get him in the worst spot. Uh, fastest way to find the next area, though, instead of backtracking all the way. Once I have mana, I'll show this guy. I should also buff him up. Uh, here you go. A few thorns and mark the wild. And then uh, you can head up... Well, I can pull this mob down with Moonfire, and we can fight it on the lower level here. I think so. I think it should run. Or is it going to evade bug? Okay, it's evade bugging. I think maybe I could get it to snap to me, but I'm not going to bother with it, because you can just do that. Easily hop up. Um, there's a good... There's an angle that you can do this at. Ah, shit. But this jump is particularly tight. No. Actually, this cave may have an easier route. Is this tree branch? Yeah! Alright. That actually makes it much easier. It is possible to make that jump, because this cave layout, like, you know, Blizzard has reused it in a million other places. Um, so, oh! Oh, Threggle's up! Oh, no shit! It just spawned on top of us! Uh, well, that's fucking lucky! <laughs> uh, alright, well, I did manage to find every single rare mob in Teldrassil. Um, unfortunately, it seems like it's stuck on this guy. But it literally just respawned. Ooh. Uh, keen machete. Do I need this? No, but the hunter probably does. Um, uh, shit. Ah! This is actually... Okay, there we go. Um... Some leather healing potions. Um, does he have armor kits? Let me inspect. There you go. Alright. Uh, well, that's actually quite nice. I did not expect to find Thregel literally spotting directly on top of me. Uh, so now my map looks all pretty. Every single Teldrassil rare mob killed. I am quite happy with that. I am, like, literally 100%ing the zone. Also makes me glad I actually checked this cave. Uh. Um. There's also sometimes a chest spawn here. I think I found one last time. Uh, oh, there's a dead night elf over there. Corpse of... Oh, I can't read that. Yeah, look, Lord Melanus. That was the area that Questy was telling me to go. He must... Yeah, he has multiple spawn locations. Well, shit. This one seems easier, though, because I think you can separate him from the other mobs. Which wasn't the case before. Uh, oh, I missed um, one of Spicy Knife's messages. Their spec guides are real inconsistent as well. I'm guessing because they have different people. Yeah, for sure. Um... The spec guides on Wowhead, it's very much, like, it's dependent on the guide writer. Oh, shit, that did leash. Okay. So, at least in this case, you do need to fight multiple mobs at the same time. So, I would have still probably struggled with Lord Melanus if I did fight him here. But, yeah, I mean, with a, a level 13 druid and, I you know, another player, definitely makes it much easier. Oh, he was going on that quest. All right, perfect. Yeah, what level is Lord Melanus? Level 8. 
So he probably would have been in trouble uh, if he had tried to solo it on his own. I don't want him to end up on the floor like that other person. It's all too common a sight. Harled in Teldre or speed running Teldressel 100%, yeah. It is kind of fun, you know, I've... Because one of the nice things about, like, classic hardcore, and especially, like, this stuff, is it makes me feel, like, rewarded for going out of my way to explore and do all of this other shit. And that's the kind of thing that, you know, I always like doing while leveling up. You know, during speedruns and stuff, you never get a chance to do that. So this is kind of like a leveling format that actually really works the way I enjoy. Um, you know, I know a lot of people think I like doing speedruns, but the reality of, like, speedrunning is speedrunning is a way for me to turn something that inherently I don't enjoy, namely like retail leveling, and making it into something fun. So I don't really love retail leveling, you know, at face value. I find it kind of like, you know, boring and formulaic. So by doing speedruns, I'm able to take that and turn it into like a fun little optional challenge. But like for classic, for instance, like I said, the thing that I like doing is exploring and, you know, basically being super duper over prepared and finding all of like the rare mobs and looting chests and whatnot. That's how I have fun leveling in classic. So uh, hardcore makes you actually feel like that's important because being as prepared as possible for every situation is like ideal. Classic Darkshore is one of your favorite zones too. Yeah. I'm really looking forward to going there too. Cause I, I played Darkshore a few times back in the day when I, um, is this an upgrade for this guy? Let me just double check. Um, yeah, I played Darkshore back in the day, like way back when I was a kid. And I um, played in like original classic. Okay, no, his pants are better. Uh, all right. Yeah, and then we can leave party. Uh, well, I don't know if he would have managed to do it on his own or not, but I at least feel nice about, like, A, finding Thregel, and B, helping out this Night Elf Hunter get through the point that almost killed me. Because if it was anywhere else, I would maybe feel, like, a bit bad about, like, giving him too much help, but, like, that cave is fucking spooky. As I know firsthand, so. It's a fun way to... Fun, like, little poetic way to end my journey in Teldrassil, right? It's to save... Potentially save a hunter from the same cave that almost killed me. Weapon skill doesn't matter much for druids and melee because shapeshift forms automatically assume max skill. Really? I actually did not know that. That is interesting. Obviously, right now, though, like, I don't have my shapeshift forms yet, so it's still uh, useful for me to make sure my weapon skill is leveled up. But that is good to know. I actually was not aware that um, that was a thing. So now I need to turn in this quest, and then I need to go all the way down here, kill Ursal the Mauler, and we'll check for Grimma, I guess, while I'm there. In fact, what I'll probably do is I will uh, do this quest and I'll, like, head along the edge here where Duskstalker is. So maybe I find him again and, I don't know, I can get, like, another green or something. Uh, some of your favorite memories of old Vanilla WoW is when you leveled Druid on Alliance on a PvP realm and getting into Ashenvale World PvP nonsense. Yeah, I... What was it? I leveled a Worgen Rogue, which, like... It's kind of a weird combination for me, right? Because I rarely ever level rogues. Um, and I I definitely uh, don't play Worgen very often. But back in... what It was either Kata or Mop. I think it was Mop, yeah. Back in Mop, um, for fun, I leveled a Worgen rogue on some random server. Because like I don't really play Alliance, right? And I've never really played Alliance. But for whatever reason, I just felt like trying Worgen, and because I rarely play Rogue, I decided to level a Rogue. And in, um, I joined some random guilds, uh, don't really, I, I barely talked to them after the fact, because it was like one of those things where I was just like leveling a character, never like was a long-term thing. Um, but I joined some random guild, and while I was questing in the Badlands, there was this other Horde player who ganked me. And then I ganked him back. And we were, like, around the same level. So we kept, like, ganking each other back and forth. And eventually, uh, 
he brought in a friend to help gank me. So then I asked in this random guild that I enjoyed if anybody wants to help me kill a horde that was killing me. So then like three people from this random leveling guild I had joined uh, headed over to the Badlands to help me kill him. And then the horde guy got two more players. And eventually we both had like, it was, I forget exactly how many, but it was somewhere in the realm of like five to six players um, fighting on each side, helping us like kill each other. And they were just brawling out in the open world and it spilled over from the Badlands into... Um, Whatever the one adjacent to it is, Searing Gorge, I think. I always confuse Searing Gorge and Burning Steps. Uh, and in the end, the people in the guild that I joined uh, won over the, the Horde player and their friends. And it like it was actually kind of cool. After all of that happened, the Horde player like walked up to me after releasing and basically slashed bow to me and then walked away. So clearly, like he wasn't doing it. Ooh. Well, see, I already have all these bag slots, but you know what? I'd rather have the multicolored ones, you know, on my bag bar, so that's nice. Oh, there's a chest. Nice. Um, but, like, yeah, so clearly the Horde guy wasn't just trying to gank me, you know, to be an asshole, because clearly by, like, the way that he emoted at the end, I, he must have enjoyed it as much as I did. So I think, you know, he was having a lot of fun as well. Um, but I still remember that to this day. It was, like, one of the most fun, like, organic world PvP experiences I've ever had. Uh, back in, like, Mopper Kata. And it was on, like, a random character, too. Like I said, Worgen Rogue. Something I normally very rarely ever play. Um, but yeah, I really enjoyed that. The funny thing is, at the end, like, I was basically doing nothing. I was just kind of following along, because all the people that were actually doing the fighting was, you know, the max level characters on both sides. And then we were both, like, I don't know, like, level 40 or 50 characters just kind of following along, watching the entire fight unfold. Uh, but it was still, you know, really fun. Uh, that's basically how every South Shore Terran Mill War starts, yeah. Yeah, I, I never personally got engaged in any battles for South Shore or Terran Mill, but... Actually, well, technically speaking, I have had one battle for, uh, for South Shore in my lifetime, but it was not vanilla. I think I mentioned before, uh, that I, uh, I wiped an entire raid of Alliance on my Guardian Druid. Oh, there's a dead mob over there somebody is like killing all the stuff right in front of me i'm worried that the rare mob's going to be up and then they're going to find it before i get to it um but what's it called uh yeah back in legion the actual place where i wiped the entire raid of alliance on my guardian druid was actually south shore because the there was like some alliance guild that was doing like a role play attack on terran mill so they were calling it world PvP. Like, that's the other annoying thing about, like, the way a lot of people do quote-unquote world PvP. Um, they just will camp uh, questing hubs and then, you know, gank low-level players and then say that they're PvPing. Actually, wait, shit, I didn't even notice this. I have a quest called Oaken Scowl that is in this cave right here. I didn't see it because the Duskstalker uh, rare mob thing was covering it up. But, um, alright, well, I can drop down and do this quest. Um, but, like, I remember one case uh, similar was, uh, what was it, Valajar? See, I just opened up the map, and I zoomed out, and I was going to check the Broken Isles to see what the name of the town in Stormheim was. But I'm on, I'm on fucking classic WoW, so, like, can't do that. Um, whatever the main Valajar hub in, uh, in Stormheim was... There was a group of Alliance players on this, like, really infamous guild on my server at the time, Emerald Dream. Uh, and they were ganking a bunch of people at the flight point. So, somebody in my guild got ganked, and then they basically asked in guild chat if anybody could help. So, me and my friends went there, and we spent, um... We spent, like, two hours just guarding the flight point. So, if an Alliance player was, like, you know, peaceful and stuff, we would let them go through, and they can move on. But if anyone from that guild that had been ganking players flew over to that hub, and it was like a major hub, right? Like, whenever someone wanted to do Mob Souls or uh, Halls of Valor, they had to go there. So, like, we found a decent amount of players from that guild stopping by the flight point, and we would kill all of those players on site. So, the guild that had been doing the ganking, we ganked all of their members at that flight point. And eventually, I guess some of them started complaining in their guild chat, because like I said, it was like an infamous World PvP Alliance guild that was doing it. 
Uh, specifically, Division 7, in case anyone plays on Emerald Dream. Yeah, I guess for Emerald Dream players, it's like a semi-well-known name, so maybe you've heard of it. Um, but Division 7, we fucking hated Division 7. They were always just camping questing hubs and just griefing players and calling it PvP. So we were always like fighting back against them whenever they would do shit like that. And we were just killing all of their players on site. And then they organized, like, a 15-player raid to go and kill our group, which was, like, five people. But, like, here's the thing about the average player in a lot of, like, those Emerald Dream World PvP guilds. They suck so much ass. They're, like, they have generic starting gear and they think they're god PvPers because they gank, like, a low-level player at, like, a flight point or something. Um, oh, this guy's elite. Oh, shit. Okay, wait, let me focus up for this. Um, in fact, you know what? I'm gonna use my Summon Timberling thing. Maybe should have done that. I got this as a quest reward from fighting, uh, Black Moss the Fetid. That rare mob that I showed earlier that I said starts a quest. And you know what? It's one-time use. I'm never gonna use it again. But I figure if there's ever a good spot to use it, now is the time. Especially because I'm fighting another one of those, like, you know, little, uh, bog monsters. Whatever these things are called. Uh, I also have, like, an instant cast healing sprouted frond thing that I could use, but I don't think I need it. I have read on- I, I checked the Wowhead comments on this little guy, the Cleansed Timberling, to see uh, what it did. And apparently it's basically a hunter pet on full aggressive mode 100% of the time, so I'm gonna need to be a little bit careful here. Oh, fuck. <laughs> uh, okay, apparently Oak and Scowl respawns, like, instantly. I almost tried to fight that other mob. That maybe wouldn't have gone so well. But yeah, I'm gonna need to be careful here, because I don't want this pet to just, like, immediately start attacking things and dragging me into combat. Uh, but we got a, a little buddy following us. He lasts for 20 minutes, apparently, according to Alhead. Out here trying to find the Lost Broken Isles 11 years too early. Yeah, exactly. Um... But yeah, so Division 7 made like a 15-player raid group to try and kill us, and they just got completely demolished. Especially because I was already playing Vengeance DH at that point, and Vengeance DH was so fucking good for World PvP back in, um, uh, in Legion. Vengeance DH was literally unkillable. Like, the thing about Guardian Druid is Guardian Druid scaled exponentially with the amount of targets you added. So Guardian Druid was still strong in like small scale PvP, and it was still kind of honestly unkillable. But the thing about Vengeance is like before Spirit Bomb had a target cap, Vengeance was able to just erase massive raid groups off the planet just as easily as Guardian, but also Vengeance single target burst. Back in the day with, you know, Fiery Brand, Soul Carver, Spirit Bomb combo, you could just demolish people better than a DPS could. And you would be unkillable while doing it. So, Vengeance DH's capping, or camping flight points, it doesn't matter how many people they throw at me, I will just drop a Fiery Brand, Soul Carver combo on their healer, erase them from existence, and then just cleave down their entire raid group while they're unable to kill me and my friends, you know, contribute on damage. Um... But yeah, it, it was a little bit ridiculous uh, how strong certain tanks were for World PvP back then. Fun as hell, though. Oh, and all that to say, the thing I was mentioning before, when I did that, like, gigantic, like, 40-man alliance raid wipe, it was because, I don't know if it was Division 7 or a different guild, they were doing some, like, RP bullshit of, like, camping Terran Mill, and they had, like, regrouped to South Shore, which, like, the ruins of South Shore, or whatever, at that point it already was that. Um... And then Warsong Battalion, the guild that I was in at the time, was organizing like a counter raid to go. And they were like sitting there doing like this RP bullshit. And I just popped into flight form, dropped into the middle of the gigantic Alliance raid sitting at South Shore <laughs> and just popped all of my cooldowns and just fucking erased them. And they were like a few people noticed that I was going in. So like there were a few people just following me and they ended up like at least cleaning up some of the healers. But... I think, like, I kind of technically, maybe I violated a few, like, war laws or something like that, uh, because, you know, they, they hadn't officially declared that they were going to battle yet, I'm just like, fuck this shit, I'm just going in early. Especially because, like, the, the guild leader, Himanshu, had, like, dragged me out of, like, a Mythic Plus dungeon group, basically begging me, 
uh, begging me to come help him do his world PvP bullshit. And I'm just fucking sitting there in Terran Mill, like, minutes are going by while they're doing all this, like, fucking RP shenanigans. And I'm just like, look, dude, if you want me to help you fucking wipe this raid of Alliance, I'll do it. But I'm not gonna sit here listening to your stupid-ass speech, right? So I went in there, killed all 40 players, went back to doing my Mythic Plus, um, and, I mean, I did think... I pissed off a few players because I know some people obviously were there for like, you know, the RP thing, which, you know, not knocking it, but like, you know, if they're going to drag me out of doing my dungeons to help them out, they better make it snappy. Uh, but at the same time, right, I know Hamanchu, the guild leader, did not give a shit whatsoever because, you know, the fact that he managed to, you know, he can now claim that he had a bear druid that could wipe an entire raid group. So uh, to give you an idea of... Maybe I should say this because it was kind of bad of him to say that. But he, like, I, I raided with this guild, right? And I later on eventually left them because uh, Himanshu's girlfriend, Himanshu was the guild leader. He didn't actually have anything to do with the raid team. He just did the PvP stuff. But his girlfriend was one of the raid leaders who I had to co-raid lead with. Um, oh, that's dog shit cape. Uh, so, basically, the way that the entire thing worked out is we did, like, some sort of stupid guild merger where I joined one of my friend's guilds at the start of Legion, and um, that guild kind of fell apart, but, you know, we had, like, a solid core from our raid team that was still looking to raid somewhere else, so uh, they, the leaders of that, like, my friends who were running it, basically said, okay, here's the deal, we're gonna, like, partner with Warsong Battalion and merge our raid teams, and then, you know, the raid leaders of that team, which were my two friends, were going to become co-raid leaders along with, uh, you know, the, the guild leader, new guild leader's girlfriends, and they also wanted me to join them as a co-raid leader. And I was like, I mean, guild mergers never go well, but I just figured, fuck it, why not? Especially because I wanted to keep raiding with my friends. So I tried to talk them out of it. I told them, like, dude, guild mergers never work out, but they're like, nah, come on, it'll be fun, blah, blah, blah. So, because my friends really wanted to do it, I, uh, I stuck it out. And also, not gonna lie, you know, I, I kind of like raid leading sometimes. These days, not so much anymore, but back in the day, I enjoyed it. So I was like, oh, fuck it, I'll give it a shot. But, eventually, one of my friends stopped raiding uh, due to, like, burnout. And then, my other friend, Amar, who I, I think I've maybe mentioned in the past, um, he's one of my Brazilian friends, uh, he was the other guy I was raid leading with. Like, he tried to help me out, but he got so fed up dealing with the guild leader's girlfriend because she, like, the, the entire whole thing was, like, you know, the idea of being co-raid leaders. Which, by the way, let me just say, the idea of a co-raid leader, it's an oxymoron. There is one raid leader, right? The moment you add multiple raid leaders, shit just becomes a mess. Do not ever do that, right? And this is one of the problems. It's because she wanted her guild to be run one way. And, you know, me and my friend Amar were used to running, you know, our raid teams, you know, a different way. And, like, one of the biggest issues that we had is she kept trying to bring in, like, random-ass people to our heroic reclears because she said, well, we need to gear them up for world PvP. And it's like, I'm not gonna take away gear from one of our raiders on fucking heroic Gul'dan to give to some random-ass bumfuck guy you just invited to your guild for world PvP. Like, it's a raid boss kill with our raid team, the loot belongs to our raiders. If they need it, they get fucking priority, right? Like, should be common sense. Um, and, like, I I had to, like, try to argue this. And eventually, my friend Amar just gave up. He basically, he was like, Godspeed, you know, if you want to try to, you know, make this raid team work, go for it. But he just stopped arguing. And he's like, I'm just going to show up. I'm going to kill bosses and uh, stay here until the entire thing implodes. But, like, I tried to make it work, and mind you, this is the, um, this is the same guild where I've mentioned this before. The straw that broke the camel's back is the, the, the girlfriend there, um, invited her friend to, uh, whatchamacallit, invited her friend to, um, join as a tank. Because I, I forget what happened to our last tank. Not something, it wasn't like anything interesting, but we lost our tank, we needed a new one. So she was like, well, I know this really good guardian druid. Uh, okay, that's the mob I need to kill. Um, she's like, well, I know this really good guardian druid um, tank, and, you know, he can come in. I remember I looked at his logs, and I'm like, yeah, he looks solid, right? So uh, we brought him in as a new tank. And this guy already was like, there was something off about him. 
Um, and then, and mind you, at the time, I was still playing a Guardian Druid in raids. And, uh, like, within a few days of this dude starting, uh, like, being my co-tank, he sends me gay furry porn uh, between a male Tarin and a male Panda. And, you know, I, I'm like, I, I kind of played it off because I, you know, I figured it was to the wrong person, right? So I'm like, uh... MT? Like, I don't remember ex exactly how I worded it, but I basically tried to, like, give him an out and be like, um, why did you send this to me? And I expected him to be like, oops, wrong person or something. And he, like, he responds, oh, well, you play a guardian druid, so I thought you'd be into that. Yeah, I I've told this story before, but I don't think I've ever mentioned that this was the guild, right? So I figured because this was important context for why that guild fell apart, I figured I'd retell that story. And just... That's still to this day. I've never had an interaction like that where I'm just like, because I play a guardian druid, you think I'm into gay furry porn, but like also at the same time, how is that okay? Just like, even if I was like, you know, even if you have like, let's say you're at work, right? And you have like a straight coworker just because you're like, oh, you are also a straight person of the same gender. Let me just send you porn. Like, no, you don't do that anyways. Even if like this person that you've barely spoken to, you think they'd be into this. Just don't fucking send somebody porn with no context. It is to this day, thankfully, the only time that has ever happened to me. Um, but that was just like, <laughs> and like, I, I remember I brought this up to, you know, the, the guild leaders, uh, girlfriend and basically said yeah that tank that you just invited he just fucking sent me gay furry porn like what the fuck like and she like tried to defend him it, like and bay i don't remember exactly what she said but i'm like the fact that you can say look at that situation and say anything other than oh that's not okay i'll talk to him like the whole thing was just so fucked um all of that to say so i had some like co-leadership issues uh, with that woman and then eventually uh, we we mutually decided yeah I think I'm gonna find a new guild right because she basically said she wanted to run her guild her own way um, she wanted me like I, I basically told her I'm not tanking with this guy and she was like well he's my friend so you're gonna have to put up with it if you want to tank here and I'm like I'm fucking done by that point most of my friends had quit the raid team uh, I think the my only friends that were still on there was my friend Lub who Love is the, the moderator in my chat named Dick Cheney, who pops in here every now and then and tells me to start an OnlyFans. Um, so uh, I think he was still raiding in that guild by the time I quit, but he obviously quit soon after because it was a shit show. Um, but all of that to say, to give you an idea of how much the guild leader liked having me in the guild so he could brag about having a druid that could wipe a raid, when I quit the guild... He messaged me and he asked me, why did you quit? Which, like, it it had happened, like, days after the whole, like, gay furry porn incident, among other things. So the fact that he was so out of the loop with what was going on with his own raid team shocked me. And I'm, I, I think the first thing I asked him was, like, did you not talk to your girlfriend? Like, she's the co-raid leader. She, has she not told you anything? And he's like, no, I don't really care. Um, and I'm like, okay, well, uh, maybe you should, I guess, ask her what happened because, like, I... I can't raid lead with her anymore. And he said, do you want me to demote her and make you the only raid lead? <laughs> and I said, no, why would I want that? Like, that would be a terrible position to put myself in. Or obviously, I don't want to do that to somebody. But why would I want to be the raid leader of a team of people who, like I've just described, have that, you know, all those problems, right? Um... And he was like, well, I don't really give a shit what she thinks of you. I want you in my guild for world PvP stuff. And I'm like, uh, look, I'm sorry, man, but I can't raid here. But it was one of the weirdest interactions ever. I mean, and mind you, I feel I feel bad saying this because, you know, as much as I have issues with... Oh, did I lose my pet? Oh, no, he's just going down a different way. I feel bad saying this because as much as, like, let's be honest, it was a massive boost to my ego. Like, I'm not going to pretend that that didn't make me feel like hot shit, right? Of course it did. But I do know for a fact that that guy, the guild leader, was a total fucking dick. And um, he was honestly pretty abusive to his girlfriend, right? Which, you know, obviously, considering he's literally telling me that he will gladly demote her. And I, 
that that's the sad thing. I think he was serious. Um, so as much as I may have problems, you know, with the way that she decided to run her raid team, um, you know, I do know from, like, because obviously we had, like, I still had friends in that guild who were, like, still friends with her, and I would, like, hear through the grapevine that apparently, like, he was a, a real asshole to her and, like, real emotionally abusive and stuff. So I feel bad for her because I'm pretty sure that that is, like, indicative of, generally speaking, the way he treated her, which sucks, right? No matter my thoughts on her, it does suck. But I will say... Oh, I got another color. Small green pouch. Okay. Uh, the only other one, I think there's a black pouch, right? And then I will have the full rainbow collection. Um, but I've gotten pretty good luck with bags so far. But yeah, all that to say, while I did find the whole situation hilarious, I obviously felt bad for her in that situation. Um, as far as I know, they broke up eventually, thankfully. Um, but that, man, that guild was a fucking shit show. <laughs> Uh, Warsong Battalion was, like, one of the weirdest guilds I've ever joined. I also, I kind of just went off on that rant without, um, reading chat, so let me catch up a little bit. Uh, is this PTR Hardcore? Well, I, I think that was probably a while ago, yes. Um, uh, you're 95% certain the quest zone designer intended the Timberling to be used in that exact way, and is so happy now? <laughs> That's awesome. Well, I'm glad I fulfilled the prophecy. Uh... Carlton versus the Geneva Convention. <laughs> yeah. Uh, you broke like 10 Geneva Convention statutes. Uh, you became the Flying Bears meme deck in Magic the Gathering. I've never played Magic, but that's interesting. Um, let me clear my bags. I'll move this here just to keep track of everything. Uh, I'll make some light leather. It'll be fun, they said. I've never heard a story that includes the words guild leader's girlfriend slash boyfriend that ended well. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> uh, you were the bum ass random. See, to be clear, there's nothing wrong with like random people coming into the raid. The specific issue I had with what she did is she didn't just try to get people into our heroic reclears. Like I'm all for, you know, if we're like doing heroic reclear and somebody, you know, is a friend of a friend, like friend or family wants to like, you know, learn how to raid and come in and get like a AOTC totally fine with that i'm always like you know big supporter of stuff like that especially on reclear specifically the problem i had is she wanted to give people gear she literally wanted to effectively take gear away from the raiders who were the ones earning the kill and give it to you know joe schmo that was the thing i'm just like no you, you can't do that that's not how you run a raid team um it's just you know it's a different fucking experience being like a low ce guild on a pvp server so uh, severe consent violation? Yes. Um, and we out here trading porn. Uh, it, man, it, it is still, to this day, the weirdest interaction I've ever had with my co-tank. I need to get classic vendor price. Hold on, let me do that real quick. Curse Forge. Because that is something that, like, I keep meaning to do and I keep forgetting. But not being able to see the vendor value of items is starting to get annoying. Uh... Not even, hey, want to see something cool? Yeah, yeah, that's the other thing. He didn't even ask first. Like, it wasn't even, like, even if he had said something like, want to see something cool, right? That is still not an excuse to just, you know, randomly send somebody gay furry porn. R well, to be clear, randomly send somebody any sort of porn. Um, But the fact that he didn't even say anything, he just fucking dropped that in messages. That, that was the real fucking, like, shocker to me. Vendor price. Yeah, there we go. Vendor price. Okay. I figured it would be a quick download. Uh, and then I think I can reload and just get it automatically. Gay furry porn killed a raid guild. That's beautiful. Um, the, the funny thing is they kept going after the facts. Despite all of that shit, they, uh, they still continued until the actual thing that killed the guild is that guild leader one day decided he was done playing WoW. So he just disbanded his entire guild. Didn't pass leadership, didn't do anything. And mind you, this guild had literally like thousands of members. He had overflow guilds to allow for there to be more than just the 999 cap. So he had like Warsong Battalion 1, Warsong Battalion 2, Warsong Battalion 3. I don't think there was a fourth guild. And he just decided he was bored of WoW, disbanded all three of his like 999 player guilds, and just quit. Which, I mean, on one hand kind of impressive 
because I think a lot of us maybe wish that we had the willpower to do something like that. Just drop everything, burn it all down on a whim, and, and just move on, right? And as far as I know, he kind of stayed away from the game for a while. So, like, as much as I think the guy is kind of a dick, impressive, honestly. Uh, but also, he really fucked over a lot of people, because when that guild officially fell apart, when he disbanded the entire thing, you know, he completely disregarded the fact that there were still people there who were raiding. And I actually ended up uh, joining another guild later on with the same people, right? So I I raided there. It was Emerald Nightmare and then Early Nighthold. And, uh, oh, I have to wait for this RP. Okay. Emerald Nightmare and Early Nighthold. And then uh, later on, uh, when was it? It was like, yeah, around like January or so. Oh, what the hell? Um, yeah, around like January or February is when I quit. And I joined... Oh yeah, that was when I joined the SoundCloud Guys Guild. Have I, I don't know if I've told that story. Um, so I joined a guild with my friends Paul and Chris. Paul I have definitely mentioned before on stream. Um, but, like, Paul is one of, like, my longtime best friends, and I think I could, maybe, eh, you know what, I could Hearthstone here, but I'm gonna take the scenic route and walk all the way there, but, uh, I think I've actually, at this point, like, fully 100% to Teldrassil. The only quest remaining is a breadcrumb to Rut Theron Village, so, yeah, that's pretty cool, I guess. I have a few quests to turn in in Darnassus. What is this one? Um... Oh no, these are from Darnassus sending me to uh, Moonglade and the other places. I will, before I actually, let me just make sure I've caught up in chat before I um, tell that story. If Dick Cheney tells you to start an OnlyFans, you start an OnlyFans. <laughs> yeah. Ugh. Uh, he gives me trophy wife guy vibes at, yeah. You know what? That is like the perfect description of him. Uh... Absolutely, that's, yeah, that's kind of the vibe that he gave off. Also, I think I lost my pet. Yeah, it was like a 20-minute duration, so goodbye, uh, Moss Hide guy, or whatever his name was, the little thing that followed me around. He served me well. Um, Harlden's collecting the Infinity Bags. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah, that's a good way to describe it. Murricans are weird. Oh, yeah, we definitely are. Um, okay, yeah, so I'm caught up now. So, I've told a lot of funny guild drama stories on this stream. Um, I This is one that, it's not like a... Oh, I don't know if the thunder picked up the mic. I guess it's storming. Hopefully I don't lose power or anything. Um, but yeah, so this is like a fairly minor guild drama story because, like, honestly, my entire beef was with this guy. And, like, to be honest, this is maybe one of those where... I probably got, went a little bit too far, um, but the guy was just annoying me, so, like, you know, I kind of, like, pushed his buttons. Um, but we had... I joined my friend Paul's guild, and, like, he had just finally left his guild um, that he had raided with for, like, all of Mop, all of Wad, and he and his friend Chris, uh, who I was also friends with, we did challenge modes together, they had joined some random guild of, like, a... The guy's name was... I mean, I don't even remember his full name, but we all called him Sori. So I'll say that just for to make it easier because you can't even track it down. I don't even remember what his full name was. And that wasn't his real name. That was his character name. But it was Sori something. So I'll just, to make it easier to tell the story, his name was Sori something. Uh, and I think they knew him, like, from a dungeon group that they did or something like that. And the Storm Sirens hit where you live, too. Oh, damn. Uh, but yeah, they knew him from a dungeon, so they joined his guild after theirs had fallen apart. And they needed a tank. And I, um, so I, I joined because at that point I just left the, the guild with the, you know, gay furry porn tank. And we were on Spellblade Alorial when I joined in Nighthold. So it was still fairly early. And Spellblade Alorial, it's one of those where a lot of times when I tell these stories, it helps to have, you know, be on retail so I can quickly flick to the dungeon journal and show, you know, examples of the mechanics that I'm referring to. I should also, before I continue on, I can make 
if I get skill points from all of these, I can make... Okay, well, I immediately didn't get a skill point from the first one. Okay, fuck it. Never mind. <laughs> I'll just train leatherworking somewhere else. First two crafts not giving skill points kind of sucks, but whatever. Um, but yeah, so... Spellblade L'Oreal was a weird boss on Mythic. Where she summoned, like, copies of herself that had, like, extra effects. And... It's been a while. My memory on it is actually, like, a little bit fuzzy. There's a dead person here. A Madria, Rest in peace. Um... Yeah, actually, my memory of Spellblade L'Oreal is kind of fuzzy. I remember the specific mechanic that's relevant to the story. In the Nighthold, yeah. Mm. The one thing I don't remember is what was Mythic only and what was, like, just a regular part of the fight. So... I know Spellblade L'Oreal had, like, echoes. Um, because, like, she had, like, the, um, the voice lines that are still stuck in my head where she would go, replicate, annihilate, and, like, all of those lines. And she would basically summon, like, little copies of herself to cast certain abilities. That was, like, her main shtick. And her, like, her tank buster was, like, a frontal cone where it would show, like, images of herself quickly attacking you. That was, like, the whole theme of the fight. And then... I believe it was the mythic-only mechanic where it summoned a fell version of Spellblade Alorial. And the fell version had, like, some abilities, but the main thing that it did is it had a big, like, uh, basically split damage mechanic where it was, like, fell slash. So the moment it got in range of a player in melee, it would do, like, a big fell slash on the tank or whoever had the highest threat and do, like, heavy damage to them and then, like, massive damage split amongst all targets in the cone of the fell slash uh so you know the intended way to do that obviously was you have um like everybody stack up split the damage but there was like a lot of damage going out so oh wait that guy then d -T 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 -V died isn't he um yeah he's level 24 oh so the twitch tv guy from earlier uh apparently just died at level 24 in a paladin oh that sucks poor dude he actually made it pretty far uh, let me at least clean up my bags real quick. Um, I'm not going to buy bank slots yet, but it's at least nice to have this uh, for the future when I need it. I can store all of this stuff. I can get rid of that, the moss-covered things. Um, what else? Uh, I guess I should... Vendor the gloves, and I'm going to check the auction house. I know somebody said that priests really like using wands, so hopefully I can find somebody uh, to buy that. Um, but yeah, so Spellblade Alorial's main mechanic, or the, the clone's main mechanic, was that. So the intended way, obviously, you do the Fell Slash, you split the damage with other players, and, you know, you move on with it. But the way that a lot of guilds were handling it, especially guilds that had a prop paladin, and I know... A lot of guilds were also having one of their DPS swap to prop paladin specifically for this, is you would taunt the boss away from the group, and then the paladin would bubble the moment uh, Spellblade L'Oreal got within range of them, so that way they could immune all of the damage from the fell slash. So it basically took that mechanic out of the fight. And that was like Sori's only job, right? Uh, so he was, like, the main thing he was supposed to do is taunt the fucking mob, get it out of the group, and get the fell slash there. And for whatever reason, this guy, who's the guild leader, mind you, could not fucking do it. And we wiped so many times to him fucking up this one mechanic, which is really simple. Mind you, just bubble the fucking tank slash. And I just got so fucking tilted at this. So I'm giving you the context of why I decided to, to troll him later on. Um, I mean, I guess maybe saying trolling him is a, a bit of a reach. I didn't really troll him. I just kind of made fun of him. Um, but this guy, um, he had he had a SoundCloud, right? And he was constantly talking about. He was one of those like you know, there's there's an old Filthy Frank video uh, where Filthy Frank makes fun of SoundCloud rappers of people who you know are always like, you bro, check out my SoundCloud, right? Like, oh, you know, I'm gonna make it big one day on my SoundCloud, right? And you know, there it's just the most basic ass shit ever. And that was this dude, 100%. Like, he was the epitome of that Filthy Frank SoundCloud rapper video. And 
you know, of course I, I had watched that video. So I already had like a bad impression of, you know, people like that. Right. So just this guy annoyed the hell out of me with constantly talking about, you know, check out my SoundCloud, check out my SoundCloud. But then the thing that he did that made me really start just digging into him and constantly making fun of him for his SoundCloud is like, um, uh, whatchamacallit, he started giving people gold and basically like advertising in the middle of raid, like during one of our raid breaks, he would say something like, hey guys, you know, uh, by the way, if you haven't checked out my SoundCloud yet, I'm giving away like, you know, 10,000 gold to anybody who subscribes to my SoundCloud. Yo, check it out. I'm telling you, there's some good shit on there. And just, I could not fucking stand it. And like I said, this is, it's, it's dumb. It's petty. Like, obviously the, the guy really annoyed me because of the Spellblade L'Oreal thing. Right. So it was kind of like a duo combination of him not being able to tank Spellblade L'Oreal and him constantly not being able to shut up about a SoundCloud. And like a few times I'm like, dude, how many times are you going to fucking bring up your SoundCloud? He's like, well, it's my guild. If I want to promote my SoundCloud, I can do it whenever I want. It's just like every single fucking day every single fucking raid during breaks he would constantly and so we had all heard it before it's not like there were new trials or whatever we all know yes you have a soundcloud thanks for bringing it up for the 20th fucking time so then i started like just memeing on him like i post like in the guild discord or something like that you know like I, I forget it was dumb shit like i said it was dumb childish garbage that i did but i would like i would post in the guild discord making fun of his soundcloud i'm like you know hey could somebody give sorry like you know his first ever subscriber uh you know he's he's really looking forward to it after all he's only told us every single fucking raid or i would post in um like uh what you gonna call it uh nighthold general chat or and say stuff like Hey guys, you should check out my boy Sori on SoundCloud. He's a real up and coming rapper. I've heard he'll give you 5k if you subscribe to it. So I would do shit like that, basically just teasing him for uh, just being an absolute fucking tool. And he did not like that. So uh, yeah, eventually he kicked me out of the guilds. Uh, that is like one of the few guilds where I, I it, the funny, I, I mean, I guess, I don't know. To me, it was funny, but like, my friend Paul was constantly telling me, just stop, because he wanted to raid with me. Like, he had finally gotten me to, like, be in the same guild. So he kept messaging me. He's like, dude, if you keep teasing Story like this, he's going to kick you out of the guild. And I was like, I don't give a shit. The dude can't fucking taunt Spellblade L'Oreal away from the group. Why do I care? So we killed Spellblade L'Oreal, and then before the next boss, you know, he was like, the officers have come to a decision, and I, I don't think that your attitude fits our atmosphere here. And I'm like, yeah, okay, fuck off. Like, I'm already done, <laughs> right? Um, but Paul was annoyed because then, you know, they stayed for like another few weeks, but like Sori also couldn't tank. Whatever the next boss was, uh, I think Kai Botanist Talarn was the next one that people usually did. Um, and Sori sucked at that too. So after like a few weeks of whatever the next boss prog was, uh, Paul quit his guild. And did he, I, I think he may have actually quit the game then. Cause I know Paul, Paul, I think, no, he, he stayed, but he didn't raid seriously after that. Um, he stopped raiding after that guild. Uh, and then my friend Chris went somewhere else. Um, and then I ended up raiding with Paul again briefly later on in, uh, what's it called? Uh, in Antorus. Um, but... I remember him being, being like really pissed off at me and just telling me like, yes, I know the SoundCloud shit's annoying, but you could, could you please lay off him and stop trolling him so much about the stupid SoundCloud shit? Cause he just wanted me to like be in the guild so we can like finally play together. But like, mind you, obviously I've still played with Paul after the fact. So it's not like me getting kicked out of that guild really mattered in the end. You know, we still ended up staying friends and we've raided together multiple tiers since. Same with my friend Chris. So, you know, I... I've said that before, but sometimes I, I've been trying to get better at it lately. Uh, and I think I've been, I've been good at like holding myself back, but there, the, sometimes people do things that just like, it's just so hard not to give them shit about it when it's just the dumbest fucking thing you've ever heard. Also, um, return to Nessa. Oh, does this have me go to... Okay, it wants me to go back to Rutheran Village, so fuck it. If I really want to 100% Teldrassil, I guess I need to fly back to Rutheran Village. So, that's what I'll do. Um, this quest is... I have to turn this in there. And then I think I'll do the Druid Bear Form quest.
Um, listen to these fat beats. Yeah. Basically shit like that. Um, wonder why Paul wanted to be in that guild in particular. Yeah, well, I mean, it wasn't that he wanted to be in that guild, right? Like, obviously, he didn't really particularly enjoy that guild either. Like, yeah. that's the thing. Between, like, the three of us, me, Paul, and Chris, you know, in our DMs, right? Like, we still joke about it to this day. You know, anytime, you know, uh, we think about, like, Nighthold or something like that, you know, my friend Chris will be like, yo, remember Sorry SoundCloud? And we all, like, laugh about that because we all hated it just as much. It's just, you know, Paul and Chris. Chris isn't, like, a super vocal person. He's generally fairly quiet. So, you know, he obviously wouldn't have ever said shit like that. Um, but also, Paul was just at that point where he, you know, he had just dealt with some guild drama of his own, and he just kind of didn't want to have to deal with any of that bullshit. Uh, so he was just, like, he didn't want to be in that guild per se, but he just didn't want to, like, he wanted to raid with me and Chris, so he didn't want to have to find a new guild, and he also was just so tired of, like, bullshit guilds that he's had to deal with in the past. But, you know, sometimes, if something really annoys me, I will be fully honest, I have, like, no fucking filter uh, when it comes to things like that. And I it definitely, I used to be worse about trolling people. I, now, I'd like to think, though, and I think, generally speaking, what people are saying in the chat seem to agree with me, I'd like to think that when I troll people, it's only the people that deserve it. And I don't do anything mean, right? Like, I, I didn't dox the guy or say any, like, really hurtful shit to him. You know, he was trying to look for attention to his SoundCloud, so I, you know, I, I helped him find attention to his SoundCloud. I just did it in a way that was very obviously teasing, um, and he did not like that. So, yeah, it, it's... Uh, I, I think, like, you know, nothing I did was, like, below the belt or anything, but I... I knew for a fact that he was extremely pissed off, especially when I started posting in Nighthold General Chat. Um, but I did it anyway because, you know, he annoyed the hell out of me, so fuck it. Uh, sometimes you just want to get stuff done. Yeah, I, I help. I definitely I helped him out. You know, I gave him free publicity, right? That was the entire goal, after all. Okay, so I think at this point I need to go to Moonglade for the Druid Bear Fork quest. Um... On that note, that reminds me, kind of a funny similar situation, which at least that time it wasn't to the guild leader, and in the end, um, the, the way that this next story will end is that the guild leader told me to cut it out, and I finally stopped because he did basically say, like, you know, cut this shit out, or, like, I'm gonna have to deal with it myself, and I'm like, fine. Um... And then I ended up leaving the, the guild in question for the story I'm about to tell, but it was for entirely different reasons. It was because the guild leader... Uh, partially because the guild imploded on Ashvane, but also whatever. So this is fast forward to uh, Ashara's Eternal Palace, which, like I've said, I would love to actually be able to play for real because I, you know, when I played Ashara's Eternal Palace, also, what the fuck is happening with Questy here? This, um, this text wrapping is not working properly, and it is just going all the way across my screen. Uh, I assume it's just this one quest, though, so I don't really think I need to change much about it. Uh, also, I wonder if I can find... I'd imagine there's a million druid trainers somewhere around here. Because I need to learn new abilities. And I, at this point, I have like 46 silver, more than enough. Classic Questy does that occasionally. Ah, gotcha. Um, but yeah, so this fast forward to the guild that I was in for Eternal Palace. And, you know, I didn't hate the guild in general. And like, it was a decent guild, but, you know, the... The leadership was like, they, they were kind of assholes, right? And I ended up leaving because they just mismanaged things terribly on Ashvane. I was one of the first people to quit on Ashvane because of like some really stupid stuff that they were doing. And I basically, I kept telling them like, you know, we're not going to kill the boss like this. And they just refused to listen. And then eventually I quit. Uh, I wasn't even a tank, right? So I wasn't in like a crucial position. Um, but uh, I quit and then I... Uh, I think, like, two weeks later, the guild imploded, because, same reason, they couldn't kill Ashvane, uh, other people started getting pissed as well, and, you know, it just kind of spiraled from there. Um, but before that, early on in Prague, we had, we had this guy in our guild named Salty Doggy, and, uh, I, I like saying his name because I don't, I don't fucking know what his character's name now, right? And I haven't said the server, I'm sure there's a million people named Salty Doggy, but, he had, like, such a weird name, too. And it was just, like, so easy to make fun of him. And Salty Doggy. Salty Doggy is another type of person that I can't stand. And that is a gym bro. 
I've probably told this story before, so maybe some of you who have heard it will know where I'm going. Salty Doggy would constantly talk about the gym and what he was doing at the gym and, you know, how big his muscles were and, and all this shit. And I remember the thing that he did, like, this always annoys me. I hate when, you know, I, if you want to go to the gym, right? Sure. But like, this is guild chat, right? He's just constantly talking in guild chat. Like, bro, I, I went to the gym today and I pumped iron. I went up to like whatever weights or whatever, you know, uh, you know, big, big muscles, baby, or something like that. Like just saying shit like that in guild chat. And it's like, dude, who fucking cares? Right. And the, the thing that made me say like, and, and you know, I, this, this annoys me, but this was like a full expansion after the whole sorry SoundCloud instance. So I'm I'm trying to be good. I'm biting my tongue. I'm like, you know, I don't want to piss anybody off. There's a lot of people well they'll say they'll say stuff that will annoy me and I'm like I'm like oh, I, I really want to say something, but I won't do it because I'm like, you know, I'm good now. I'm not going to I'm not going to cause trouble. So I watched all this stuff. I bit my tongue. I said nothing. And then he posts a picture of himself in the guild Discord one day of him lifting weights at the gym. And captions it, big muscles in-game, big muscles IRL, or something like that. And that's when I'm just like, okay, oh, I, I, I am going to try and troll the shit out of this dude. And really, WoW really brings all types together, huh? Yeah. Um, and do you even lift, bro? Exactly. Uh, so I would, like, when, I basically did something similar to Sori, where uh, whenever... Uh, whenever like salty doggy would like post something like unrelated about like you know looking for keys or something i'd be like you know oh yeah you know you should really take him because as we all know he has big muscles in game or something like that and i would basically joke and like poke fun at like the shit that the dumb shit he would say i would kind of like repeat it and throw it back at him and as with like it, it's reminded me because of the story story because it's like so many people like this they say dumb shit but then if you like repeat the dumb shit that they say back to them they get so pissed off and he there's like i have a screenshot somewhere if you if you go into my discord and remind me i'll post it after the stream where there he said something to the effect of also mind you one of the other reasons you know if this guy was like an orange parsing warlock i wouldn't care i only troll players who are annoying and bad this is like a gray slash green parsing warlock who is bragging about his damage while he's literal fucking trash. Like one of the worst players on the team. So that's what really pissed me off. On top of, you know, just I hate like the gym bra mentality. But, you know, the, the gym bra mentality coupled with the fact that, you know, he's not even fucking good. Like the guy's dog shit. And he's sitting here saying big muscles in game. Like fuck right off. So that's what really annoyed me. And he would like... I, I forget what it was, but I think it was on, on like Radiance of Ashara, one of the early bosses. I was asking who was running. Um, there was an Azerite essence called, I forget the name, but it was one of those where like the more people you ran it, it was like Earthfane something. It would summon like a little Azerite thing in the ground and like gave you stat buffs, and uh, you could get up to five buffs from it. So basically, if you had like five or six people running that essence, you would all share the buff. Or whatever so i asked in guild chat something to the effect of and this is what i have a screenshot of like is anyone oh yeah world vein resonance i believe it was called so i said is anyone running world vein resonance in raid tonight and then salty doggy said yeah bro you know i am or something to that effect and i said sorry i was specifically saying people who will actually be in the raid and then like that pissed him off because basically i was insinuating that he was going to be benched because his damage was shit, which i think he was um, I don't remember if he was benched or if they had to pull him in because, like, we were missing somebody. Um, but either way, he sent me, like, a tirade where he was like, like, why are you always, like, saying shit like this? And I'm like, because I find you annoying. And he was like, you just find me annoying because you're a beta male. You know, you just hate the fact that I'm an alpha male. And then the the line, the line that then decided or made me go, make, take things a step further is he said... Uh, you just don't understand, um, women want to, or men want to be me, women want to be with me, um, that is what real alpha males are like, or something like that, just, mind you, this is all over a comment I made about him, you know, not being in raid because his damage was shit, right, and then he just spirals off into this, like, alpha male rant or something, I, I definitely screenshotted that line and, and, like, the thing about me telling him in guild chat people who are only gonna be in the raid, um, 
because, you know, I was proud of that. And I thought that, of course, the, you know, men want to be me, women want to be with me line was just perfect. I still, that is one of like, that up, up there with the gay furry porn is one of the funniest things people have ever sent to me, right? Uh, so I pulled off what I think is to date. I have not managed to top it yet, though I have tried. It is the greatest swap blaster operation that I have ever done. And it is, to date, the only time when I've managed to make somebody at least rage quit the game by swap blastering them. And um, I, I should mention, this is probably a good time to say, I am a fucking swap blaster menace in my raids, right? Um, well, usually, these days, I only swap blaster people with consent, right? But the moment, like, it's, you know, clear that there's a war, right? Like, milk supply. Obviously, milk, milk is my friend, right? So, uh, he was cool with it, right? But milk um, basically challenged me, saying that, like, I couldn't kill him with a swap blaster. So, the entire time I raided with milk, every single night, I would try to swap blaster him off, like, random cliffs. And I will say, credit to milk... That dude is a god at dodging swap blasters. I don't know how it happened. One night, I traded our entire raid team swap blasters and said specifically, I want you to get milk supply to fall into the pool of lava around Primal Council. And they could not manage it. He dodged every single one. Actually, he has like a sixth sense. It's insane. He can sense swap blasters like without people even he doesn't even notice that people are targeting him. He'll just be jumping around and then like somebody swap blasters him and like he doesn't see it, but he'll just instinctively stop and be like, I felt like somebody was going to try to swap blaster me now. And I'm like, how the fuck did you predict that? It, dude's crazy, right? So all that to say. Nowadays, I usually only swap blaster my friends, and it's a fun challenge. I got the best one I got milk supply with is on Senarth. There's a little ledge at the very top, right before, like as you kill the boss in the final platform, the thing that you use to jump down back to the main area, uh, there's a little like gap in the ledge or uh, like on the side there, where if you stand at a certain angle, if you swap blast someone as they're running to the teleport point back to the ground, you can hit them with a swap blaster and it cause them to run straight off the ledge and then plummet into the abyss below Sinarth. It's like the perfect spot. So after one of our Sinarth mythic kills, when Milk least expected it, I swap blasted him into the abyss on Sinarth. That was one of the few times when I've actually managed to get him, so I'm proud of that. Um, but all that to say, for years, I have perfected my craft at killing people with swap blasters. But even then, to this day, this situation with Salty Doggy was by far my greatest work. So, once again, I traded the entire guild swap blasters. And I should note, as is usually the case, I was not alone in being annoyed by Salty Doggy. You know, every single person in that guild who I was friends with also couldn't stand his constant gym bra posts. It was just super fucking annoying to have to read about constantly. So, other people, the moment I told them, I'm like, hey... I'm going to set up a fantastic troll on Salty Doggy. Do you want to join in? Everybody was like, fuck yeah, sign me up. So I traded a bunch of them swap blasters. I even, I got one of the officers in on it, which I did not expect, uh, but they thought it sounded funny. So they were like, fuck it, I'll join. Uh, so I traded them all swap blasters. And if you uh, raided Eternal Palace on Blackwater Behemoth, the way that fight works is that's the underwater boss. And on that fight, you, you have to swim around, right? And the boss, like, goes from little platform to platform and stuff. But the room in which you fight Blackwater Behemoth is gigantic. Uh, it, it is really, really big, and it extends really far down. So I coordinated a swap blaster chain for Salty Doggy. Is that Lunaclaw? Oh, that's just a generic Moonkin. I coordinated a, like, I forget exactly how many people we got into it at the end. It was something like eight or nine people in this chain to basically swap blaster Salty Doggy from the area that we were standing in front of the boss all the way down into the abyss, down in the trench below Blackwater Behemoth. And, like, the way it would work, right, is, so the first person swap blasters Salty Doggy, and then, you know, Salty Doggy teleports to where they were standing before. Then the next person in the line swap blasters him again after he gets, you know, pulled back, and you just keep swap blastering him on repeat back down the chain until he ends up all the way at the bottom of the abyss. So I got him way down into the trench. I was the first swap blaster. I, I think I wasn't the first, I was like the third or something, because I wanted to be the one to like get him over the ledge. So the, the first one's the easiest because he's not expecting it. And then I had one of my friends go second, and then I was the one who got him just like a... a 
uh, right past the ledge where it extends really far down and there's just like abyss all the way down there. And then we had like four other people just chain swap him really far down. <laughs> and the worst part, the thing that pissed off um, the guild leader, two things, this is one of them. And I remember he at the time was like, you know, fuck off, stop doing that. And then I, I did something else, which I will say. Um, uh, we'll, we'll get to that next one. Uh, but then after that, that's when he was like, you need to cut this shit out or I'm, I'm going to, you know, kick you instead of Salty Doggy, even though he is kind of a fucking idiot. Um, but we got Salty Doggy on the, all the way down there and I did this during a pull timer. <laughs> so right as like we were planning to do the pull timer, I strategically only told the one officer that I thought would go for it. And to my surprise, she did. Uh, and she didn't actually tell the guild leader that I was planning this, which was nice because it you know, if she had told him, I'm sure he would have shut it down. But as he did a pull timer for Mythic Blackwater Behemoth, we quickly got into position, swapped Salty Doggy all the way down there, and then we pulled the boss. So at the start of the pull, Salty Doggy is down deep in the underwater trench below Blackwater Behemoth, trying to swim up to the surface while we're, you know, bloodlusting and burning the boss. So he missed his entire burst window with bloodlust because he was swimming. And like, for a while, he had no fucking idea what was happening. He's just like, it comes like, bro, why am I down at the fucking water, bro? What the fuck just happened? Why did we pull? And like, freaking out. He had no idea what happened. Fucking loved it. Still one of the funniest things I I think I've ever pulled off in Raid to this day. But, so the guild leader was already, like, he figured out what happened. Also because the officer, like, he's of course, like, the guild leader's, like, in voice chat saying, like, what the fuck, how? Did you guys swap blaster him down there? And then I think at that point the officer probably said, yeah, it was Lenara's idea. And then he messaged me, he's like, Lenara, what the fuck are you doing? And I'm like, look, look. Salty dog, he's been pissing me off. So I just decided to pull a prank on him, right? He's like, okay, well, don't fucking do it again. But then I forget what he said. Uh, we had we had killed Blackwater Behemoth. It wasn't that pull, but it was like a pull or two after. So we finally got into Ashvane. <laughs> and on, on Ashvane, I mean, on a lot of different raid bosses, right? Um, if you... Uh, like it, when the boss resets, it takes like a few seconds and then the boss has like a standard spot where they respawn at. And Ashvane spawns right in the middle of the room. So I forget what had happened, but I think Salty Doggy fucked up some mechanic on Ashvane later that same night. Oh, oh, I guess that guy summons Lunaclaw and he just spawns out of the cave. Uh, okay. Um... But yeah, so Salty Doggy fucked up something on Ashvane, and then I think, like, when he was called out on it, he was, like, making excuses for why it wasn't his fault, and, like, I was just annoyed because, like, this is the shit that he did every single night. And while I wasn't able to convince anyone else to join me, what I did is just really quick, while he was, like, raging in voice chat, you know, pissed off about, like, arguing with somebody over something he said he didn't fuck up, I ran over to, like, the center of Ashvane's room, where she respawns, and then swap blastered Salty Doggy right as the boss was respawning. So he re he basically teleported directly underneath Ashvane, she respawned, whacked him, one-shot him, and then we had to reset the boss. And that's when the guild leader was like, Lenara, cut the shit! And I forget exactly what he said, but he yelled at me and he was, like, really pissed off, and that's when I'm like, okay, fine. But then Salty Doggy just fucking logs out of the game. Just straight... He dies to Ashvane. There was like, you know, a, a few seconds silence where he doesn't release his spirit. And then you just see Salty Doggy has gone offline. Straight up fucking quit that raid night. And he, he came back like the next day. So it's not like he quit WoW, though that would have been hilarious. But he did quit the rest of the raid night. And the guild leader messaged him and basically said, yo, what the fuck? Why did you leave? And he was like, I'm, I'm tired of this bullshit. I'm tired of being like, you know, trolled by Lenara and accused of things that I didn't do or whatever in re reference to like the Ashbane thing. And uh, he didn't show up for the rest of the raid night. And then like later on, like when the guild leader like pulled me into a voice channel and he was like, you know, chewing me out for doing that shit. And I'm like, but fucking Salty Doggy is like constantly playing like ass and sitting there making stupid fucking excuses uh, oh, I guess I could technically speaking just like mooch off this guy's Lunaclaw spirit, but fuck it, I want to do it myself. You know, it's not actually fun if you just ride off another person's kill. Um, but yeah, I like, I did tell him, you know, I didn't expect him to understand, but I'm like, look, you know, uh, Salty Doggy is like 
pissing off basically the entire raid team. Like, the dude's extremely annoying, and he's just constantly fucking up mechanics and making excuses about it. So, I know that you said after the whole, like, Blackwater Behemoth Swap Blaster chain not to do it again. Um, but, like, I couldn't resist after he was complaining. And, you know, I forget exactly what he said. It wasn't interesting. Something about, like, yeah, yeah, Salty Doggy's my problem, you know, butt out of it. You know, I, I don't want to have, like, raiders causing other people to quit in the middle of the thing, even though, like, it is bad that Salty Doggy did that. Obviously, you know, you kind of caused it, which, like, he's not wrong. I definitely was partially to blame. I mean, admittedly, I wasn't trying to get him to, you know, log out for the rest of the raid night. Like, that wasn't my intention. He was just being a fucking idiot after a wipe that he had caused, and then I just decided to troll him one last time by killing him by swap blastering him, and I guess that just sent him over the edge. But I'm glad it did happen, because that is, like I said, to date, my best use of swap blaster, and I have had some creative ones, I'd say. Oh, so the turn-in is back at Darnassus. Huh. Oh, and there's a quest for... I guess a Darkshore quest in Darnassus? Oh, okay. Uh, usually with consent, yeah. Look, if someone's really pissing me off, right, I, I will sometimes throw them the stray swap blaster just to put them in their place, all right? Like, usually with consent. These days, I mostly swap blaster my friends only. But, you know, if someone's talking shit and, you know, they're, they're just really on my nerves and there's just a really nice cliff that they're standing right next to, I will gladly swap blaster them off. So I'm not saying I haven't done it, but I've gotten better. You know, I've been trying to improve and only only swap people off cliffs sparingly. Though, uh, I did, like, I did have a similar, obviously, like I said before, thing with Milk Supply. But the difference with Milk Supply is Milk Supply, you know, he's my friend and he actually enjoyed it. It was like a game that we would play every time in the, like, raid breaks. He would try to, like, dodge my swap blasters and stuff like that. So, honestly... It is more fun when people are all in on it, but sometimes, you know, you get a salty doggy in your raid, and you just, you feel a compulsion to just Swap Blaster them off a cliff. That's just how it goes. Swap Blaster is toxic, you love it so much. Swap Blaster him back into real life. <laughs> yeah, true. Oh man, I, let me, were there any other lines? I wonder if I still have it saved on my, um, my pictures. Salty Doggy was a trip, man. That was... Unfortunately, Salty Doggy was, like, you know, the, not the fun kind of annoying. Like, Salty Doggy was just through and through a miserable person to raid with. So I at least... I, I take some pleasure in the fact that he was very easy to bait. So that made it easy to, like, piss him off. But he was not really fun to, like, you know, push his buttons and stuff like that. Was that guy a Destro Lock? He was a Warlock. <laughs> um, so... I don't know if he played Destro, I completely forget, but he was he was actually a Warlock, you got that correct. Yeah, you know, Warlock players, SMH, they're all the same. Uh, let me see here, do I have, can I search, search pictures, salty, no. I know I have it stored on my Google Drive somewhere. Let me see, Google Drive, so I like, backed up all my pictures there at one point. Um, fuck, where is, oh my god, I just want to fucking go to Google Drive, this is so annoying. There we go, finally Google's doing what I'm asking. Uh, I think, oh yeah, I have a WoW screenshots folder. Oh, I just, yeah, I remembered something else that, um, annoyed the officers. I, uh, I thought it was really funny. But they were complaining that I was taking too much damage from a certain mechanic, and I tried to explain to them that the reason I was taking damage from that mechanic is because I was playing a Windwalker Monk, and I was using Touch of Karma and intentionally walking into it. And, like, it wasn't even causing healing issues. Th that was, like, one of the other, you know, minor issues with that particular guild. The officers would, like, find problems and try to, like, say that this is the reason we're wiping. So, like, despite the fact that I had never died during, um, oh, nice, level... New stuff. Did I hit level? I did hit level 14. Oh, nice. Um, new rank of Thorns, Wrath, and Healing Touch. Oh, that was fucking expensive, actually. Um, thorns, Wrath, and then where's Healing Touch? Um, maybe I shouldn't have gotten, like, the new rank of Wrath, because I'm not really going to be using it much now that 
I'll have bear form. Um, but yeah, that, like the the thing that I was saying is the officers were complaining about the fact that I uh, was taking too much damage from a mechanic, despite the fact that I never died to Abyssal Commander Savara, and I was you know getting more damage by using uh, Touch of Karma that way. So it was just stupid shit. Uh, what is this quest? Oh, I just got more abilities. Oh fuck. Because I just learned those other things, now I can't learn Bash. Uh, I'm sure I can sell stuff to get the silver I need. There's, there's a reagent vendor here. Uh, Light Feather. Ooh, I finally got a lesser healing potion. Chipped Bear Tooth. Um, fuck it. How do I... You know what? I'm just going to sell my Light Armor Kits, because I'm going to need to craft more anyways. So, so I can level up my Leatherworking. So, you know, I don't really need it that much. I'll just take the silver right now. At least there was no furry porn. That is true. At the very least, I did not get sent gay furry porn in that particular guild. I wish you could say that about every guild, you know? Maybe it should be a given. You join a World of Warcraft guild, you expect, you know, no gay furry porn should be a baseline, but alas. So what did I pick for my talents? Because I've just been kind of putting points. Reduces the cost of my Maul Claw. What do I actually have? So, um, okay, bear form I will put on, uh, put there, uh, at this point, I mean, now that I actually need space on my bars, I can move my consumables off, like, the keybinds, because I need to use this out of combat anyway, so I don't really need it to be bound. And I normally use bear form on control one, so I definitely want to do that. Uh, okay, I do have maul, so I'm glad I put points into that. Uh, and then if I shift into bear form, that's just the start attack. Uh, I should probably make... Um... You had a nickel for every time you got sent gay furry porn, and wow, you'd have two nickels, which isn't a lot, but it's weird that it happened once. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> exactly. Uh, Rowl over here. Uh, Maul on one, I guess, and I'll put Demo Roar on five, I guess. Why not? Uh, yeah, I think that's fine, but I, oh, I want to, instead of just using Maul, I should macro, what the fuck? Oh, I see what's happened here. All of my <laughs> my retail add-on or, or macros are still saved because they're reusing the um the retail PTR. So I uh huh. Alright, I guess I'll use this like the specific macros. Um let's see. Uh where's Maul? There we go. Hashtag show tooltip slash start attack slash cast maul. Maul, there we go. I'll take that, put that there. Um, oh, that person's in the same guild as I am. Also, behold the glory of the low poly <laughs> classic bear. God, it looks so fucking horrifying. Uh, I guess I'm going to have to get used to this. Does Dire Bear form at least look better than this? Because this is, like, just nightmare-inducing. Um, so I guess I should probably go pick up that quest on the other side before I forget. And then I think my macro worked correctly. Negative, no difference. Damn it. So this is how I'm going to look for most of the game, then? Oh, boy. That's, uh, that's a fun thought. Can I also, can I eat and drink in this form? Okay, I cannot. No. You want it to be on retail as a meme skin in the barbary shop. <laughs> that would be interesting. Man, that would look so out of place in retail. The OG classic derpy bear. That would be so fucking good. Ah, oh. yeah, I can't, I can't find, um, let's see the, the wow screenshots. Can't find. Oh, I did find. Oh yeah. Oh shit. I if I share this on my Discord, which I probably will, I'm gonna have to Photoshop this out because I found the salty doggy screenshot 
but because it's a picture of himself. Oh my God. <laughs> yeah. The exact way he worded it was big muscles IRL, comma, big muscles and wow. Then he posted a picture of himself. And then <laughs> he like somebody else said something like looking thick, and he said natty bro, comma, natty. Which ah oh, this is so cringe. And um let me see. I had oh yeah. I have part one of the screenshot. I'm not sure where part two is. Oh crap, I don't think this is in in here. Uh I'm sure I'll I'll be able to find it somewhere. <laughs> I I have a lot of old really good screenshots in here. Oh man. Uh yeah, I'll have to I'll try to remember to do that. Oh, let me keep the tab open so I could do that after stream. I'll try to remember to do that. Hello, Vetro. Good to see you, Vetro. Unfortunately, you joined it, like, right at the very end. Uh, alas. Um, and speaking of which, yeah, I was just going to pick up that quest, but like I said, the stream was going to end when I finished the Druid Bear Farm quest. So, you know, I've done that, right? Uh, AU time zone. Well, at least you can watch the recording. And what is Lessons Anew? Um, guessing this is something in Nighthaven. Is this the, um, aquatic form quest? Or, I'm sure, I don't know what the quest this is. I'll have to do that later on. Um, but yeah, so, I got that done. So once again, if you haven't uh, voted already, tomorrow I'll be doing, yeah, stream tomorrow. And it's the one that I described on the poll. So, whatever ends up winning, let me refresh right now to see. Uh, right now, okay, Unholy Death Knight... Honestly, I'm already going to just start preparing on Holy Death Knight because it has a pretty dominant lead. Uh, but remember, the top two options in this poll are the ones we're going to be doing. So there are two different runs. They will be from 40 to 60. So in Holy Death Knight, probably going to be one of those. And for the second run, it is currently a close race between Elemental Shaman and Fire Mage. So if you haven't voted already, uh, make sure to vote there. And... Uh, yeah, I will see you all tomorrow. Same time, uh, it's probably going to be around 11 a.m. Uh, Eastern Standard Time, give or take. Uh, this time, I think this stream I started like around 30, 40 minutes late, but, you know, wasn't too bad. Uh, but yeah, that's usually uh, the time I'm shooting for. Uh, no problem, Jade West. So yeah, thank you all for watching, and I will catch you all tomorrow. Peace.